The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 7th already, 2023. This sports program starts now. Football! Happened last night, but boy, it was torturous to watch. Yeah. I will say this Jets team is a nightmare to watch on television. Ooh. And I don't want to start piling on, okay, because I've heard he's a great guy. But you go back to last year. When what team was on primetime did we hate our lives? The Denver Broncos. Yep. Now that the New York Jets are on primetime, we hate watching football. Nathaniel Hackett is a primetime <laughs> killer, <laughs> and it needs to get sorted as quickly as possible. Congrats to the Chargers getting a big-time win in primetime. Yeah. And Brandon Staley may be changing the narrative a little bit. A lot of games left still for him and them to go on and do whatever, but they continued to pound the rock and continued to win that game last night as the Jets just didn't protect Zach Wilson, yep. and the Jets forced us to watch that offense do absolutely jock crap. Now, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman obviously enjoy that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Peyton Manning and Eli Manning had a miserable night. Yeah, they, oh. brutal. Now, they talked to Arnold Schwarzenegger and a donkey, which Why? was certainly a good time. And they also talked to Trevor uh, Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence was awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Changed his hair. Yeah, they did the Manning haircut on Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, because Arnold Schwarzenegger so. bailed on him. Yes. Our, our switch today just quit. Oh, but much. Once one commercial break, said, all right, see you later. Yep. I did send a text potentially to Omaha. This was the immediate introduction of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Awesome. When he came onto the screen, he was force feeding a donkey some granola. <laughs> and Peyton and Eli were obviously not giving a heads up. Peyton was very flustered there for a bit and then said, oh, bit. It's a bit. Mm -hmm. It's a bit. Is that a real donkey I assume was going through his head? They go to commercial break. They say, hey, will you stick around? We'll be Bach, says Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was not Bach. No, he was not. Ah. He was gone. He went to ride that donkey off into the sunset and do his thing. Watch a documentary on him. He's got a book coming out. I think he's potentially coming on this show yeah. in the next two Whoa. weeks. Yeah, I'm excited to chat with him. I am excited. I don't know if a watch along with a Monday Night Football game is the right thing for Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. but I do believe uh, chatting with us would be a good time and the Manning cast was certainly fantastic. So Trevor Lawrence was great. That's the first time I've heard him that long. Yeah. He stayed on for like six commercial breaks. So he was on there a long time, a lot of chatter, chit-chatting about everything. He was also predicting what defenses were going to do. That was fun to kind of watch him, Peyton, and Eli kind of see the double barrel in the middle. And he saw the weight on the back foot. It's like, they're bailing, they're bailing. All mm. three of them said they're bailing. They bailed out immediately. It was like, that was sweet to kind of watch these masters at work. Then he was uh, kind of, I think, Trevor was, I mean, Sky Cam is much easier for these quarterbacks, I assume. But watching him pick apart what defenses were going to do while on the Manning cast, I thought was really cool. And then Keyshawn Johnson stopped by for a blast. Other than those conversations, the football wasn't anything other than Bosa, that D-line of the Chargers, yep. wrecking shop, yep. and then Justin Herbert and Keenan. Allen Man. doing their thing on the offensive side. Austin Eckler scored like six touchdowns. Only one of them counted last night. Yep. It is awesome to be in the middle of a football season, but we are at the exact halfway point of the NFL season. And for the first time ever. Oh, what? On this particular program. And it's not just me. Obviously, the Toxic Table's here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Great looking ponies on your chest, pal. Thanks, pal. You need the horses just like you need the cats. Hell yeah. Right. Well said. And the dogs. I've heard the horses have like a really powerful innate ability to kind of know you and yeah they have they're like super they're like oh, big yeah. ass dogs yeah. oh yeah very smart a lot of mana incredible a lot of mana tons of mana big brain mm -hmm. very athletic and huge i've only been around horses a few different times majestic creatures oh yeah big is the perfect fat thing. ass oh mm -hmm. well big fat asses on those things. big fat other things too dongs well that's one half of the hammer Dad. cowboys tone dick we were all i guess that's certainly one thing that we could describe we're talking about majestic creatures we don't need to necessarily just go right into horse dong talk but i will say i like ponies those ones are wild too don't be trying to break them no -uh. don't be trying to break them because they'll break you yeah. if that is the case also nine-year nfl vet host of everything db that'll happen later today darius j butler is here 
today we'll be debuting uh, the middies. Ooh. Yeah, don't be smoking mid, obviously. We don't love everything about that. But the mid-season NFL awards, the middies, we will hand out. All the end-of-season awards we will hand out today if it was to be done today through the first half of the NFL season. The NFL Jets aren't going to win. Or the N New York Jets aren't going to win any of these. Nope, no. Never. But there are a couple teams that show up in a big way. We also potentially just went to the sports books and saw who the odds-on favorites were. Maybe. And let the sports books <laughs> decide who's having the Maybe. best season and broke it all down. Let's talk about last night's game a little bit more. Darius J. Butler, you were on the Chargers your whole life pretty much. Yep. No. That's not true. That's a lie. Your whole TV lie. life yeah. since yeah. Justin Herbert Fair has been drafted Fair. to the Los Angeles Chargers. Last night was the first time I saw you pick against him. It actually scared, death, uh, scared me to death because I picked the Jets as well. Normally when somebody rides a bet, 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 and then backs off of it, mm -hmm. it's like that is definitely... Football gods, gambling gods are going to punish you. You didn't like the Chargers last night strictly because of decision-making uh, potentially by the head coach. I respect that. I think a lot of us. Did you see anything from the Chargers last night that makes you think they could maybe go on a run here? Maybe this uh, isn't going to be another year of the Chargers chargering. Is that what we saw last night maybe? No, I, I, the run defense was solid. Uh, defense as a whole was, was obviously pretty good. A lot of sacks in that game, but struggle offensively. That's why I was concerned with them going in. Obviously, you lose Mike Williams. You lost Josh Palmer going in this game. I think Herbert had like a buck. 36 yeah. or something like that passing. So we know this Jets team, this Jets defense uh, specifically has embarrassed a bunch of quarterbacks this season and did it again last night. Um, you know, obviously Eckler made some plays. Chargers defense made some plays, almost scoring there. But uh, no, nah, not, not really happy with everything I saw with the Chargers, but it's a big win. Back-to-back uh, -back wins for them, so that's always big. And then the Jets, I mean, that offense is just... It, it was tough to watch. You know, even, even when they made a play, it seemed like every time Brees Hall made a little play that potentially, you know, it's only one play for him. He can go 60 at any point. It will come back. It'll be a stupid penalty, a hold and a block in the back, just something. So couldn't get out of their own ways. Um, execution was just terrible offensively for the Jets. It was torture watching that. So yeah. bad. You know what I mean? Like, to your point, Herbert went for 136. 136 yards. Come yeah. on. Justin Herbert went for 136 yards. Zach Wilson somehow in there. It kind of, we all missed it, I think. 263 yards or a line. Yeah. 49 ball, attempts. Yeah. Almost 50 attempts put that thing on Zach Wilson's shoulder, even though you have Brees Hall mm -hmm. and the boys out there. It was a tough game to watch. But let's go to the AFC East uh, because the New York Jets are in there. And mm -hmm. the hope is obviously the man that will be joining us in the third hour today because his travel situations, Aaron Rodgers, will be able to come back and lead the Jets mm -hmm. somehow, some way. That's a story right out of the fairy tale. I hope it happens. Yes. Let's talk about the end of a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Let's go up there at Foxborough, New York. Oh boy. Let's go to New England. Mm. Let's go to a place that has the greatest dynasty in the history of professional sports, what they have done over the last 20-plus years. Sure. A lot of Super Bowls, a mainstay in the AFC Championship, at least, mm -hmm. and in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady goes on to become the greatest of all time. Bill Belichick, greatest coach of all time, greatest general manager of all time. They move on. Obviously, Tom Brady goes his way, and then now Bill Belichick has to build a brand-new team in a brand-new image. That image was Mac Jones. Now has Mac Jones done well, nowhere near as good as Tom Brady. So bad that team has been that now they're calling for a little bit of a change. Uh, whoa. Now there's rumors floating everywhere. Oh, Bill Belichick's going to get fired. And if Bill Belichick gets fired, there's 31 other teams that are potentially thinking to themselves, Bill Belichick's available? What do we got? People are saying maybe he goes to the Chargers. Maybe Bill wow. Belichick goes to the Chargers. Be nice. They got a quarterback. They got weapons. Mm -hmm. They got a team that needs it, an ownership that's able to do it. They're also saying maybe he goes to the... Uh, this is just fodder from myself. I said Buffalo Bills. But, yeah, well, so that Whoa. ain't going to happen. Whoa. But they're putting, they're putting him at the Commanders, you know, because yeah. brand new ownership, mm -hmm. everything going on. There's a lot of people that are thinking that the end is maybe near for Bill Belichick with the New England Patriots. How does it shape up? We shall see. There's a video now we see of the Crafts. There's a lot of rumors of what Bob Kraft has said about Bill Belichick in the past coming off an elevator, yep. okay, after the Tom Brady split. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a good lip reader, look at the bald one. Jonathan, he's on the right. Yeah, he's a kid. Listen to what he says. I think he says, yeah, we got to watch. They're nowhere near good enough. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that is what every lip reader on the internet has basically said that Jonathan Kraft said yep. there. Mm -hmm. He's obviously talking about the Patriots. Yes. Con man. 
I know today you have great juice, great energy. I don't, I don't know what the Celtics or the Bruins did last <laughs> night, but I love everything about your vibes on this particular Tuesday. Whenever you look at the future of the Patriots, is it real that Bill Belichick is going to get fired? He's going to end up somewhere else? He's going to break the record? And what the hell are the Crafts going to do to replace a GM and a head coach and also potentially a quarterback? That feels like a nice 10 to 50. Oh, no. Oh, are the no. Patriots in a spot that the Lions were in for like 30, 35 Ooh. years? Are you in where the Colts are right mm. now? What are the Patriots' Whoa. future? looking like and how does this get settled you think they're definitely not where the Colts are because the Colts are good at, at football they yeah yeah score, you're damn right they score they score points so I mean if you're if you're scoring 20 plus points a game it's sure. at least fun to watch uh yeah it's bad uh the whole Bill Belichick being completely fired that I don't think should happen he should still be the coach now as far as GM goes yeah I think a lot of people would be okay with maybe someone else going in there making Obviously still having a lot of, you know, conversations with Bill about what they want to do. But having someone else in there, I think everybody in New England would be comfortable with. The Crafts. So how would that work? Oh, I have no I idea. Bill, how, so Bill Belichick, human, right? Maybe not human. Yeah, but yeah, it might not be. So now somebody else is coming in yeah, like, and uh, telling them. Hey, this this is the players. <laughs> From well, the how old is he? How old is he? If he is seventy two, yeah. if Bob Kraft goes to him and he writes down all the players that have been signed over the last four years and where they are now, I think there would be maybe, maybe, maybe not. But I think there would be some sense like, yeah, you're right. Aguilar, Johnu Smith, right. you know, Cam Newton, you could throw in there, but he also paid him nothing. He bridged the gap, yeah, and he didn't pay anything. Cole Strange in the first mm -hmm. round, you know, and Nikhil Harry. Uh, like, there, there are a lot of things you could kind of write out where people could say, okay, Bill, like, look, obviously you are the greatest of all time as a GM and a coach, but something has to change. And I'm not saying, like, this isn't on Bill. Like, no one, I think, is watching these games thinking Bill Belichick's the reason this team stinks. Like, the team isn't good because of injuries, of course, and in part to the signings that have been made that haven't worked out. Like, they just haven't. I understand what you're saying about how, like, S logically, logical. Hey, yeah, yeah. yeah, the mm -hmm. signings have not gone, but humans here yeah. are the, are what is happening. So Bill Belichick just says, "You know what? Yeah, somebody else will be the general manager. Somebody else will do the trades, the contract negotiation mm -hmm. that I've done for the last twenty five years. Somebody will be able to decide who my team is going to look like that yeah. I'm going to coach it. I don't think that's possible. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's possible, but I do appreciate the fact that maybe there is a way to explain to Bill that if he was just to focus on coaching, maybe his life would be better. They get back to winning, but it would have to be the right person coming in GM. It would have to be like his kid, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know how, how else that would work. He's had people there over the years, obviously, been kind of like the de facto GM, uh, Pioli, Casario, um, I forget who the Lombo. Was. I was at Lombo, of course. Um, but maybe you bring in someone with type, some type of spirit, or maybe you bring someone back. You know, that's kind of his MO as well. Somebody maybe Lombo is back. Somebody yeah. already, you know, yeah. familiar with, you know, how things are done, what, you know, the Patriot way. But um, if Bill leaves New England, I think it's going to be on his own accord. Uh, I think he's earned that. And, you know, observing the relationship between him and Kraft <laughs> from afar and up close, I just feel like that will um, forever be the dynamics. It's almost, you, you rarely say this in sports. But it's almost owed to him when you have, oh. when you've done that too. That's what John was saying. We got to watch. We, yeah. I mean, you done we that. We got to watch. <laughs> you done yeah. it to our They're nowhere near like good enough, but we got to watch. Six mm -hmm. six Lombardis in, in the facility. You look at, you know, Patriot Place and everything that they've done in Foxborough. Obviously, yeah. the league is, what have you done for me lately? But, I mean, yeah, I think he'll leave. When he does leave, uh, it'll be on his own. Now, listen, you guys called for Mike McCarthy to get the hell out of there after he did a lot of winning in Green Bay. That's a little different. It though. wasn't fantastic, but, like, Connor's saying, nah, he hasn't been owed a damn thing. No. Now, I think the reason why he's saying that, what? I'm I'm saying I don't think that is how people view it, that he's owed that way. Okay, like, got it. So Connor's saying that is not necessarily a positive – you know, Bill Belichick treated people this way. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill Belichick brings in Teddy Bruschi. Mm -hmm. He goes, hey, listen, allegedly, I don't know if it's ever been. Well, Ninkovich told us. We're cutting me. you, okay? <laughs> yeah. Or you can retire. <laughs> yeah. It's one You can do whatever you want to do. Goes to other every player, basically, that has played. Hey, we don't think you're good enough anymore. You're either going to retire and we're going to do this honorable or we could just. We'll just kick you the hell yeah, out of it. We'll, bye just, bye. we'll turn your thing up. That's kind of been the 
Belichick way of Absolutely. handling business. So if that was to happen to him, I assume he would both respect it and understand it. But if you're coming from Kraft's standpoint, to that, your, that's what I'm, sp I'm speaking yes, from. His. I'm not from fans standpoint. or former players. I'm sure a bunch of former players would love to see him, you know, get the axe at this point. <laughs> fans, you know, I have obviously been sport your whole life. Of course, you guys have been having parades in, in the city for championships. So I'm not speaking from their standpoint. I'm just saying from Robert Kraft's position. Uh, I, I think Bill will, maybe it's a conversation there, like, hey, maybe what do you want to do? What How if he do does do the Bill this? Belichick? What yeah. if he does the hey? Yeah, listen, we're gonna fire you. <laughs> yeah, you can still retire though if you'd like to do. And what if he just plays the Teddy Bruschi conversation or plays any of the ex uh, uh, Patriots that were legends there, where he told them their time is up. You ain't worth a damn anymore. I hate to tell you this, but I'm the guy that's gonna have to do that. Would that take place this year? Are they gonna run it back for another year? Like, how do you think this kind of? It, let's just put a bow on this because yeah. it's a lot of Patriot talk. It's very negative. Well, it's, I, mean, I don't like yeah, how negative it is. There are two but it is very negative. You got an apology two on deck, so you need to get prepared there, Tony. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of positivity Damn. coming from your side. But do you think this happens this year? How long do you think this kind of drags out? I think you give them another year. with. Uh, so one more year. Yeah, I think. So next a, year. With a top five pick, if if in all the cap space that we have, if he can't, if nothing changes and we look back on this next year and we're sitting at two and seven, then, yeah, I think it is done. And I don't know if Bob Crabb. Kraft feels that way that he deserves it just because it has gone so loud and because of the Brady Belichick relationship like Kraft having to repair the Brady Belichick relationship I assume now looking at it he thinks like Bill screwed this up with Tom and that probably doesn't help so I don't know if he has the, this guy deserves it because it's been four years but obviously as a Belichick guy I would like to see him finish it out he's not retiring he will get that win record it's just they're saying he's younger than ever off the field yes. yeah they say he's living he, a little bit yeah, yeah. Sure. he's doing a bunch of stuff off. The field. What's what does that? that mean? He's just living his life to the fullest, and I couldn't support it more. How? Oh. How? He's. I can't say that word. <laughs> he he is. Uh, he's being an absolute dog. <laughs> <laughs> that, that isn't a dog. That's a dog. There's that, the rumors on the streets up there in New England yep. is that Bill Belichick has a revenge body. Yeah, oh, that's right. Okay. He's out there living a little bit. I think is what you were about to maybe not say into yeah. this particular. Uh, yeah, he's got more than a revenge body. I think we could put it that way if you want to. Put what, what way? Put how Belichick's doing off the field, per se. And you, <laughs> and you do have to say it this way, because if you just say how he's doing off the field, it's how he's doing off the field is more so how it has to be put. So down. Connor's name is uh, Boston Connor is how we call him, obviously yeah. from the Boston area. Sure. Has a lot of friends. Went to uh, six years of high school, so he yeah. met uh -huh. up with a lot of people who potentially right. know a lot of things. Exactly. And boy, the rumor bug that gets sent into Connor's phone mm -hmm. about what's going on back at home is certainly enlightening about Bill Belichick yeah. maybe living a little different life than we thought. Yeah, pretty it's accurate. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's usually it's pretty, pretty accurate. It is usually spot on. And to your point about being in high school for six years, actually played uh, Jonathan Kraft's kid in, in football at one point. Not well. that that's a source. Not that that's a source. <laughs> not that that's a source. I do not know Johnny's boy. All I know is that he used to Good play boy. football. Sweet boy. Uh, let's move along to something more positive out of the AFC. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to hand the floor mm -hmm. right over to a man who is a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan yep. and one half of the hammer, Don Cowboys Tone Diggs. Where's my camera? Shut up, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I have to apologize um, to Cincinnati Bengals fans. Hey, here we go. Hey. That was really good. That was really good. Congrats, Tony. Hey, I, um, yesterday I said that – the really cool stripe thing that they did uh, in the Paycor Stadium, which is a third-tier um, timekeeping system uh, company, Paycor is. Just want to get that out there. Jeez. Um, the ADP is huh? the best. Um, I got enough money to sell. I thought that the Bengals fans wouldn't be smart enough to pull that off on their own, and that was just the wrong way of going about <laughs> thinking about this. And I said that I didn't have respect for the Bengals – I didn't mean the football team. The football team is very good. I meant the fans and the franchise as a whole I didn't have respect for. So I wanted to kind of clear that up there. Um, I just didn't – I should have thought about it this way. Like, when you're the 32nd ranked uh, valuation as far as what your team is worth, I should have realized that the cheap owners and, and, and people over there Tony, wouldn't wait. have spent money to put T-shirts on every single seat. <laughs> You know, they famously served slop out of a janitor's bucket to Carson Palmer, and he had to get his get out of there. He did tell us um, that. It's true. Chili. So, 
That was my fault. You guys definitely did the the stripe thing on your own, which was which was super cool. Um, and I was wrong. Hey, that's and good. I apologize for being wrong. That's good. We'll give you an out here. You you're looking for one or you got more? And they went 30 years without winning a playoff game. Oh. I also don't respect that. <laughs> but the team's good now. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Way to go. All right. There you go. Hey, that was All really right. good. That was a great apology. Yeah, Thank it you. was a really good apology. You acknowledged some things in there. It was awesome to learn that that was not the stadium putting the T-shirts out there. And normally, you would automatically assume that because of how good it was kind of dialed in right there. But then we got a lot of people telling us, you think Mike Brown's giving out free shirts to 65,000 people? Not Even case. if those shirts are eight bucks a pop, just yeah, start no doing way. the math. Seriously. No chance they're doing that. They organize that. That's not easy to do, no. especially at the professional level. College, you can kind of send emails and everything to everybody. The whole uh, city of Cincinnati coming together to do that, beautiful. But I also think it... Echoes the sentiment that that a- environment and atmosphere, college like. Yep. That's a real home field advantage mm-hmm. over there in Cincinnati. Yeah. They're playing great ball right now. You've mentioned it a few times. Uh, AJ's mentioned it. Obviously, Pac, that, that's it. that's where he's at. So, College Town, like that, that is impressive coordination. I still don't know how they did it. I don't know what Facebook group, Reddit. Yeah, I don't know. So Twitter, I, I saw like, a tweet. Twitter, yeah. Okay, okay. So, I mean, it's impressive, though, to get. The whole stadium uh, on, online for that. That was dope. Let's stay. Great, great apology, Tom. Yeah, Thank it was you. a very good Big apology. Big Big Thank you. Very adult of you. I'll admit when I'm wrong. What you said about the slop is real. Carson Palmer came on and yeah, said, Yeah, he did. Line. It was gross. Yeah. They're serving us buckets of chili pretty much. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he got to pay for hot dogs at half. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You dunk and nacho Down cheese. Yeah. yeah. And that's just what they were doing. Yeah, no yeah. ketchup or mustard. No, and we are, we've documented pretty, pretty well before we got on ESPN. We just lost all power. Yeah, I, I, saw, saw, I saw the lights out. We lost all power. We're kind of having a Cincinnati Bengals issue right now. We <laughs> a just lost bit. power to our place. But we have an indoor facility here. We could do a practice. Cincinnati didn't have an indoor facility just a couple mm-hmm. years ago. When their team was in the Super Bowl, they had to go to the University of Cincinnati in between field hockey and lacrosse practice mm-hmm. and get their work in for the Super Bowl in 2021 or whatever it was. Now they have an indoor facility. Yep. They have a sponsorship on the stadium. Mm-hmm. Their fans are organizing the entire stripe of the stadium. What a come up. Congratulations to the Bengals. Awesome. And you talk about like uh, the crafts talking about Bill Belichick. It's like Joey B. Oh man, Joey B. Yeah. is really the rebirth of that entire city and town. And what a great football town it has become. It's crazy. You talked about what thirty, I think 30, 31 years maybe going without a, a, a playoff win. That goes to show you how important it is getting that quarterback position right. Like having the right guy, obviously, in the draft, having the number one pick. They were ready to run Zach Taylor probably out of town. And then he just comes and just revitalizes the whole city, the whole organization. Crazy how, how how important that position is. I do like that we're not giving Zach Taylor the credit uh, yeah. as we would uh, potentially in other places. That and that's because the first year of oh. Zach Taylor, what an ugly year. Oh. Remember, traded in Dalton on his birthday. Yep. yep. Uh, or told him he was getting benched, benched. and, and then they, not traded him right. on his birthday. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. And they lost, and it was ugly. And, oh, this guy's going to have a job because the Browns aren't going to fire anybody because they don't have to pay a guaranteed contract. So this is the future. And it's like, how'd this guy get this job? Well, he was with McVay mm-hmm. for 20 minutes. Oh. I mean, it was a bad start and then bang here we are and you got fans doing this and Super Bowl implications pretty much every single week congrats to Cincinnati let's stay in the AFC North in Ohio there's a team up north and you say mm-hmm. you got to get that quarterback position right I think they're hoping that they did that whenever they spent the biggest amount of money in the history of play, uh, paying quarterbacks but what they do have on their team is somebody ain't like the others mm-hmm. there's somebody on that team that ain't from here okay it's very evident yep <laughs> way too big, mm-hmm. way too fast, what? way too explosive, what? way too smart, what? way too good at football. What? Ladies and gentlemen, Miles Garrett. Yeah. Yeah. What an introduction, man. I appreciate it. Hey, it's a real deal. I got to see you up close and personal whenever you took on the Colts. And let's do this real quick, okay? We have a couple plays just from this season that you have done that makes me believe that you're not an actual human, pal. Do you see the way these teams respect you? You drew a delay a game because the <laughs> double team was running back and forth like it was Red Rover, Red Rover. At what moment in your life did you expect this, realize this? And why don't we do this every single play if they're going to double you? Let's get a delay a game every single time. Man, they, they try to hide it a little bit better. I mean, I, did, I think Braver was like, the hell with the disguise. We're just going to double this guy. I don't care if he knows or not. 
Okay, so let's talk about you standing over top of a guy, practicing little crossover moves like this was some pickup basketball in the offseason where you're taller than everybody and dunking on their face. J.J. Watt said that he's been in this feeling before where there is not a single human on earth that could block you. Is that a good indication of what you were feeling in that moment there? Yeah, I mean, I feel that every time I talk on the show, but if, if anyone knows it well, the, uh, J.J. knows it. No better than anyone recently. I mean, he he's been at the highest level. So what'd you do? You just got bored and you just started doing it, and then you thought, man, this is pretty sick. Were you kind of in a mode? You didn't even know that you were doing that, or how did this come to be? You think, Miles? I was just in that flow state, man. Uh, I do it at practice and just having fun. You no, know, just you no know, trying to to mess with my my teammates. You no, know, bring out new stuff that I might incorporate into the game. I was like, I've been doing this for a while. Let me. Let me break it out uh, when I get the the right opportunity. And you know, we we got the call, and I was you know lined up over the center. I had time. I could you know I was a spinner, so I could you know get up and, and mess around with him. I was like, oh yeah, we we gotta we get we gotta show the boys that this isn't just for play. We we, we pull this out in the 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 prime time games as well. Yeah, the internet was losing its mind. This is a regular season game. This is not a preseason game. These are against other professional athletes. This guy's. Dicking around yeah. before the ball even gets snapped. And then uh, let's go to it. This is all this season. All these absurd things are happening. Here's you in Indianapolis. Double team, no problem. Let's go ahead and win this game outright by ourselves. Let's ruin all of Indianapolis. There was five miles, Garrett, and then you just walked off strutting the entire time. We're six yards away from you in our suite right back here, and there was not a single thought that any human could get a body in front of you that entire game. You wrecked the whole damn thing. You ruined our Sunday, Miles. You ruined our entire Sunday from first quarter all the way through the fourth quarter. Even whenever field goals were being kicked, Miles, you decide to do something so bananas and absurd that people think, that has got to be illegal. That's got to be illegal. Yeah. Watch it back. Nope, not illegal. Just a man doing something that humans aren't supposed to do against other professional athletes. So I tell you all of that to tell you this. Is this the best year you've had? And why do you think you're at this state of your career where you're dominating every single week? You know, I want to start off by saying uh, I wouldn't be ruining anybody's day, if, including yours, if you were a Browns fan. This makes this a lot easier for the both of us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, the future of our team right now, I don't know how it's going. But Relax. Anyway, yeah, let's stop it. Don't even put that into my ear. But anyways, are you playing your best football right now? Like, what I got to witness up close and personal, what we all see every single week, like, do you realize it? How much more can you go? And why do you think you've got to this point? What is it? I think I'm doing the the my prime, the peak of my powers, and you no, know, I think it's just a uh, you know matching that that experience and that wisdom as well as like my athletic ability. You know, all those, both of those being combined, I think that's that's really you no know, taking my game to a, uh, another level. And I got to give credit to my teammates and, and Jim Schwartz because you know, without those guys and him putting us in position to to make plays, you know, none of, none of that's possible. He you know he's willing to line me up anywhere and, and try out stuff. You know, he's he knows I'm I'm gonna do my thing. He's like, no, we'll get you one on one, and you no, know, you'll wreak havoc. So, go do it. Yeah, well, you've certainly done that. Let's talk about Coach Schwartz because there was a bunch of stats that we were reading off like the first five, six, seven weeks where yeah. this team's only given up two first downs all yeah. season. There's only been like 14 yards gained in the second quarter against this defense. What has he instilled? Is it an empowerment? Is it strategy? What do you think Schwartz has really done to come in and make you guys such a dominant team? Man, it's both. I mean, he com he comes in. It's, it's a mentality. You know, he's uh, you know we live by three things. It's you know, it's passion, it's toughness, and that's that's effort. And then he he bundles you know effort with swag. You no, know, you, you got to go out there. You got to you got to love the game. You you want to let everyone know that you love the game. You no, know, you you celebrate the success the success of not only yourself but your teammates. And uh, you no, know, he doesn't just give loafs. You know, if you're if you're dragging ass on a play, it gives low. So if you don't, if you're not celebrating hard enough, not only, not only if you make a play, but for your teammates, now you, you better, you know, let the the crowd feel you, the opponent feel you, and uh, you know, show appreciation for you know every single play. As, as long as we make a, a big play, you know, let everybody know. And on the other side of it, you now he's putting guys in position to to make plays, not just myself and you know, everybody up front, but you know, putting those guys on the back end. You know, uh, and man more often than not because you no know, they they want to be aggressive they they want to you no know, lock up guys one on one they 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 live for that challenge 
and then letting those those linebackers come downhill. You know, we're we're penetrating and taking up you no know, double teams. They want he wants those linebackers flowing downhill and making plays in the backfield. Yeah, you got studs all over the place, and I appreciate the fact that Schwartz is giving out lows if you're not celebrating. So then you can just dance all over our faces in Lucas Oil Stadium. Yeah. I mean, just all over our faces, mm -hmm. just dancing all. You heard the Miles Garrett chants, obviously, in our stadium. I I assume it happens everywhere else. How long has that been happening? And what the first time you heard it was it? What was the feeling that you got? Man, the first time I got it was uh, that four and a half sack game I had against uh, the Bears, and that that I mean that was outstanding. I was, I was already having a hell of a game, but for them to you know start start doing the the chants was was awesome. Yeah, it, it started to feel like I was I was somebody for a second. You know, I had to put the put the hand up. <laughs> now you have to play into it. I'm like, if, if I'm gonna be the guy, let me play the character for a second. Yeah, what every day you feel good? You ever wake up on a Sunday and maybe the body? So it says you're six four two seventy. Is that accurate? Well, my ID says I'm six six, so I'm somewhere in the middle. Well, the NFL <laughs> tries its best to make everybody look as small as possible, even though every other league tries to make everybody as big as possible. So, is two seventy though is the accurate weight? Somewhere around there. I, I'm probably a little bit lighter these days, but yeah. Okay, so we see you dunking, we see you running, we see how low you can get in your bend. Do you ever get sore? Like your body, your, your body just seems to be different than everybody else's. Is there days where you wake up and you're like, you know what, I can't do a 75 inch box jump today like or is it every single day you're able to just go crush uh i don't want to you know, sound like yeah uh, do, it. do it like <laughs> i want to sound arrogant that's what i would say nah, but yeah I, I wake up every day and I, I, I just don't feel like sore like after games like that that evening it's like man i might have some bumps and bruises but the next day i'm usually I'm, I'm good like i'm ready to go work out that's fun that would be so much fun. Sounds fun. I took a dump two days ago. My leg, like, my hammies. <laughs> Cramped up. Cramped up. Sore. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at. So good luck with retirement, even though I think we're going to be a little bit different as we go. What is the workout routine? Because there's those photos on the internet mm -hmm. of you just like, you know, you know, oiled up. Mm -hmm. all Sir. And then you're just, yeah. What do we do? Is it an everyday thing? Or are you strict? What about the diet? How long have you been doing it all? Tell me how I can look like you. That'd be cool. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I have a personal chef that I have a routine with every single day. Uh, work out pretty much almost every day. I mean, Monday, you get a workout in. Tuesday, you get a stress routine in, get treatment. Wednesday, you get a workout in. Thursday, small workout, stress routine. Uh, Friday, workout in, treatment. Saturday, um, stress routine. And then Sunday, play the game. Yeah, but what is this? What is this? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Is that every day? That was, that was like a, a an off day. I was oh, I had to find okay. It. <laughs> okay. Oh. I had to I had to find a gym, and I was like, man, let me let's just you no know, go get something in. And it wasn't it wasn't planned, and I was like, all right, you no, know, I feel like hitting this today, and it was like this turned into like a full body thing, and then hit the sauna, came out, and my boy was like, hey, it's, you know. Let, let me let me get a picture real quick. They got to they got to show the people you're you're always working. I was like, all right, sure. I guess. Right, let me, <laughs> Whatever. I guess is what we're going to have to do. Think about tackles around the NFL, left and right tackles. Just their friend showed them that photo the night mm -hmm. before a game. Hey, this is the human coming into town tomorrow. Oh, Just a little bit of a heads up. That's awesome. You instill that fear, and the way you play is fun to watch. I also appreciate the fact you're repping municipal there across the hat in the hoodie. Shout out to Mark Wahlberg. Also, shout out to these Hell shoes. Yeah. Look, you got a, we got a box. Look at these shoes. Uh, these yeah, shoes. Pretty good. Huh, uh, Miles? Right there. Hey, pretty damn comfy, aren't they? Yeah, they, hey, yeah. Real quick. I got a pair as well. They're all white. The... Whew. Comfort in uh, the I don't want to the mm, the fit not, the the comfort and like uh, feels like they're nicer shoes. Yes, and they look like very good shoes. Are those yours? Did you design them? How? What's the tie-in with Municipal? Uh, Mark had those. You no, know, those are the, the origins. But uh, I had a relationship with Mark for a while, and you know, aligned and you know what we wanted to to accomplish in that in that market. You know. Want to, want to do big things together. And so it's just a matter of, you know, how how we wanted to do things. So it's like, you know, I wanted to have my my own shoe, wanted to you know, work with athleisure because that's kind of you know, where I, I wear on the daily. And so it was a no-brainer as far as, you know, two people who wanted to to you know, carve a different lane for this, for this industry. 
You're a fashion guy? Always been a fashion guy? Yeah? We see it Halloween. I, looking absurd. I had no fashion until I got to the NFL. Well, you got money. That's what happened. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. You kind of get into it a little bit. Didn't have, I had to save my pennies for food. I wasn't worried about looking the best back in the day. Yo, you look like trash. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. Had to eat lunch today. <laughs> uh, so I appreciate what you're up to. Uh, we're proud of you, man. Yeah, Keep yeah. growing. Keep growing yeah, the business yeah. brand. And obviously, everything you're doing on the field is awesome. Speaking of that, Tone has a question for you, Miles. Miles, I was, I was seeing if you were aware that there is a daily argument on Twitter or X about you and TJ Watt and who is better between Steelers and Browns fans. Do you know that that's always going on? Do you have a relationship with TJ since you're in the division? And is any extra motivation since you guys are in the division and you guys are always up for defensive MVP? Uh, I, I've definitely heard the debate. Uh, now, whether I, I care, not really. I, th I think uh, TJ is a, a hell of a player, and I think he's uh, he's fun to watch. Now, I have a lot of respect for, for def defensive guys. I don't care if he's in my division or not. But uh, as far as, like, you know, Healthy competition. I, I, I mean, I love it. You know, he's you know, riding our backyard. You know, our, our teams have history. We're all our defensive ball. So, you know, a matter of, you know, us, us going at each other. It's nothing personal. But, yeah, I think uh, we both know that, you know, the others on the opposite side of the field and want to want to excel when, when you know, we, we match up. Yeah, people that are competitive are going to want to do that. Right now, the AFC North, by the way, I think yeah. if it was to end, all four teams would end up in the playoffs. So it's hot in the kitchen up there. You guys are going to beat the hell out of each other as the rest of the season goes. Classic AFC North. Speaking of beating the hell out of each other, it feels like defenses are having their way this year. I know you guys are playing the best defensive football you've played in a long time under that Schwartz defense. Do you recognize that? Do we think, like, offenses aren't as good as they were in years past, or do you think defenses have gotten better, Miles? I think defenses are, are catching up, you know, they're, they're letting them get away with so much, you know, as far as like the, the rules. So defense is finding a way to, you know, to, to even things up and whether that's scheme or guys can getting better or learning more, adjusting. Um, I, I think, you know, we're, we're finding, found this, uh, this power balance. Dude, the primetime game, the primetime unders. What is the stat on the primetime game's unders? 22 and 7. 22 and 7 to the under. That means, like, what the offense is supposed to do, obviously. You're not gambling. We're just giving you a heads up. Nobody's doing it. Like, it is under, under, under. And it's, I'm going to tell you, watching you guys dominate in person was cool. But watching offenses just fail, 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 fail. Not good for the league. But also... Not your problem. You don't need to deal with that <laughs> at all. Darius has a question for you, Miles. Yeah, Miles. Uh, obviously, you're a game record, so teams' offenses are going to be keyed in on you, but crowds are too, and it seems like you've been playing to the crowd more and more. Do you prefer playing to your home crowd or kind of being on the road in a hostile environment? I love playing on the road, man. You know, there's there's nothing better than, you know, oh. 60,000 going dead ass silent after you make a <laughs> outstanding play. And then, and then you 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 know you you egg them on a little bit. Yeah, you and this one. Yeah, yeah you, you give them you know, a little something to remember, and that that's how that's how you no know, legends are made, man. That's how that's how teams are remembered. Man. You literally were doing this, you know, <laughs> for like forty <laughs> yards. You were just doing this, and then all the Browns fans were going bananas. It was wild. It yeah. was wild. You took over that game. You completely took over there. Yeah. And just walked all the way to the sideline like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. All the way to the sideline like that. It was... Ruined our jersey. Yeah, it did. It ruined our Indiana Knights jersey. Yeah, no, yeah. Yep. We had special jerseys on, Miles. You do that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, we had special, special jerseys. jerseys. Huh? Those were special jerseys? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they were ugly, but they were special. Miles? Oh, cool. Miles? This is my special jersey now. <laughs> you, you remember those jerseys from me now. That's true. What's your problem? <laughs> it was a good day. Now, they're called Indiana Knights jerseys, and it was a 1 o'clock game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's because we got no primetime games for all season. Not, not a single one. <laughs> so I don't know why they picked you guys to showcase these games, but it was a great game. It was a great game, and you ruined it. You absolutely ruined it. What a night. What a day. It was an honor to watch you play, to be honest with you. Ty, has a question for you, Miles. Yeah, Miles, just curious. Pat mentioned it earlier. You know, we've seen the basketball highlights are the Browns ever like, hey, listen, we understand you're a beast out there, but you got to stop playing basketball. I mean, you showed up 
with the Cavs at Summer League. We've seen you, you know, yoking on people at what LA Fitness or whatever. Like, is there ever a thought that they're like, hey, we understand that these clips are incredible. We love watching you play basketball, but the last thing we need is you turning an ankle or dunking on some guy <laughs> and then having some guy, you know, try to take your legs out from yeah, underneath Gary you. V. Exactly. Bingo. After you embarrass him, or are they pretty okay with you going out there embarrassing people on the basketball court? I'd say they're pretty okay. Um, they know I'm not gonna, I'm not, a, I'm not gonna hoop with anybody who, who would think of taking me out. No, I, I usually I'll get a, a good group of guys, whether you know it's uh, you know, people I already already know or you know, semi pros or pros. So I, I'm usually in like a, a good circle of of men, and we can get some some good hooping in, and nothing nothing crazy is gonna go on. So whenever there's like in those pickup games, you're just picking guys, you know, and who you're gonna guard. I do a full, hey, we going in the paint? No, sweet. All right, so we're going three-point line, three-point line, you and me all day. Has there? I assume when you show up at these things, and then in warm-ups you're doing this. In warm-ups you do this, just right here. How you doing, 270? Hi! Oh. No problem. Looking the way you look. Off. Tough tough to find guys that to play with, to play basketball alongside. Is that probably a little bit of an issue? I'm not playing. <laughs> I'm not playing with you ever. Just want to let you know that. You gotta, you gotta try and find those those college guys, those young college hoopers, you know, young semi pro guys. You know, they they run. You got some former pros who play on Miami who who can still ball. So, you no, know, and I, sometimes I hoop with my brother as well. He he gets some guys, and you no, know, he he can hoop still at his age. I don't know how he still does it, but you know, it, it, it's it's a good time. Anybody taking charges? Anybody ever take a Miles Garrett charge? You know, I only dunk on people if <laughs> they go up. So if you if you go up for a charge, I, I might just you know stop and pull up a floater or uh, mid range. But if, if you try to go up with me, then I, then I'll, I'll turn it over and dunk it. Oh, you're John Morant. Got it. Okay, you gotta do what you gotta do. Listen, you gotta do what you gotta do at 280. Okay, I got it. Last question here for you. We appreciate you. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Miles. Obviously, you're unbelievable at football, and you probably don't have to do this, but because of how smart you are as well, are you got are you doing any you know shit talk, putting people in absolute pretzels, maybe even you know giving them a slam poem just in their face after you. <laughs> sack a quarterback or something or are you kind of just quiet during the game let your you know play do the talking i'm the quiet storm man i don't say anything to anybody no i'll help you up no we, we might you no know, laugh crack a joke but you no know, as soon as that play starts it's your behind that's it <laughs> what the hell is all this stuff miles what is this up here uh, is that godzilla is that god yeah a couple there's a, there's a couple of Godzillas up there. And a couple of figures I've gotten along the way. So, so okay, so what's that That little, what's a little human-looking thing on the left there? What is uh, what Small it, one. That love. Yeah, that one. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's Mob from Mob Psycho. Of course. I know that. Those look sick. So these are all collectibles? Is that what we got going on here? Yeah, I got a little collection. Oh, yeah, Goku's in there, right? I, I think I uh, just, yeah. there's not a lot of... Well, fortunately, I mean, you're seeing the, the little stuff. I have a, a huge mural to my right, which you, you would, uh, I, I think you'd appreciate. What is it? You shirtless? What's the mural? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, you, I can spin around and show you. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's take a tour. Where yeah, are we? Is this yeah. the office? Sure. Where are we right now? It is the office. It is the office. No! Oh! oh! Yes. yes. Holy hell. Holy hell. It's a full die. It's an actual die. Did you kill that thing yourself? Yes. It's what I do in my off season, you know. It's Dinosaur hunting? Full replica of Jurassic Park? Mason Rudolph's an idiot. Did you see what this guy? This guy killed a yeah. dinosaur yeah. with wow. his bare hands. Miles. Whew. Hey, oh, I'm happy good. that, hey. That's awesome. Yeah, that's Hell awesome. yeah. You're doing it. You did it. You figured it out. You beat the game. You're, you did it. <laughs> Got this all together. I'm honestly as proud as I've been. Well, you should have been proud after you ruined Indianapolis, and uh, <laughs> you do that every single week. Congrats on the municipal deal. We can't wait to rock it, to go ahead and mm -hmm. represent oh, everything yeah. you got going on, and keep crushing it. You're actually you're nominated for a MIDI this year, which is our first time ever giving out a midseason award, so congratulations to that as well. <laughs> Appreciate you, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, all pro, Miles Garrett. Yeah. He's an alien. Dog. Uh, How about what? that? What was that dinosaur? That yeah, was a full, that was a full life rep. replica of the end of Jurassic Park. The original. Popping out of the wall. I think like a lot yeah. of the. I mean, Nick just said it in my ear, and Nick is a nerd through and through. He was like, "Oh, Miles Garrett's a nerd." 
Like that's nerd. nerd's a compliment, by the way. Yes. Just so everybody See, knows, that I, is not a bad I thing. I unfortunately have to. He has to become one of my favorite human beings yeah. in the world now because of the Godzilla and the Jurassic Park combination. Yeah, it sounds like he was really speaking for you he there was. in his <laughs> office. Yeah, I love the that design. Guy. The comics over there. Throw yeah, comics on the wall. Dr. Yeah, Strange. Yeah, first edition. Edition. Super yeah. There. yeah, he had a first edition behind him too. I want to let you the back room there while he was showing that. Like, oh, oh it's an Naruto. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Goku there. Like every once in a while, I'll catch the tail end of it. And Goku's there. Yup, Godzilla. There. Yeah, I heard yep. Bill's belt buckle. Fucking. Yeah, he might be covered <laughs> in goo Don't right again. Now. I guess. Oh my God! Was that an F bomb? It was. That slipped right by me. Tony, you see, Miles that's, Tony? Pro, that's that's what we need to stop. Oh, I didn't. We need to all recognize what happens when it happens. He got so zeked up yeah. about <laughs> saying Bill was bopping his meat exactly. to to Miles's office, and he couldn't help himself. Just had to let an F dash dash oh. dash I N out. Yeah. And by the way, this show we were on a run. I yeah, know. good run. You know who the last person was to swear and say the F word on this show? Who's that? That, that son of a bitch right there. This Tony. guy. That's two times, Tone. Two times. And Bill, he's been crushing it. Yeah. yeah. Your first response whenever you say Bill's name shouldn't just be to swear. Okay. You said Naruto. I am so sick of it. You said Naruto, yeah. and that's how it automatically... To be was, fair, we do know that when Naruto's brought up, Bill's damn near covered in goo two minutes later. Well, Bill's been working his ass off. Yeah. yeah. Graphics, yeah. doing it all. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, We have updated the marquee, obviously. Oh, Zero days. Damn. Hope you're proud of yourself, Tony. I'm not. Hope you're proud of yourself, Tony. Tony. Son of a bitch. This is JSBN. Journalism yeah. Sports Network. That's right. Not swear, SPA. And you're going to talk about a guy's belt being unfast. I was super proud of myself. We're talking about Naruto. Yeah. Get for a long it. time. Miles Garrett was a great interview, too. I had and zero. Miles Garrett was super chill. Great interview. I had zero. Brought, you had Miles, brought Mason Rudolph. Had, had to. Two. That was a great he sneak. Had to. Had to. It was a good end. <laughs> yeah, it Did was. Had to. It was a good end. Yeah. It really was. Listen, stop the... You... Tone over there, dry snitching. Yeah, there. I hear it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got us, guys. They got us. Come on. Yeah, we're come out of the bushes. On. They found us. We're already having a full conversation. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, Come on. They got us, guys. Hey, get off the roof. We're fine. They're here. They know we drank underage, guys. <laughs> Line up. Get off the roof. <laughs> yeah, they're coming down now. I told them. I can't believe you guys found us. Yeah. <laughs> what are we that thinking? Guys <laughs> just went to dinner. Unbelievable. <laughs> Come out of the bushes, guys. They found us. Hey, speaking of um, finding, found out a lot of stuff about the Winston-Salem State University. Yeah. yeah. WSSU. Yeah. First take was down there this morning. That looked pretty sick. Oh, yeah. Know? That was Sweet pretty cool. You, I don't know if they feel the same thing we feel. We'll be live in Athens, Georgia, this Friday, by the way, yeah. for game day on Saturday. Our show will be live. Everybody will be there from noon to 3 Eastern time. Surprise guests. Ooh. Ooh. Really? Pretty good, I think. Okay. We don't really? even know that. I, I think there'll be a lot of chatter about one of the guests. Okay. Oh. I think there'll okay. be a lot of chatter about one of the guests that stops by. But them going and doing their show live, awesome. I wonder how they get through how I feel. Because if these people start to get bored, I automatically got to talk about something that I think they will yeah. have some sort of passion for. So doing that for three hours is certainly a balance of like, have football games, talk, NFL games to talk about. We're at this college campus. This particular college campus also in a conference. So we can't even maybe talk about college football yeah, yeah. in another conference. It's an interesting thing. That yeah. Winston-Salem crowd, though, showed up in a big way for them this morning, as did Savannah State yesterday. So shout out to them taking the show on the road. I appreciate that. But they're much more mentally tough than I am. Because if you've seen what these Friday shows have become, it's just been like, all right, yeah. all right, let's go, Georgia. What's up? What's up? <laughs> let's go, Georgia. We met ba basketball. Yeah, let's shoot yeah. basketball. <laughs> it's sweet. It's not easy. We get a, it's awesome. Yeah, it is a festival whenever we go down there, and every fan base has showed us a massive amounts of love. The University of Georgia, I'll be excited to see how this goes. Yeah. Uh, but lucky, obviously, to do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Utah Ute because of the live show and how sure. electric it can be. And I love their setup, too, like doing in the gymnasium, like people in the stands and everything. It is going to be so hard on Friday not to just <laughs> over the whole time. and over again. Yeah, that's all I've been thinking about is just I'm pumped to bark with the Georgia Dog fans. So wait until you hear their call, too. They have a call really? that, I, that I learned last mm. year. Pretty sweet. Like a dog whistle, really yeah. high? One of the lines is a drunk and obnoxious Georgia fan. That's one of the lines. Like, okay. everybody just kind of sings. <laughs> yeah, like, that's how like they... Like England. Yeah, like a drunk and obnoxious... Who was that coming down the track? <sighs> it's the mean machine of the red and black. Oh, pretty good. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Then there's a couple of lines, and then somehow... There ain't nothing finer in the land... 
then a drunk, obnoxious Georgia oh, fan. Yeah. That, then they all scream it. Yeah. Then a drunk, obnoxious Georgia, Georgia fan. fan. Go, dogs. Go, dog. Go, dog. Oh. oh and then they all start. <laughs> it's sick. I don't remember it completely. I learned it about a minute and a half before we went live on game day last year. And I was like, what's like a good, mm -hmm. you know, to one of the locals. I'm like, what's a good, like go dogs. What is one? And they go, what's that coming down the track? It's me machine of the red and black. And I'm like, well, I don't, this is a it's lot. A lot. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot here. What is this? They'll go with you though, if you do it. And then as we're sitting up there, you know, Herb street is like, are you doing that? And I'm like, let me, and I'm like, as the show's, kicking off and showing the intro. I'm like running through. I'm like, I think I got it. I think I got it. He's like, are you doing it? And I'm like, and then 20 seconds later, literally 90 seconds before the show starts, I learn it. Then 20 seconds into it, I'm like, really about to expose myself here. <laughs> and they came with me. Yeah, They were a great fan base for us Love game it. day. They all hate that I'm on there. Not all of them. Instead of David Pollock. So I'm excited to see how this whole thing goes on Friday. I'm a big fan of David Pollock though. Mm -hmm. I've never, would never say anything bad about David Pollock. He's been nothing but very nice to me. And I understood that he could have hated me from the very beginning, and he never did. But I'll be pumped to see our Georgia people. Because every time I've gone to Georgia, there's been a lot of people that love what you're doing. Hey, love what you're doing. Okay. Hey, love what you're doing. Now, with that being said, Atlanta to Athens, I think, is like an hour and a half drive. Cool. Yeah. I've only been in Atlanta. So Friday could be a scene, or it could be absolutely nothing. Either way, we are going to have a great time in Athens. It now. is absolutely going to be a scene. If we know anything about Georgia, it's that we know that people love to raise hell in Athens. Oh. Yeah. Hey, so, man. I mean, Who'd you learn that about? Well, you know, apparently Stetson Bennett, his last year on campus— he was just raising, raising all kinds people. of hell. And we, that was coming from a big time Georgia fan who, you know, knew a couple people who knew Stetson down there. And let's just say he was having a good time in Athens raising hell. Oh, and I think that continued. Yeah, maybe uh -huh. too good of a time. I think that yeah. continued. Yeah. Speaking of the voice that you just spoke in there, there's a lot going on with this Michigan oh, situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was, when I was on first take, which is what I was originally going to get to, and then I got distracted by the, um, Slater Industrial Academy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Founded in 1892 and yep. how awesome they were. Uh, Stephen A. Smith said they need to ban Michigan from the college football playoff. Whoa. And then, like, as he was laying out the reasoning why, I'm like, I could see how a lot of people feel that way. I could see how that could become an actual thing. That would be a huge move by a lot of parties. And that decision, which is massive, would have to be made relatively quickly. But they're saying that the Big Ten is going to make a move, maybe even before this Saturday's game yep. against Penn State. Pete Thamel mm -hmm. has reported that the Big Ten and new commissioner... Tony Petiti. Tony, Tony Petiti has... <laughs> and reason why I got to pick your ring on day is because uh, Tone Diggs said that I look like a 1980s Italian man with it's dress so awesome. pants. Tucked in tank top. <laughs> mm -hmm. Might as well go ahead and do this thing. So how you doing? How's your family? My favorite outfit that you've ever had on. To be okay, honest. sweet. Well, I'm enjoying it as well. Look at me evolving. You Hell know, yeah. growing up. Shout out to David Allen making some stuff that's much better than the normal crop from Amazon that I wear. But yes, they're saying that the Big Ten in Petiti, at the urgence of coaches, presidents, athletic directors from around Big Ten, they have listed off of things basically to Michigan saying, hey, here's all the allegations that we have information for. They have until tomorrow, end of day, to respond and answer why all these things happened. And then allegedly the Big Ten is going to move pretty quickly on a punishment. Who knows what the punishment is going to be? Is it going to be a suspension of Jim Harbaugh? Is it going to be anything bigger than that? I'm not 100% sure. But Stephen A. Smith was like, ban them. Now there's even more information coming out yeah. that the Michigan people are saying that you, Pete Thamel, Whoa. are refusing Whoa. to report news that makes Michigan uh -huh. not look like the villains, but maybe the people that were just doing what everybody else was trying to do to them. So, Pete, I will ask you, what's the deal? You know stuff that maybe you're not reporting because it might make Michigan look good? Oh. No, I, I don't think so, Pat. I think this is a classic kind of, uh, I have something over here, so I'm going to distract you with something over here. There's Michigan, I mean, this is just a classic tactic, uh, you know, because... Tony Petiti and 
the Big Ten, they have the coup de gras. They have it waiting, you know, in the wings. And and at this point, you know, Michigan, they're just going to do whatever they can to kind of save their behinds. Um, because, you know, we, we mentioned it, Tony Petiti and, and all of these kind of athletic directors and coaches and, you know, support staff, board of regents, et cetera, et cetera. They want that pound of flesh. <laughs> and uh, Jim Harbaugh's ass has been looking pretty fleshy as of late. So Pat Forty has come out yeah. being a kind of a counter Pete. So mm. Pat versus Pete almost mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with information and narratives. Pat has come out with a transcript seemingly from other Big Ten schools deciphering what the Michigan signs were. So they'd be using electronics to potentially wow. transmit information about getting Michigan signs, which is fascinating. Yeah, I think this started last night. The AP, the AP started with it yesterday and then the SI and Pat Forty have kind of come in with uh, that. The, the whole Big Ten potentially colluded to get Michigan signs. And then there was this whole Michigan what? branch of the internet last night that said Pete had this information information last week and he refused to report it so they started giving him a, a nickname on the internet last night uh yeah it's that's awesome. i mean every day it's something with this what was the nickname? Uh, they were calling him buckeye, calling him buckeye, buckeye pete. pete they're calling him buckeye pete whoa and saying and, this all started because he he applied to michigan many many years ago and 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 was rejected and that's why he went to syracuse instead and he's kind of held this resentment <laughs> or grudge towards the University of Michigan for quite some time. That's what people are saying on the internet. Oh, have you? Yeah, I mean... Geez. I mean, if you had to guess, do you think Pete Thamel couldn't get into Michigan? I mean, <laughs> that's quite laughable to we me. We normally just cold call people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is the show. Yeah. All the time. Yep. But I do not know if this is I, the right thing <laughs> to cold yeah. call. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it is sitting right here on my phone. Oh. Mm-hmm. As soon as you started talking and then Tone started talking and then the Pat versus Pete thing, I'm like, we just got to call Pete. We just got to call Pete right now. He's probably not able to answer, but I don't know if this is the right thing to do. Maybe a text. You know, might as well at least Pete. reach out. I do wonder Pete, if they're calling you Buckeye they're Pete. Calling Buckeye <laughs> Pete. <laughs> Thoughts? I wonder if Pete ever thought it would get to this point. They're calling you Buckeye Pete. They're calling you Buckeye Pete. Let's see if he answers. Bob Kravitz. <laughs> Was the one who reported about yeah. footballs being maybe deflated a little bit. Son mm-hmm. of a bitch. And his life in New England got absolutely ruined. You know, that became like what he, you heard Connor right there. Exactly. A lot of people, you think a lot of people in New England know beat reporters in Indianapolis, <laughs> Indiana? No. Kravitz's name is known up there because he was the first one to report about the deflate gate and everything that kind of took place and then the conversation that happened around it. That is what the authority Pete Thamel is going to become for the Michigan people, but that's Pete's job. That's yeah. job. Yeah. He's the authority on this entire thing. But people saying that Pete refused to report something because it might not fit the narrative that he's at, I don't think you know Pete. That would have been more news for Pete. to. Yeah, for sure. That would have been like, that would have got it big. Well, here we go. Just an interesting little, you know, counter punch. I like this. And we've and, taken quite a yeah, turn yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Because now we can go this way. And there's an investigation now this way. Like, I think Pete Thamel would want more conversation about more potential, I don't want to say investigations, but certainly in his world, it's better than a sprained ankle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sprained ankle on a college kid or coaching being fired. Yep. It's like, I people saying that he withheld information I don't know how that would be true. If you just look at Pete Thamel, the human, and how he operates, Mm -hmm. as soon as he got that and it was confirmed, now granted, it might have just been hearsay in his eyes. He might not have been able to get it completely locked in. That's coming out immediately because that's doing... Yeah, big number. Yeah, big, you know what for I mean. Sure. So I just think that's kind of a little rude for them to say that about our our friend Pete Thamel. Also, I just do. You, could you see? all the other teams in the Big Ten colluding against Michigan. Like, Michi- I mean, I understand that they've been saying that Michigan's comeback these last couple years has kind of been in response to them having people signs and stuff like that. But Michigan, before Jim Harbaugh got there, like, they stunk for a long time. I have a hard time seeing the conference collude and be like, hey, we got to take down Michigan. So unless they were all told, like, hey, Michigan's filming everybody. So yeah. We got to come together to kind of get it together. I then that it. adds a whole nother layer to the story. Right. Like, actually, all the teams knew about this mm-hmm. last year. They just didn't say anything because they didn't think anything would happen. So they just decided, yeah, to hell with it. We'll all get their signs. We'll do it Interesting. Too. And if Pete knew that, Pete would report that. We think. We believe. Next hour on the other side. See you then. Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. Used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings <laughs> so 
College Game Day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. No, big go, blue go, Jacks. Hosting Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake putt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hallelujah! Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes, yes, serious. Go! Yes, go! Yes! He's being stick with that pick team. They celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm going with the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! Oh. Please so excuse my dumb friend Kirk. You <laughs> <laughs> look at this crowd, they've been out here since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. <laughs> Time. The Dakota marker is back in beautiful Brookings, South Dakota. Elvin and Terry School. They might be the Jack Rabbits, but they're the goats today. Ladies and gentlemen, South Dakota State with the win. Give me that price in. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 7th, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Football! Happened last night, although it did not appear to be 2023 football, but that is what primetime games have been this year. The unders have hit in primetime games... 22 and 7. 22 times out of 29 times. That's information from one half of the Hammer, Don, Cowboys, and Bengals super fan, yep. Tone Diggs Res right there. I respect the football team on the field a ton. I'll tell you what, Tone's getting killed right now by the Cincinnati Bengals fans yeah, for yep. his apology about his mess up from yesterday. I thought that was big of you, Cowboy. Thank you. But what Cincinnati fans are saying, this guy's just using our name to get a little bit more clout. That ain't a real apology. That was a bunch of malarkey. I don't love they're that. Why are you doing that on this show? They're saying mean things. Very mean stuff. That's new That's new and common for us. That's what it is. Yeah. Bold. People just say very mean stuff about us, and we just got to move along. You know why? Because we get to do a show every single day yeah. with the Toxic Table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. And they say mean stuff every once in a while about people, too. All the time. And I love to say it. 
Jeez, <laughs> I'm being honest. You're a bad guy. We try no. not to say bad stuff about anybody. We try to be positive, but every once in a while it calls for it. Speaking of positive, yeah. I'm positive this man's football IQ is higher than yours. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, nine-year NFL vet, Darius J. Butler. Yes, and joining us live from an attic in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, and a man who beat COVID 45 times. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. How you doing, bub? Good. A uh, heck of a game last night, huh? Buddy, torture. Yeah, not good. Nathaniel Hackett last year, Denver Broncos offense coordinator. Worst games in the history of primetime. Last night, New York Jets offense, Nathaniel Hackett offense coordinator. Worst game in the history of primetime. Starting to become a trend with this Hack guy. Let's talk about him a little bit. He goes to the Denver Broncos. He thinks there's a chance he's going to get Aaron Rodgers over there. He doesn't. Okay, they get Russell Wilson mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. It ends up being a failure. He goes to the Jets. Guess who he gets? Aaron Rodgers. Whoa. Whenever he was with Aaron Rodgers just a couple years back, his offense was awesome. It was beautiful. The West Coast offense has reasons. You know, it's a beautiful system. If you see this, you do this, you kind of got to work it. You're able to move on any defense if you're able to identify it. Now, four plays in, he's back to Zach Wilson. And I got a text from Michael Cole, the voice of the WWE. Mm -hmm. And it says, enough with Zach Wilson. Oh, no. Michael. So, you think Nathaniel Hackett's saying the same damn thing? And do you think he's wondering about how, boy, this was not how these last two years were supposed to go? What are your thoughts on the Jets? And do you think Aaron sees that and still thinks to himself, I need to get back this year, AJ? Yeah, of course. I mean, look, their defense still, we know, can play very, very well. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure. Don't you think the coaches are sitting there watching Aaron take, like, three five-step drops in warm-ups and slanging that thing down the field? Like, okay, maybe uh, – Hopefully we're a little bit closer than we think, and this feels like this is possibly a reality here in the near future, right? So he was throwing last night, and one of the higher angles had the full clip, and somebody mm. said, uh, like, 50-yard throw. This is 58 yards. Oh, yeah. Okay? This is a 58-yard ball. Whoa. That's because that guy jumped to catch that, so that ball hits mm -hmm. probably three, four yards into the end zone. He's throwing the ball 60 yards right now, Okay. Now, I know he's one of the most talented arms in the history of throwing football, but the amount of torque and spin mm -hmm. and on that particular Achilles plant and everything, that's a big deal. I think it is development. He obviously looks very comfortable. His shoes are absurd. I think that's just <laughs> going to be a new normal yeah. for him and how it's going to go. But if you're Aaron, obviously you tell Derwin James afterwards, couple of weeks, give me a couple of weeks or a few weeks or whatever he said. That's the mindset. But when you see that offense – there's no chip help on Bosa, who's just going absolutely bananas. They got Zach Wilson sitting back there naked, five guys protecting completely wide. It's like, you think Aaron watches any of this and thinks to himself, yeah, maybe I do let them figure out an offensive line. Maybe I yeah. do let them figure out what the right <laughs> offense is. So maybe, oh yeah, it was bananas from Bosa. But maybe I do decide that I'm 39 years old. I wonder if that creeps in at all or if he's just all mindset on getting back on the field immediately and showcasing to the Jets fans everything that they hoped. That was absurd. Yeah, That was absurd. I was a grown man wrapping his arm <laughs> around another grown man and then grabbing an adult and tossing him like he was a baby. I mean, that is... Bananas that happened all night last night, and somehow they weren't able to stop it. But do you think there is a chance that that creeps in? We'll talk to him in about an hour. But last night, as, as I was watching that game, I was thinking to myself, like, Aaron's got to be like, nah, maybe not. Nah, maybe not. But he's different than all of us, I would assume. Yeah, I don't know. I never That never crossed my mind. Like, I feel like he watches and he is just itching to get back out there. Like, no matter what is happening on the field, yeah, he wants him to win. He wants him to be put, like, in a good spot and playoff position. But. No, I feel like he's watching. He's like, hey, if I was out there, I would be lighting this thing up. Like, I think his confidence is probably an all-time high. I do like the fact that he's watching these plays. He's like, now to – and then Zach doesn't do it. He's like, yeah. well, these sacks are coming. You know, this is what happens with this West Coast offense. If you're not on time, you're not in rhythm, then you're asking your offensive line to do something that they can't do. That's on us as quarterbacks as opposed. I assume those are his inside thoughts. But I think – how many games are you going to win uh, with that offense? You know what I mean? Well – I, that's the thing, though. What, this is the NFL. It's so weird. Week to week, we don't know. Their offense might look like gangbusters next week. We we don't really know. I don't think any of us are thinking that. <laughs> it's not doing that. Trying to stay positive. <laughs> Trying to stay positive. He's looked. Zach has looked actually very good at times. So I'm just saying, can he put it together for four yeah. quarters? Threw it 50 times, 49 times last night. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's going to be the recipe. Yeah. Definitely not the recipe. I, I, honestly, I don't think Zach played that bad. 
Um, the protection was bad. He mm-hmm. could have definitely had a better feel about, you know, when pressure is around and when to tuck it, maybe throw it away, take a sack. I don't think he played horrible. Um, and the defenses are going to be different when, when if Aaron Rodgers gets back in there this year. They're not going to have as many guys in the box or sending those same type of pressure because you got to respect the passing game more. They were sitting on a lot of those routes. Um, you know, but there were some drops. There were some stupid mm-hmm. penalties. There were a lot of different things outside of turnovers. Zach Turner. Three turnovers. Yeah. Yeah. Tough yeah. to win. Fumbles. Punt return. Were, yeah. were terrible. The punt return early. That was the first touchdown. So, yeah, you got to be better around. I hated that. I hated it so much. Thomas pump. Morstead got announced. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. He got announced yeah. out there. He was AFC Special Teams Player of the Week. He did the interview on the Monday Night Football kickoff. He did fantastic yeah. throughout his whole warm-up. He hits a bomb here trying to be aggressive. Mm. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, like four guys could have made tackles. They didn't. In past games, the Jets special teams would have done that. They've also run a lot of fakes. Their special teams has been an asset and a weapon for them. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of the game last night, it was kind of a detriment there to start early. And you start as you start seeing the, these things start, it's like the Jets ain't going to be able to catch up to this. Because no. normally, special mm-hmm. teams scoring for them. Yeah. Special teams is setting up for them. And instead, it was the complete opposite of that. Garrett Wilson still an absolute weapon. Shout out to Derwin James staying in bounds and re- mm-hmm. recovering that. I thought he was for sure out of bounds before he could handle it. Great athlete. Great athlete. Beast. Great player. But yeah, there was unfortunate things where the football gods were working against them as well, I think is what you're kind of saying. Yeah, and I thought about you after uh, the kickoff mm-hmm. after that punt return. The kick returner fair catches it. In the field of play, it's mm-hmm. I, I it's like ridiculous. that. That's terrible. Yeah, they were they were sloppy. Got to take care of the just ball. Just saw a return for a touchdown. Guy just you took just one. Just saw yeah. one to go to the crib, and now it's like usually as a return. I've been returned before. He just took one. To, I got to take one. You know, Miles would think about TJ on the other side. Like you, are, it's always that extra. If you're a quarterback, you're thinking about the other quarterback and how they're performing. I just can't imagine. Like they, the coaches got to just be telling them, like, hey. We're fair catching this, regardless of where it is. Because you fair catch on, what, the four-yard line? Like, that's... that's. It's going to start becoming a weapon for teams that take it serious. Not that it hasn't in the past, but all these teams that are waving for fair catch on kickoff return, I think that they think they can just mail it in on special teams. Like, all right, we don't have to spend as much time on Mm. kickoff return, period. We don't have to spend as much time on whatever. You're losing reps on your core teamers, and it doesn't get you until it gets Mm -hmm. you. And I think, like, there are teams that are taking it serious. We need to start jotting down teams that refuse to do a fair catch on it. Colts aren't one of them. I was no. embarrassed. I was embarrassed to be in the stadium whenever I saw it. I was disgusted. Oh, yes. What are we? What are we? Are, is that guy not paid to coach special teams over there? What the hell are you doing? You can't put a damn return in this week. Why are we? How about these guys are playing on special teams? Are they getting paid to do this? Big phase of the game. Why are we just opting out to just not get out? They could take it to the crib literally any single time. And I don't want to say that that's why numbers are down, scoring's down. But why not? Anytime you're neutering your team mm-hmm. by saying, nah, we don't want to take an opportunity to maybe go. It's going to send a message. It's going to set a tone. I hate that it's happening, AJ. I hate it. Thank you for bringing well, it up, d But Who's making the decision, though? I, I would assume these special teams coaches probably are being ordered from the head coach or whoever. Hey, like, we're just going to fair catch it in these certain situations, I guess. But you're right. It doesn't get you until it gets you. Are we going to see a bunch of returns, though, late in the season when the games really matter and in the playoffs to where teams may not be as prepared to stop a return? Bingo. That's what I'm saying. Their core special teamers aren't going to be as good as other teams' core special teamers, and there's going to be teams that take advantage of that. There's going to be fakes. There's going to be throwbacks. There's going to be things that kind of take place, and it's like, let's try. Let's try this team that has opted out of doing special Mm -hmm. teams at the professional level, even though people are all getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it. It's an embarrassment. It is an embarrassment for the game. It's an embarrassment for the team. Mm -hmm. It's an embarrassment for the player. You're a professional football player. You're a professional football player, and you're standing at your own tent (laughs) with a ball coming to you. You Well, I'm here to catch it. It's an embarrassment for the coach. It's embarrassment, and they don't even know it. I think that's the biggest problem. Especially for the Jets when you know what's going on with Zach Wilson. It's like, okay, fair catch, great. You start at the 25, but, like, why not get an opportunity where you start at the 40 or something like that? Like, that's Mm -hmm. what's interesting with their offense, too, is last year, like, we're talking about Hackett. Last year they fired Michael Floor, and it was like, hey – it's this guy's fault. That's that's what's really hampering Zach Wilson's development. I think they were averaging 17 points a game with him last year. Like they're averaging 14 with Hackett. So it's like situations like that. Why would you not? I mean, if they do break one loose and they start at the 50, is that not something that maybe jump starts Zach Wilson and the offense a little bit as opposed to like, oh, okay, at the 25, now Bose is just going to be able to pin his ears back again. Zach's going to get stripped and sacked, and we're going to be in the same situation that we've been in all night. It makes no sense. Yeah, and I think Jets fans are. 
Yeah, about six. Oh, yeah. 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 They won. Well, your offense is struggling. It would make sense to take take everything out. But, okay, man, we got to help our offense as much as we possibly can. We got to take a few of these back, and we got to set our offense up with short field. Which I think is what Tom, I'm sorry. Which is I think what Thomas Morris had been saying all week mm-hmm. during the interviews. He's like, "Yeah, we're being told to be aggressive on special teams because yeah. of the situation that it is." But go ahead. No, I'm yeah. saying that's how they won uh, week one against, against Buffalo. It was a walk off with uh, Gibson, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Went to the crib, and I'm thinking back. It was one team, the Bears, and obviously they had Devin Harris, Hester, who was the goat back there, but. We were probably more worried about their special teams unit than their offense at that time. And Zito's obviously been a fan of that. But for years, that offense with Peanut Tillman and Corey Graham and what? obviously Hester returning the ball, like that was a scary unit. And the Jets should – they obviously got the defense. If you have a special teams unit as well where your offense maybe only has to put up 14, 17 points a game, you probably win more games. But. We can't be fair catching <laughs> Just can't happen. Yeah. Just can't. It can't. It, this can't be what the league becomes. We're playing international now. Yeah. Oh. This is where we're showing. Location, World's like, game. We're showing the soccer. This confusing them. You think this is confusing oh, yeah. some of the casual new international fans? So wait a minute. <laughs> so what happens there? It just moves, <laughs> it just moves to twenty five. But what, so why are they even oh, doing the kick? Who right. did anything good here? The last guy no, caught but, it eight yards deep and he took it out. And yeah, that's an option. You can do that if you. Well, why yeah. would you do that? Well, you're not. See, that's the. That's kind see, of. See, you don't uh, know. Yeah. There's a lot to question. Yeah, we don't really understand it. Roger Goodell forced it through, and now every team's trying to use it. Yep. And it's just, just so they can save practice time. That's 100% what it is. Memo. You should send a memo. Here's you. my memo. Uh, boom. Stop it. Stop 32 it. teams. Yeah, send it. Yeah, send it over, Z. Fax it over to cut somebody. Cut it. Cut, cut this. 32 hey. teams. Hey, stop it. <laughs> okay? Can't have Raj. it. And you're going to lose because of it later in the season. Somebody's going to get you. And it's because you're not getting yours ever. So you're going to get God. That's just kind of how you don't use it, you lose it. That's happening to a lot of you. Well said. Okay? And you're going to get God. Boom. Memo. Send, send it, it in. Send it in. Send, send it to this Colts send. facility, too. What an embarrassment. What an absolute embarrassment, this Colts team doing that. Right in front of my face. Yeah. Is right it? in front of my face with a good returner. Uh-huh. This guy's a good returner. Yeah. Has taken him in the back. Stand on his three or something like it was. Well, then let it bounce in the end zone. Right. Okay. If you're going to be an embarrassment Bingo. to football, <laughs> let it bounce in the end zone. I know it's not his decision, but it was it was disgusting. It yeah, was. it's ridiculous. And if the Colts do that against the Patriots this weekend, then they're absolute buffoons because you can get anything against them. But even when like special teams coaches can try and use it in the opposite way, like what did the Raiders do last year on their kickoff, and it was actually helping them a ton because I forget what they were doing with the tee, but a little higher. They they were holding the ball a little higher mm-hmm. on the tee, like instead of putting it inside of it, they yeah on the hel- back end. Yeah, they held it on the end, and it helped them a ton. But then what happened? Like people found out about, it and then they banned that. Boom. So so even if you try and like get some sort of advantage out of it as the kickoff team, I'm they're sick. just going to ban that too. This is disgusting. This is disgusting. I I heard a coach. From Ohio, coaches the Titans was potentially on a competition committee, too. Yeah, he was. Uh-oh. Let that go through. Coach from Pittsburgh was, too. Oh. Yeah, he argued, though. Yeah, he wasn't happy about it. He, re- he reluctantly put his hand well, they, haven't, they haven't fair caught one, so what's that tell you? Boom. Okay. Danny Smith ain't. Yeah. Well, actually. Special teams coordinator for They did have a uh, returner drag both of his toes. And try- <laughs> Oh, yeah. When the ball was going out of bounds. Um, <laughs> what's that guy's name? Oh, they got rid of him. Yeah. He was He's never, on the Giants now. What was his name? I don't like the – I would, G- will not G- be spoken. What was his name? G- uh, you know his name. Gillespie? G- what was his name? Gunner is a cool first name. It was. Super yeah. cool name. Yeah. What was his last name? Gunner o- oh. Olszewski. Oh. He did not have a good run in Pittsburgh. He no, he didn't. It did not work out well for him. Hey, did you hear Tony apologize to the Bengals earlier, the Bengals fans and everything? Yeah, I did. I didn't feel like it was super sincere, but you know what? It's the effort that counts. Well, nobody – that second – Half of your sentence there, nobody in Cincinnati is uh, giving him credit for the effort at all. Oh. Those words got out of his mouth. I apologize to Cincinnati. Yeah. At one point, yeah. those words exited his lips. Clip it. Nobody's really listening to that. They, no. they do, are not taking it as sincere as I thought it came out. I will say this about the Cincinnati Bengals, though, whenever we learned on the internet last night that it wasn't like the team that put the T-shirts out. AJ, that is absurd to think that all those fans were able to coordinate that themselves. And I think that just continues to feed into the fact that the jungle over there in Cincinnati is one of the best places to play football in the entire NFL. I love what they're cooking, AJ. I love what they're cooking. Yeah. I was, I, so when I first heard like the, the whole stripe thing at first, I'm like, man, that doesn't seem like something the Bengals would do with 
spend a bunch of money to put t-shirts in every single every <laughs> single chair. I'm like, that's a ton of money, man. Like, that's not really their MO. So then when you hear that the fans get together and they f- somehow communicate with everybody and they do it, like, that's unbelievable. How many, 70,000 people kind of? I mean, you'd say at least 50,000 took part. All right, so let's say those Gildan shirts, okay, if you're going to get 65,000 of them are like eight bucks, seven yeah. bucks. Mm-hmm. Right around there. 65,000. Times seven, just four hundred and fifty-five grand. You don't think Mike Brown's putting Not that out? Chance. You don't think he's putting uh-uh. that out for a good? Yeah, I don't think so. No. No, you don't think so? Daddy needs a new boat. I mean, he would. I bet he would now. But no, I don't think he would. He would choose to do that. Well, congratulations to their fan base. That's incredible. Yeah, that work. is very impressive. That's- Other fan bases should try to do the same thing without having the owner have to pay for it. Hey, let's get together and let's all do something together collectively as a whole. Now, and I will say most other places will say, hey, billionaire, we're coming to your building. We paid a lot of money to get in here and we're paying 10 bucks for a beer and 14 bucks for a corn dog. And we are making your team a lot better than maybe they have in the past looked with our fan base. So why don't you pay seven bucks and give me a T-shirt? Please. Okay. Take Seven bucks out of the hundred and fifty dollars that I paid for this ticket, mm-hmm. and give me a T-shirt. A lot of other places will say that. The fact that the Bengals are just like, they ain't never gonna do that. No. <laughs> okay, so if we want something cool, we got to do it. I appreciate that. Yeah, I respect the that. Owners should though, and other owners should do this. The, sure. the Bengals owners should for sure because I've learned that the Bengals fans are so, so thin-skinned that I'm worried about them getting hypothermia mm. for the next game. So they should buy them extra oh. layers of clothes. Oh. Jackets are like 60, yeah, 70 bucks. Can. I mean, could you fathom it? I guess they don't sleeve. respect a good rivalry 65,000 okay. times <laughs> 65 bucks for a jacket. That's only $4.25 million. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, joining us now is a man who is also an Ohio fella. He's a guy who has been the consummate professional whenever it comes to ranking college football teams this season. He actually so accurate that the college football playoff committee just copied him last week in their first real one. Yep. Before they get a chance to debut the second college football playoff ranking, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Generals Top 5 with Bobby Carpenter. How you doing, Bobo? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm just pretty pumped that you're talking about Cincinnati pulling out was a little jeezy there. They put on for their city, man. You you got to realize who your owner is and what you're doing. You can't have a Monday night or yeah. Sunday night party and not have any of the, the little extras around. So kudos to them for getting that done. Yeah, I might forgive. I won't forget. Yeah. Great album out of Jeezy. He did, and they did put on for their city. Let's um let's chit chat about you putting on a little bit. Great shirt, great shirt. Well, wow. You know, it's just for my guy over there. You know, the captain, the captain of the OSU squad. My captain, if you will. Oh, that's Mr. Your, Aaron Bob. Oh, that's a general that's a general and that's captain. That's right. Wow. Like Captain Connor Stallion? Is that what you're talking about, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, maybe maybe a captain of a different sort, but yeah, I mean AJ, I mean he listen, he's a sneaky little dude. He could kind of get his way, get himself into anywhere. Oh, sneaky okay. little dude. Okay. I like to hear that. We'll expound upon that <laughs> in the next hour for sure. I think that's from your people at Homage. Homage. It, that is absolutely correct, sir. Incredible merch company. We don't do business with them, but we do appreciate the hell out of them. Speaking of merch, I believe we'll be debuting a new store tomorrow. Let's go. Wow. Really? Just kind of out of nowhere. Wow. Probably should have made a video for that. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it just kind of came pretty together. Sweet. Yeah, pretty nice. sweet. I think it's happening. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, General, I'm excited to hear your take on the top six before the college football playoff committee gets a chance to do theirs this evening at 7 p.m. on ESPN. Any moving, any shaking? I guess let's dive right in. There is a little bit of movement here, and we'll start with the first two teams out. And, I mean, it, it records matter. On the field matters. But I'm telling you, I've watched this team the last couple of weeks. So I've got the Oregon Ducks sitting there at my 6B, uh-huh. and I had to knock Florida State out. They're sitting there at my 6A, if you will. Oh. Florida State didn't play all that well against Pitt. I know I'm with a bunch of, bunch of Yenzers, but listen – the pig Panthers haven't been exactly nope. ideal this not year. Not of us care. No. <laughs> yeah, not of us care. No not one great. The city does yeah, either. Yeah. Well, it's apparently a lot of yellow seats at those. Yeah, games. yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Everybody's dressed like yellow. You know, Cincinnati Bengals did the <laughs> the black <laughs> and the orange. Too, yeah. Pit all the everybody. Everybody dressed like a seat. Come out to the game. <laughs> It'll be fun. That's what happens. Anyways, go ahead. They beat us though. I guess in junior year. So way to go. <laughs> way to go, Pitt. Sorry for sorry for dredging that up, Pat. I mean, some of those. No, they do. They break hearts. Play. That's why they potentially could have done that to Florida State. Yeah. That is something they could have pulled off. Well, they kept that thing close. It was 10-7 at halftime, and Florida State didn't really play all that well. And listen, Oregon, all they've done is just run rough shot after losing in that tight game to Washington. They smacked Cal. 
And so I'm sitting there like, if I could jump them over top of Florida State, I probably would. Oh. So I've got those two guys sitting as my first two out. So that means number four sliding in after a big victory against USC, a game which there was really minimal defense played. I've got the Washington Huskies sitting there. Mm -hmm. the yeah, they're sliding in. I mean, Michael Penix Jr. didn't have the best statistical game, gentlemen, but I go back, there's a third down where he's rolling to the side and throws a dart down the sideline into the end zone for a touchdown. I mean, the guy's as skilled as they come, and if you're going to try to get in a scoring match with them, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to beat them. Yeah, Roma Dunze, also a dog. Jalen Polk is a freak show. I mean, we got a chance to watch that game live, obviously, with the college football red zone thing we did on Saturday, which was so sweet. Just yeah. need to lose about uh, 16 of the 18 commercials. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. 16 <laughs> of the 18 of them. If we are able to do that, I think it would be a much better evening. But had a blast doing it. And the reason why is because that Washington-USC game was so damn electrifying. This means that you're giving a lot of credit to USC, though, as well, right? You think that this was a big win because they beat USC? Because USC can score. I mean, you guys watched out there. You know, Caleb Williams, he had a fumble. He had some mistakes, but... Listen, this guy's tremendous. They've got an elite offense. They just can't stop anybody, and that's eventually what got them. And so, listen, they uh, USC, oh, goodness, I think they're taking on uh, Oregon this week, so that should be oh, yeah. a nice matchup. We'll see what goes on there. And then Washington takes on Utah, so oh. it'll be interesting. you got one team that scores a lot, one team that plays a lot of defense and can score, and then Washington obviously take it on Utah. Defensive stalwarts try to slow the game down. And this is going to be a little bit of a Styles makes fight matchup this week. So super excited uh, for that one as well. Uh, sitting there at number three, slid them down a little bit. Whoa. They looked okay. It's more really about the team at number two. But I've got the Michigan Wolverines sitting at three this week. Oh, they were number two last week. There's a little bit of movement down from two to three. On their, are they on their way out because of Connor Stallions? Uh-oh. <laughs> Well, it, it's not that. I mean, they beat up Purdue pretty good. It's it's a function of just watching the game. Like, they're not running the ball as effectively as they did last year. Now, that can all change. You sit there and look at it. You know, I believe they had, you know, 110 rushing yards, which this is a team that used to roll up 200 easy all the time. You have Blake Corum. You have Donovan Edwards. Those guys ripping off long runs, doing it out of the backfield. Not quite as productive as this year. And then they also gave up. 125 yards on the ground to Purdue. And that's not besmirching Purdue, but you know, there haven't been the best rushing team. Smirching. And we'll get it, we'll get a nice taste this week, gentlemen, because heading over to Pennsylvania, uh, you will see the Michigan Wolverines taking on the Nittany Lions uh this this week, big noon kick for Fox. So that's gonna be a heck of a ball game right there. And we'll see how that thing shakes out. Huge game, especially with all the allegations and everything that's kind of cooking. General Bob Carpenter, uh, obviously you're on top of all the college football news. Were you a part of the crew at Ohio State alongside Ryan Day? Yeah. Who had to answer these questions and others that said, you know what? I seen this little sawed off prick mm -hmm. sitting in the stands yeah. recording everything with these glasses as if he was old school re internet porn guy yep. from the POV <laughs> trying to steal this stuff. How do you, where do you stand right now as an Ohio State guy? Clearly, not only you live in Columbus, you have a talk show in Columbus. Bye. And the team you've had at number one since before the year was probably not <laughs> supposed to be there before the year, but you've been there. But how do you feel about all of the revelations that have taken place? Now it's being said by Pat Forty that all the other Big Ten schools were colluding to get Michigan signals. Uh, so how do you feel about it, and what do you think inevitably happens? And will you judge them on the field because of all this type of stuff that we're learning? I'm going to judge them the same way I have all year, you know, once the stuff leaked out. So, you know, if they beat Penn State, you know what, good job to them. You know, obviously, I think they have Maryland and then Ohio State. So they've got a tough three-game stretch. We'll see how that shakes out. You know, as far as kind of where everything is, you know, it, it's really pretty amazing. Like, there's things that are against the rules. I didn't make them, you know, but they're out there. And you're not allowed to do advanced scouting. You're not allowed to record signals. They have people doing both. Like, there's – from what I've been told, it's pretty lockstep that there's documented – video evidence of all of these things occurring. And I had a friend of mine who's a Michigan fan. You know, you play with the Lions and in the Midwest, you get some Michigan fans that are friends. And one of the guys wouldn't come off the fact that he said, well, I don't know if it's really Connor Stallions in the seats. He was maybe paying a third party. So is that still illegal? I'm like, dude, I mean, what, what are we talking about here? Like, 
just because like are we in the champagne room there's no touching there's touching oh. like we really gotta oh. split hairs on, on what we're really looking at hairs here like i mean it just there was just a lot of stuff yeah. a lot of stuff and then they tried to like kind of dump it out there well ryan day hired a pi or his brother <laughs> like which yeah. i guess is found out not to be true and i'm like listen man yeah. If your wife has video of you walking out of a hotel room with a hooker, you don't sit there and complain where the video came from. Oh. It's more about the fact if you're trying to defend yourself about walking out of there. Hey, sounds like a situation you should never try to find yourself in. <laughs> I couldn't even fathom. I couldn't even fathom trying to have that conversation. But what you're saying is, from what you're hearing, and I guess we're kind of hearing this as well, because the Big Ten has come out and said that they're looking into it, and they've given allegedly a list of things that Michigan has done wrong and the evidence that they have, and Michigan has until tomorrow, end of day, to respond, and then maybe the Big Ten will punish Michigan even before this weekend alleged, is being alleged. A lot of alleged. Feels like it's yeah. all getting so muddied right now. Like the stories. It, it, yeah. Like, oh, there was it a PI, there's Elon Musk, mm -hmm. there's CIA, there was this. <laughs> like, it, it's like it's starting to get to a point where it's almost absurd. Like last night when this Michigan news dropped about the other Big Ten teams colluding about signs, there's people saying, like, well, and then Pete had this news a week. It's like, you think Pete Thamel would hold that news Come on. while yeah. he's in the middle of a Pulitzer run right now? No way. No it's like, but every single day there's more shit getting thrown out there. I wonder what's real. I wonder what's not. And I wonder if we'll ever know. You know, I wonder if we'll ever well, the coaches. I mean, you heard Ryan Walters of Purdue come out and say last week, he's like, these aren't thoughts. I mean, these these are actions. This is reality. This is what happened. So no, no, they dumped all the allegations on Michigan. So instead of saying, well, other people are doing something that's legal, we're all coaches. If you're friends, you talk. And I think the rest of the coaches in the Big Ten have known this was going on. So are they maybe helping each other? Probably, but I don't think there was any recording of stuff or sending it around at least not to my knowledge. So I'm curious where Tony Petiti goes with this. It's his first year as Big Ten commissioner. So, man, kudos to you to try to figure out a ruling. Stephen A. Smith said this morning down at Winston-Salem State University, formerly Slater Industrial Academy. Mm -hmm. That's in 1892. Mm -hmm. No big deal. He said, bam! Ban him from the college football playoff. I was like, damn. I had not heard somebody just say that as open. But then he started listing off the reasons. It's like... If yeah. they've cheated to get to this point, why are they taking another school's position? It's like, well, I think they're executing very well. They're playing very good. Did the kids know that Connor Stallion was wearing a hat on Central Michigan? And then Stephen A. and Shannon Sharp said, did the kids on the other team that didn't cheat, do they not deserve a spot in college football playoff over Michigan? I'm like, oh, I guess we could grandstand all day yeah. on who, who deserves what. I'll be excited to see what the Big Ten does. That would have to be an NCAA ruling, though, right, to ban college football playoff. And the NCAA does nothing fast. Well, they could ban him from the Big Ten championship game, which then you'd have a hard time getting in if you're not the mm. Big Ten champ, which I'm going to be honest, guys, I'm going to say it right. I hope that that does not happen. We agree. Because I, I, I would like to see Ohio State. I think everybody would like to see Ohio State or Penn State beat them over the next couple of weeks and change that. But I'm not a fan of banning them from the Big Ten championship game. Figure out other penalties. If it's hardball related, I don't know. But just I'm not a fan of that right now. So I just want to make that abundantly clear because that's, we're already in the middle of this, dude. You can't just stop the season right now. Yeah, and some of the seniors, you know, yeah. like this is their last. Come on. You know? Mm -hmm. But also, hey, other schools too. What about the kids at uh, Michigan State that had to learn I that know. there was somebody on the other sideline in Central Michigan that was documenting their every move? So all their work was for naught. Yep. So they were going to lose anyways. What about those kids? I love the whataboutism about it all. But I will say, what about how good they are as a football team? Yeah. You know, and you dropped them a little bit because Blake Corum's not running as many yards. He's still scoring oh, touchdowns. And J.J.'s yeah. still throwing it all over the place. Big one in Penn State, though. Let's move to number two. Congrats to us, by the way, breaking that all down yeah, oh in yeah. a super professional, yeah. non-biased manner. How about do that? It? Two Ohio State people on the screen. Mm -hmm. Felt like we're Absolutely. pretty non-biased there. Good mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, this is great. journalism. That's great. This is journalism. Uh, J. Okay. We were non-biased. No, tiny. That's a tiny J, man. That's, that's a subscript J as small as you can get, guys. I mean, that's... I'm not going to claim myself a journalist by any stretch. Well, nobody's uh, claiming us as journalists, but we are on JSPN. So that is what we're on Journalism Sports Network. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what we are. Anyways, go ahead, Bob. All right. Number two, after a nice, impressive win over Mizzou, who I think is a little better than what people were giving him credit for. You got the Georgia Bulldogs. Mm. Carson Beck looks pretty good. He's been playing a clean game. You know, the, the one thing with Georgia this year, like, you remember the past two years, Pat, they had a smothering and suffocating defense. And I'm watching Mizzou, who I know doesn't recruit 
at quite the same level. I know they've been winning games, and Schrader's a good runner, and they, they've got some talent. But, man, they rolled up 151 yards on them on the ground, which you would have never seen that a couple of years ago from a Georgia team. So you're thinking maybe there's a weakness down there. Well, an old Miss this week in Lane Kiffin, they talk about Lane. He, he is kind of a sneaky visor guy. Like, he's offensive coordinator visor guy, which they need visors, Pat, because their brains are so big, you have to let them breathe in there. Uh -huh. So most of the time, those guys like to throw the ball. But Lane, however, I mean, he wants to get that thing on the ground and pound it. So we'll see what that happens. Old Miss, I think a 10-point dog, but I think that game could be a little closer. Quinjon Judkins, I believe, is the name of the running back down there at Ole Miss. And they have uh, transfer dart. No, Jackson Dart, Jackson Dart yep. is Jackson quarterback, Dart. I believe, down there. And Lane Kiffin, 6 a.m. hot yoga now. That's right. It's Ooh. a whole different Lane Kiffin. This might be the best Lane Kiffin that's ever been activated. Excited to get down to Athens for College Game Day and our show, which will be live on Friday. And who's at number one, General Bob Carpenter? Well, we've got the Ohio State Buckeyes. Hey, to go, Ohio Davion State. Henderson. Hey, when he's come back, Travion's had 200 plus total yards in the last two games. You see how fast and explosive he looks. He's a cheat code back there for Kyle McCord. Talk about poor quarterback play in the NFL. When you can dump a check down to a guy who takes it 65 yards, that's not the worst thing in the world. And Marvin still had two touchdowns. And hell, they had a defensive score. So they've been getting it done in a multitude of ways. So excited and really can't wait for these next three weeks with the college football playoffs. Um, I got two got two gimmicks for you this week. Yes. And this one. I was burying Clemson last week. I thought they were done, Pat. You know, the rain is over. They're going to be four and five. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame was going to do to them what they did last year. I had to give it to my guy, man. He's getting the uh, the Stratton, Oakmont, Jordan, uh, Beefert, freaking award. Okay, I'm not Belfort, leaving. Belfort. Buy stock right <laughs> now in the Clemson Tigers. Okay. Yelling, this is as low as we're going to be, man. So good for him. Well, I appreciate the fact that Dabo, too, Heard all, you know, it wasn't oh, just yeah. Tyler. No, That's no, right. no. It wasn't just Tyler. <laughs> it was everybody. He heard. And they get a massive, massive win and bounce back. You think Cade Klubnick is going to be able to continue the run here? You think Jordan Belfort's going to go from penny stocks and then move right into the next thing that he's selling Steve Madden shoes? Mm -hmm. You think he's going to be able to do that, Bob Carpenter? Well, we'll see if he can get all the way there. But if they can run the ball like they did, they've got a shot. Because that's the problem. And they haven't been able to run the ball. And they did it without Will Shipley in that game. So kudos to them. I mean, Dabo, he rallied them up. And they played really, really good. Yeah. And then uh, he ran down uh, that hill. Yeah, he did. He, he did. ran oh, yeah. down that hill, didn't he? In the khakis. Dabo's been doing the conditioning test, I think, with his team for the last 40 years. My man likes to leg it out. And he runs hard. Like you, you're right? saying. Like you, you're saying. Well. I can only hope to be in as good a shape as Dabo. And then I got one more for you. I think you're amazing. They've been playing Bedlam since before both schools were even in a state. It was the Oklahoma Territory. They've been playing this thing for a well over 100 years. And Oklahoma has dominated. But sometimes all you need in life is a walk-off. Mm -hmm. you, call, uh, you call bank? Well, my man, the mullet master... He called game. And Mike Gundy and the Oklahoma State <laughs> Cowboys getting it done. They may have had a little bit of help from the official holding his flag Wizards? there at the end on a P.I. Wizard, yeah. They got it. What? Uh, is that Chris Bussard? I think it is. <laughs> we don't need to go there. We don't need to put Chris Bussard <laughs> in your pocket right now. So what? what uh, How did Paul Pierce get in a Wizards jersey? Yeah. That, what what, uh, just, is what it, happened here? What did what happened? Oh, okay. So uh, Paul Pierce, he hit a buzzer beater when he was playing for the Wizards, and it was Bank. And they asked him, "Did you call Bank?" And at he the said, "No, I called Game." Bingo. Okay, Boom. that's why the quote. That, you, yeah, got yeah, okay. 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 All right, all right. All right. All right. All right. He pulled it all together. Listen, okay. I was well. It was good research there, and I was curious if he was going to have the Wizards jersey on because no one remembers. Paul Pierce with the Wizards. Nope. nope. Kind of like Michael Jordan. You, you slide it in at the end. I was excited to see. Well, there's a lot of things like that. But the, oh. the uh, I, I thought that was a potential completely blown graphic. Yeah, me too. And I was excited to see how we were getting there. Mm -hmm. Did you see that video of him holding that trophy up over oh, yeah. his head afterwards when he was talking to the team? Mm -hmm. And that thing's going to live there forever. Yep. A little yeah. pettiness between those two because they could certainly continue to schedule that. <laughs> yeah. You know, other other teams have been able to do that that have left conferences, but instead Oklahoma State says, Good riddance, it's our trophy forever. I appreciate the hell out of you, General. Have a great day, pal.
Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the general, Bob Carpenter. Yeah, hey, general. It's awesome what's going on in Michigan. Yeah. It really is. It really is. There's a little update tidbit. I don't know if you saw. What's that? From uh, old Greg Doyle in the group tech. Hold on. Let me tell you. On three sports, who I believe is a pretty reputable college mm-hmm. thing, Pat McAfee believes Michigan taking a college football playoff spot would be absolute bullshit if found guilty. I think them taking a spot out of the four college football teams would be absolute bullshit. I think we're not the only people who feel that way. I think a lot of college football pe- people feel that way. Until we see it, I think it's hard for me to say these 18 to 23 year olds who are playing great football deserve to just have their entire season wiped away because of Connor Stallions and Harbaugh potentially. I mean, I feel like that's pretty fair. Steve. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting murdered by that. That was my take on first take pretty much where uh, Stephen A said, ban him, yeah, ban him. You know, he went that old thing and he said, don't you agree? And it was like, yeah, I guess if it comes out that the videos were so absurd and they were using like AI to figure out what was going on. And if the players and everybody knew exactly what was happening, yes. then mm-hmm. they were all in on the conspiracy to kind of dominate these people and they're clearly cheating and they know that they're cheating. But until we see something, it's going to be hard for me to say 18 to 23 year olds, maybe even 25 year olds, depending upon how old sure. some of their COVID years are, just taking their year from them is bananas. But I don't think a lot of people that read that tweet got past that first statement, especially because on three sports led that I think it would be absolute bullshit if like, like that's not really there wasn't hey on three sports go to hell <laughs> how about that yeah you just put me in a war you just put me in a war mm-hmm. and I guess those are my words but I've been pretty pro Michigan through this entire yeah, thing have. I think if you were to listen to my takes from literally weeks ago when this all started Yeah, when we were at Ohio State when it first came out there was a lot of ah who cares uh yeah, and then on game day when it came out ah who cares yeah what Listen, i thought everybody does this and then we were taught about the rules mm-hmm. about how you can't do that some 1990 advantage. some and then we're like oh maybe there is something what's the deal with him selling vacuums what's that about who's that i don't know connor i'm connor probably knows connor boston connor actually i'm don't. guessing uh, this is actually something I do not know. See, this is what oh, I'm talking know. about. It Bruce. was put in the group chat. It's Bruce. put in the group chat. All I saw was selling refurbished vacuums. That's the only thing I saw. Yeah, but Bruce, a Michigan he man. Is yeah. Michigan he, man. He, he's he been wa- doing a oh. lot. He's been doing a lot. The Wall Street well, Journal actually, did like a deep dive on Connor Stallions and his ambition since 16 of, of becoming Michigan's head coach. Age 16, not and, 2016. Yeah, yeah, age 16. Um, and he, he bought that? a house uh, near Ann Arbor, in Ann Arbor, and was refurbishing vacuums and reselling them on on Amazon as a kind of side hustle. Yeah, they said he was only making 50 grand, so who's paying for all these tickets? Mm. Who's doing all this stuff? Who knows? Somebody else had to know. You know, somebody else had to know. Unless he's going on SeatGeek. Could be going on SeatGeek. <laughs> <That'd> be <a laughs> smart move. I almost dropped that on smart. first take. Oh. Stephen A. was talking about taxes, state taxes, and income taxes. Yeah. and He's getting paid 50 grand. How's he buying all these tickets? Who's buying all these tickets? And I was, I was like, well, you got SeatGeek. You can get the best deal for all those. $30 off. <laughs> and all and those moon. tickets. Good old green dot next to it. Will we ever know? Will we ever know everything? Like, that's my biggest thing, because no. I think no we No chance. Just- the players don't know either. Sorry to cut you off, but there's no way all the players can know how in-depth it was, because think how many players on our team and how many disgruntled players yeah. you have on a team at one time that will snitch and tell people what's going on outside of the program. Well, and it's like, did Harbaugh even know? And I know people are like, he had to have known. And I think that's what Stephen A. said to me this morning, like, you don't think – the head coach knew that he was getting tickets to games and sitting on side. Like, that's pretty a lot. And I guess, yeah, that's a pretty valid point. But also, there's a chance that this guy was hired and said, hey, from the Navy, also Marines, captain, loved Michigan. I have an ability to be able to figure out what other teams are doing. That is a weapon. People hire ex-special uh, forces people in the NFL. I don't know about college, but that is something that does get added to NFL teams. And if he was just like, I can, I can decipher codes. Like, that is what my thing is. And then he just gets so good at it. And then he gets addicted to it. Then he gets overzealous. Then he's like, oh, I'm making a lot of people happy. Mm -hmm. And he keeps going. That's definitely what the Michigan people are going to sell. But I can also see how Harbaugh would be like, I don't want to know. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I don't want to know how this guy is I don't want to know how you know. Don't tell me how you – this guy's great on game day. Just watch it. The only only thing I know is that he's watching and he's just picking up in real time. And whoever is Connor's boss – Whoever it is. If it's Jim Harbaugh, then I guess this changes the conversation. But whoever he his boss is reports to, he's telling Jim, he's like, this guy's got everybody signs. Harbaugh's like, great. Love yeah. having you here. Yeah. We're paying you, what, $50,000? Right. This is amazing. Uh, hey, coach, I'm thinking about going to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't want to hear you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> nope. Airbus, 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 Airbus. I don't know. Get the hell out of here. I don't want to. I guess that is all possible. But Harbaugh reaped the benefits of all this, you know? So he's certainly going to get. 
punished for it all if everything we're hearing is true. Well, it's on his watch, right? Like, I feel like it's a much different situation, but the situation in Northwestern where everything yep. was happening, like, no matter what, they were like, hey, the coach knew, like, wh whether or not he turned an eye to it or whatever. But with Harbaugh and specifically Stallings, you wonder if maybe he did sell. What's his name? Connor Stallings. There it is. You wonder if he did sell the bag of goods, like you're saying, like, I can decipher these signs. And then he tried to do it, probably couldn't, and then said, oh. okay, it looks like I got to, you know. Boots on the ground. Take this up a notch, okay? We didn't win the war by not having boots on the ground. So that's probably when he went over and started That is an interesting it. thing because he said he was going to do it through the TV copies. Exactly. And then he, as he was watching TV copies, he said, they don't show us anything. Can't see, <laughs> can't see anything of <laughs> They won't give us a good shot on anything. <laughs> I, will you get the sideline? This is a big part of the game. Can we start zooming in on the Teletubbies five wide that are making yep. the calls and doing this entire thing? Well, I think to your Central point, Michigan thing's bizarre. Too. Bizarre, Sorry. buddy. That's, bizarre. that's crazy. But like you were saying about, you know, the other schools like Michigan State and some of these other teams, they've it's like, well, they still lost six games. So it's like, you know, I don't think we should be saying like, oh, these kids, you know, like they didn't have a fair opportunity or whatever. But maybe there is. I don't know if there is prior precedent to them making a decision mid-season about a team not being able to go to like the college football playoff that same season like anytime you look at these massive scandals like it's always after the fact they never penalize that specific team like wh whether it was SMU with like the death penalty or all the stuff with Miami like they weren't coming down on them mid-season and saying hey you guys can't go to a bowl this year it was always hey we're gonna take our time and then after the season's over then we'll kind of move on there. Yeah, let's give Reggie his Heisman back. Sure. Amen. You know what I mean? Let's oh, give they've, Reggie. Let's... They've said they are not going to do that. They've said it with their actions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they have. That's gotten real loud from a lot of people. Like, yeah, let's give the guy his Heisman back. And why? Why not? What did you just say? Shut he up. still won it. He still won it though. Like that with him. Okay, I, I'm still the Heisman winner. Yeah, he's not in the commercials. He doesn't have the physical oh, trophy now, okay. which Nissan. he should have. Oh, oh the Heisman, Heisman house. house. Yeah, he could be in the Heisman house with Timmy Tebow and the rest of them, just having fun. Could be. Right. There's a lot of guys in there. Yeah. Caleb's in there. Yeah. Yeah. OJ Sanders. Sanders. RG3's in Bryce there. Bryce Young's in there. OJ Simpson. I didn't I see OJ. Did the Juice make an appearance? I, I think he's in the bushes, right? Yeah, yeah. he's yep. in one of them. Oh. They caught well, us. Yeah. Us. Come, <laughs> out. Come on out. I haven't seen him. We'll we got a nice here. quote from Chase Young, uh, one of the newest members of the San Francisco 49ers. He was traded from the Commanders on trade day. This is a big move because he was projected to be – a beast. Only got to play a little bit due to injuries, but anytime we saw him on the field, we thought to ourselves, wow, that guy could be the next guy. The San Francisco 49ers defense is obviously loaded. They trade for Chase. Here's Chase's thoughts on being in the building. Just the players, um, the spirit in the locker room, the spirit of the coaches. Can we get a, um, a wind sock? You know, a pop filter? It's just different. You know, yes. you know what I'm saying? It's like a kind of that, that same thing at Ohio State. Where it's like you're expected to win, and it's just like that vibe of we're going to win. You know what I'm saying? So it definitely reminds me not Ohio State, but obviously it's NFL. Um, these are grown men, so um, I'm just excited to uh, you know be blessed to, um, with the opportunity to be um, this franchise. Yeah, it's you know a lot of people are saying, "Listen, what he said about the Commanders." I don't think he said anything about the Commanders, and just because you compliment one place doesn't mean you're putting down another. But I do appreciate the fact that he can acknowledge, like, "Hey, this group here not happy about what's going on right now. This group here expects to win." And also, the front office has gone all in. Has to feel good to be on the side of the buyers as opposed to the sellers. And maybe Chase Young is able to rewrite an entire legacy in the NFL for himself. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been a monster at times throughout his NFL career. We know he's been hampered by injuries, no question. But, yeah, that's the thing. Like, there's the standard. He showed up, and you could kind of feel what the standard is when you go to great programs or, like, a great franchise like this that's been, been winning for the last, you know, for the recent history. You know, like, everybody, I think, knows if you're lucky enough to have been on a team that you, every time you go out, you expect to win. Like, that's just what it is. Like, that's the standard. We were talking yesterday about the Miami Dolphins and old Goopy – Oh, he's happy and where the Dolphins are out now. He's like, well, we, were, we weren't that good. We haven't been that good in the past. And we said, no, the standard, there's a new standard in Miami. They expect to win, and they expect to win every single game. And I think that's where the Niners are. And, yeah, you're never happy if you're not winning. But you want to consistently find a way to be dominant. And I think the Niners, are, they're trying to be there. Chase Young going to help that defense? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's <laughs> number two overall pick uh, for a reason. Like you said, in injuries has really been the only thing. I'm holding him back, and it's not like offenses are going to be able to come in and key on, hey, we got to stop Chase Young. He's going to be the game record for this defense. It's probably, you know, 
two, three, four maybe other guys that you're going to be more worried about coming into the game. So he can definitely be that other guy that can just wreck shot. Yeah, and that's a little freeing too. Oh, yeah. yeah. To know you're coming to an already established – as opposed to being one of the pillars of establishing a defense. Mm -hmm. Now you're coming to a defense that's already established and getting dropped in to be an additive. That is a freeing feeling, I would assume, for Chase. They wanted to. They wanted him too. It's got to feel good to – hey, these guys, they came and they made a move to bring me – onto this team, so I want to try to exceed any expectations they have for me. Yeah, hey, you're 100% right. He's still playing for that second contract, because remember, mm -hmm. you ended being the second overall pick, injury slow you down, you're not, you know, you didn't pick up the fifth year option as a, as a top, you know, first round pick, so now you're on this great defense where, hey, I don't have to play 100% of snaps, defense, I mean, offenses aren't keying on me, trust me, that, that what, what is Bosa getting paid now, Th down to $30 million a year, 30 Over. plus, so yeah. He's, he's definitely going to be motivated for a lot of different reasons. And I think he's going to wake up as the season goes. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, and, and I mean, if he plays well, I'm sure Lynch and the boys are going to figure out a way to keep him around. But because he got traded during the Niners' bye week, I saw, I think it was like a backup tight end or a player on the team. They forgot that they traded for Chase Young. So he came, <laughs> came into the building, saw Chase Young, was like, what the hell is he doing here? And then remembered that, that they got him. As a kid out of Ohio State. Wow. Chase Young doing? What the hell's he doing? Hey, how you doing? My name's Jack. Chase Young. I'm on the team now. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, forgot about sweet. that. I like that they're adding, though. You know, had hit a little bit of a when, – when's Trent Williams coming back? When's Debo coming back? Hopefully. I think those are our Debo's big questions. Back. Debo's back. back. Yeah. Great news. Mm -hmm. Trent Williams, is he back? Not sure about him, but I heard Debo say he's coming back. Okay, so if Debo's back and Trent's back, we assume that offense is going to be back. Coming out of the bye week, they got it all figured out. Add in Chase Young, good for them. Speaking about having it all figured out, we had Max Crosby on yesterday. He was awesome. You should download his pack, uh, podcast called The Rush. Devontae Adams last night had a nice interaction with a ref. Listen to him chit-chat about the future of the Raiders. All signs seem to be going up for Raider Nation. You win yesterday? Section 312, right at 50, man. It's going to be better now. I can tell already. Good vibes. I love it, man. Appreciate it. Hey, the ref can tell already. Good vibes. I was 312 right on a 50. I'm having a good time. Now, obviously, I'm officiating. You see me a little different, but I'm all raidered out whenever we're at the game. I'm appreciative of your services. And Devontae says it's going to be different now. I like the vibes that are coming out of Las Vegas. They're still in the same division as Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, and obviously they're under 500. But there's a lot of football left. Good for them figuring it out seemingly in the middle of a season. Yeah, they, they definitely seem to, I mean, be, they're enjoying themselves more right now. And I, I saw the Antonio Pierce presser where he talks about having the practice squad players on the sidelines. Like, he's just doing all those little things that feel like the right thing to do to, to kind of make sure everybody knows, like, hey, we, we're, we're all in and we're all here for you. So, show. <laughs> sure, sure. Practice squad guys were on the sideline with the Colts. Were they on the sideline yep. with the Packers? Yes. That'd be weird if they weren't like oh, so. No. Am I watching the? Am I are they up in a? Were they up in a box before? If they, if not, like before he brought them down, or were they not even at the stadium? I, am I watching on TV? No, when Josh McDaniels, they were probably outside shoveling snow or sand or whatever's going on in the desert. Yeah, you think they were getting a little extra yeah. workout in? Yep. Mm -hmm. Hey, during the game, you're gonna have a three-hour workout. Yeah, just so you know what it's like to play. So you'll be at the facility, watch the game after the game ends. You guys are gonna go through it. It was weird that that was like made a big thing. Like Antonio Pierce is welcoming the practice squad guys back <laughs> onto the sideline. It's like well, I don't know. I never heard anybody never. not having them out there. Yeah, never. It only makes sense to have them on the sideline because at any moment you can be called up and you want to know like you know what that feels like obviously you're not you know over there with pass on you probably got sunflower seeds on but if you are locked in as a pro you know you should be still listening getting mental reps and being ready for that moment you know you're a but there's nine local. of them ten of them how many is there oh yeah man. i think they, they got bigger 13 right yeah. 13 more people you see all the people on the sideline already yeah. you can't have your practice squad guys yeah. I, that makes no sense to me that what is josh mcdaniel's deal yeah i don't, I don't know see. that's why no soul train line yeah, yeah. none of that no, no what's fun. new england do though is he just doing what new england has done are there practice squad guys there i can't remember i may it may have been in the booth May have been in the booth. I think got. Like I think in Green Bay at times they've been up in the suite. I, I yeah. guess if you're in a hurt, suite, you go yeah. in the suite. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. The suite's pretty nice. Like if, yeah, if yeah, that'd be cool. But too. the way they made it sounds like not in the building. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like he made Guys. like grounded him yeah. picking up beer cans in the parking lot. Yeah. Instead. It's like what the hell are we talking about? Yeah, I, I mean, there's been times where some dudes wearing full sideline apparel for the team. Definitely got that from the team. I never met him. 
He got signed to the practice squad on like Saturday. <laughs> this guy's standing in front of my net, like, welcome to yeah. the team. Get the hell out of the way. Move. I'm happy you're here. Like, it just, hearing that was interesting. But you're right. To add to the conversation here, like, the Raiders seemingly much different now than they were two weeks ago. And it all seems like common sense moves. Like, everything just feels, why do you think this is how Josh McDaniels chose to go about doing what he did? And I guess when it doesn't work, that's why it can get so damn loud quickly. Yeah, I don't. I, I would love to know how much he stuck with what he learned from Belichick, and he'd been there for so long. Like in what little tweaks he changed. That, that's what I would want to know. And also, what changes did he make from his first time being a head coach to the second time? Like he even said when he got the Raiders gig, "Yeah, I, I learned a lot and made some mistakes before. I need to learn from those or whatever. And move on." Like, did you really? I don't know. Did you try to make those changes? He said, "I'm gonna be me yeah. this time. I'm gonna go try to be Bill." And it's like. What Tough if he just do. sucks? Bingo. What if he was him before? Sure. Mm-hmm. People are like, you're trying to be Bill. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That was what I was trying to do. Let me get back into this. I'm going to be me this time. Man, you're a miserable prick. You know that? No, I'm not trying. To, that's Bill. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're talking about you. You're being you right now. Speaking of Bill, there's conversations about him coaching other teams. Oh, I mean, it's getting. There's no way. No way. He's right? coaching. He's coaching yes, the Patriots, is. I think. If no he's coaching, way he's he goes team. anywhere else, right? A massive chance. I never say never, but. I don't think it would happen. Massive chance. Really? Why? Do you think Kraft fires him, AJ? Any chance of that? No. I don't think Kraft will fire him. Any a Patriot place, a casino, the amount of, I mean. He's getting the record somewhere. This show's ending. All right, Aaron Rodgers will join us in about 10 minutes or so on YouTube and ESPN+. Plus. We'll be back tomorrow with a massive Wednesday. Mm-hmm. You're the greatest humans on earth. Enjoy Sports Center in seven. Cheers. That was a good tease, too. I did a Sports Center tease. Yeah, shout oh, yeah. out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Sports Center, you know? Yeah, I love mm-hmm. those guys and girls. They don't love us. No, they what? don't. Sports centers don't love us. No. That's fine. No, we're, you're right. Come no, on. no. We're eating up time that they could be on. It's true. You know what I mean? We're eating up time that they could be on. Mm-hmm. Is no. noon to two, was that, did that used to always be sports center? I do believe noon to one was a sports oh. center, and then I don't know what was else on. Maybe the max. Two was max. Kicking it with max. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. We're maxing out. Mixing it up max with max. In the afternoon. The max there mix. Is. There it is. Yep. Yeah. I didn't mind Max Kellerman. Seemed like he was always mad, but he was yeah. like going. a boxing aficionado. He's a big boxing guy. Mm-hmm. He is. I wonder his thoughts on like we didn't talk about this, but I guess the Francis Ngannou Tyson Fury one did not do good. Massive numbers. Didn't do good numbers. Hmm. Really? What time was it on? What's that? What time was it? On? Two p.m. Day. Five, yeah, that's the problem. Five, 5 p.m. on a Saturday. Yeah. What network yeah. was it? Yeah. Zone. Dazzin. The Zone pay per view, right? I watched. I downloaded. I paid for it. I know that. Yeah. I watched that. I think whole it was the zone pay per view. I watched that whole thing. Mm-hmm. It did. It was really nice. It was really. It was before mm-hmm. your Halloween party. Mm-hmm. I just gotten home from Utah. Utah long flight. Long Get back, night before. Only had like an hour, pretty much before the Halloween party. Sam was picking up our Halloween costumes at that exact time, so I'm like, all right, perfect timing. All the football games are blowouts. I yep. think it was like perfect. I'm gonna watch this fight, and the whole time I was just thinking Tyson Fury is gonna come back and win it. Tyson Fury was going to come back and win it. That didn't happen at all. Mm-mm. And I looked on the internet. Everybody was talking about it. I assumed it was going to be huge. I guess that's just not how it works. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I think just for casual fans, like anytime it's not Saturday night where you can't get with a group, like anytime it's in the middle of the day like uh, that, I just don't think as many people either know what's going on or it's just hard to take that block of time out of like your Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Especially when I think the weather was decent too. It's a good call. It's like it's one of those last good weekends. And Halloween party weekend. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it was. I don't think a lot of people knew about it. If you didn't like pay attention, I don't. I didn't see it popping up all over the place. We were supposed to interview Tyson on Friday beforehand, yes. and it, it didn't. It fell into a time in which he was not going to be able to come on the program. Mm-hmm. He enough. had something very important to do, I believe. Okay. I, there, that was one of the wildest. What does that the, mean? It was one of the most hilarious emails of all time. It was like, yeah, not going to happen because insert name a thing that had to happen. And it was like, well, you guys are being very transparent, and mm-hmm. we appreciate that. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but he couldn't make it on. And I thought to myself, like, how much did they, how much marketing did they do? I don't remember uh, how that, much movement. Yeah, not a lot of promotion, it felt like. like but that. it was for the baddest on earth. I don't know. I hope they keep – thank you for fighting each other. Yeah, keep you. fighting. We appreciate it's you guys. Hard. It's hard to make some noise, isn't it? Isn't it hard for people to get – it's hard to get people's attention. I think there's just oh, so yeah. much going on and so much out there. Like, how do you separate? Especially like, in the middle of football season. Yeah. Bingo. You know what I mean? Like, in the middle of football season with a lot of eyes on it. Now, I know that's a global event. And Tyson's from uh, England and Nganu's from Nigeria. Nigeria. So, yeah. I, I understand it's a global event and a global scale. But, like, 
I think our media potentially runs a lot of it. And right now, football is so great. Mm -hmm. How about tonight? College football playoff rankings. Second official one coming out, 7 p.m. Eastern. Let's go. ESPN. Let me, let's call Herbie. Let's call Herbie real quick. Three matching games tonight? What's he doing? Three? He's with Ooh. Ben. He is probably taking Ben for a walk. What a dog. Like, actual. Both yeah. of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 We already know what the top six are going to be. Yeah. Hey, we're live. We're live. We're live. What do you think he's going to say some slurs? Hey, we're live. We're live. <laughs> Look, I'm on a Zoom. I just didn't want him to say something about Pete. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Al Michaels. Whoa. Al Michaels, what's going on? Kaylee Hartung, how's it going? What are we doing? Repur a big game Thursday, Herbie. I got you, Huge. I got you on mute. I know better. You <laughs> son of a bitch. I wanted to say hello to the you team. Just, you just yawned right in his face today. No, he was texting me. He thought I yawned in Bob Carpenter's face. Oh, come on. Man. Dude. I didn't. I was talking. I was going to talk. I was about to ha. Ah. I didn't see that. I'm going to have Al say hi. Anybody else say hi? Please hey, do. Hey, Al. Al Michaels. Let him know we're live. Al, uh, Pat's on here. Let Al know. Tell him we're live, Herbie. Tell him. Tell him. Yeah, he's live on his show if you want to cuss him yeah. or anything. It's live, Al. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got, I got ESPN six. Ah, that's awesome. All right, thank you, Al. Love you, Al. Love you. Hey, all right, appreciate you, Al. Hey, real quick, Herbie. Herbie. No, I'm like, hold on. I got your. You're coming on right now. You're on commercial. No, we're not. We're on the no, internet, no, Al. No. We're on the internet, Al. Al, we are live, Al. Al. You, need, Al. you are being... Get off your chest, Al. Her, no, do not. <laughs> Herbie, you he are can't, being he can't hear me. a bad teammate right now. He needs to know he's live. He's live right now. <laughs> well, this team's having fun. You know, yeah. it's good to hear that the yeah, Amazon... Yeah. That's right. Hey, real quick, Saturday. can I ask you a question? Hey, Derek, Derek Brown's on the horn, dude. I gotta go. Oh, dude, tonight, 7 o'clock, big deal, right? Playoffs? Are we going to be excited yeah, or what? Yeah. Seven o'clock, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Good question. Derek Brown's in the line. Al must be so fucking pissed they have Panthers Bears this week. <laughs> they must be, they must be <laughs> miserable. Diva said yesterday, oh, Al's going to be pumped about that one. Dude, yeah. it is. I mean, we talk about the Boston Connor graphics. Uh, it started just yesterday with the slate of primetime games, and Chargers Jets was on there because we kind of forecasted what that was going to potentially become, which was torturous to watch at points. Yep. Yeah, it, was. it was tough. It was tough football to watch. It stayed awake through it all, which shout out to me, pretty pumped up about that. <laughs> but like sure. watching that was tough. And then you start going ahead, it's like, boy, Panthers Bears on Thursday night. We're staring down Broncos Colts from last year on Thursday night football. Yeah, what are we doing? It's but be least, great. It has to be great though. We have our expectations no. are knocked down that it's going to have to it's going to exceed our expectations. Well, that's not true cuz last night's game, right? We had it on this yeah. particular graphic. That's not, that face right there from Tim doesn't mean we're <laughs> expecting it was going to be good. No. Mm. We thought it was going mm. ah, mm. oh, oh. <laughs> What did he love? He just loved the zip, zip, line. zip line. Yeah, that was zip line. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> Pulling on the rope too hard. See, the Colts are a part of this. Colts Patriots Sunday yeah. morning. Yeah. Jeez, that's good. only game on. Terrible. Jets Raiders Sunday night football. More Zach Wilson football. Okay, yeah. and then Broncos Bills, and we just assume and hope that the Bills are going to be the Bills. Yeah. Maybe. But we don't know. They Maybe. lost to the Patriots, so. So we're in the middle of a little five-game stretch where we're certainly going to have to chit-chat about. Yeah. Okay? But let's remember, we're lucky to watch these games. Bingo. Yeah. Football's not year-round, people. Boom. No, it's we not. only got so many games yeah. left. Oof, exactly. So when these things are on, no matter how terrible they are or how inept it appears, the offensive coordinators or the quarterbacks or anything is potential, we got to remember we get to watch it. Amen. And it is still happening. So enough with your little graphic about how shitty these games are. I'm not going to bring it I'm already working on the next one. And the next one is how good the primetime games are going to be after this week. Oh, they okay. Are, they are fantastic. Okay, okay let's dive into the Boston Connor graphic of the day. Oh, yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah let's dive into the Boston <laughs> Connor yeah. graphic of the day. Dirty, our graphic designer, uh, had a baby a few days ago. Congratulations. Hey, Dirty. Hey. So all hands on deck whenever it came to designing graphics, and Connor has really jumped yeah. at the opportunity. Yeah. He's making one a day. You yep. know it's his because he <laughs> has a certain style mm -hmm, whenever do. he yep. is making a graphic. The current 2023 NFL playoff picture. In the NFC, number one seed, Eagles. Congratulations. The brand new Lions Hell sitting yeah. there at number two. San Francisco 49ers, even though they're on a little bit of a schneid, okay, a little bit of a schneid, they're still number three. Saints, congratulations down there in NFC South yeah. leading the way. 
And you got the Vikings, Cowboys, Seahawks, and then the Commies and Falcons have an opportunity to slip in the back door That's here right. as a wild card. That's wild. AFC, AFC, number one seed, the Kansas City Chiefs. There, there are people asking them if they're dead. Yeah, mm-hmm. crazy. <laughs> are they broken? They're still number one seed. Then the Ravens, who D-Butt's been on for three weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jaguars, phenomenal. Loved listening to Trevor Lawrence last night. The Dolphins still have all the talent in the world. Can they beat somebody that's on this graphic, though? That's the question. <laughs> that's right. Is that, so they're top of the AFC East? Yeah. Nice. Right on. But, Gumpy, the question is, are they ever going to be able to beat anybody on this graphic right here? They would beat the Steelers for sure. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Then you got the Steelers, the Bengals, and the Browns uh, all in there. Texans, Chargers, and Jets still tied at 4-4 four and four in the hunt. Connor, great graphic, pal. Hell yeah. yeah. And, and one of those teams also in the hunt, the Bills, not in the playoffs right now. That is absurd. Wow. Playoffs? Playoffs? Kidding me? Just trying to win a game. That's all. They got a boring... Monday night football match that could propel them right back into the conversation of everything, Bingo. especially if Josh balls. I'm proud of you, buddy. I'm I'm really loving. It. I actually tried another graphic, and we've we figured out. Hey, kind of stick to what we've done these past couple of days. Don't try and do the other yeah. ones. Connor's trying to become an actual graphic designer, downloading <laughs> apps that are impossible to use. Yep. And it's like, con man, come on, bud. You're doing this for a week and a half. Mm-hmm. Like an be, awful lot here. You're going to be done with this. But his graphics are great. <laughs> it got copied yesterday. Yeah. Ooh, his great. graphic got stolen yesterday by the 33rd team. 33rd team was oh. like, you know what? Not yeah. a bad graphic. Yeah, let me get that. Lombo? We'll change Tim Robinson out. We'll sub in another <laughs> idiot. Miserable yeah, something else. That one got a lot more action than ours. Yeah, it's bullshit. <laughs> and that, that's a 33rd team difference, I guess. I mean, Ari Mirov, he's got his, you know. Finger on the pulse. So, well, congrats to thirty third team having the same mind. I assume they didn't steal ours. They no, probably no. had similar ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we want to let them know we're thankful that our minds are synced with theirs. Yeah, and it's something that needs to be talked about because if we don't want to watch these primetime games, if we don't talk about that, then how's the NFL ever going to change them? And also, well, use the fucking flex, please. We got it. Just use it. You created it for a reason. What are we doing? Can they do it every week, or do they only have so many flexes? Well, that's a whole another thing. Let them use it all the time. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Let them yeah. use it all the time everywhere. Week three on. Congratulations. Yeah. You just got flexed into prime time. You're supposed to play at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Oh, which day? Mm, Monday. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy it. Sweet. Love it. Figure it out. Congratulations. You just got flexed into prime time. When? Thursday. Oh, sweet. We got a mini buy this week? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Andrew on prime time. Figure it out. You just got flexed into Sunday night football. All right. Here we go. A little extra time. I think teams, if that becomes the new norm, will be okay with it, AJ. I think. Yes. I mean, no one's going to be – I mean, if you get flexed out of the primetime game, you'd be a little bit upset, but well, you would understand, too. Like, you would get why they bumped you out. And when you, it's like getting a promotion when you get bumped into those primetimes. Like, all right, different day, too. You know, that would be logistical. Yeah, yeah you got to do, different. what, two weeks that's, ahead of time, yeah, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Which they do. And, and but like, if it becomes the new norm, yeah. it's just the new norm. Yeah. But that's going right. to the Sunday night – going from, like, a 1 p.m. Sunday to the Sunday night game, that's, that's a great change. Mm-hmm. Great. How about if we went to Monday? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah, it's a little more, a little different, but yeah, guys. Some guys are have some guys don't love that as much. Yeah, because the back end, you're obviously getting screwed. But I'm just saying, if it becomes the new norm, which a lot of shit has, exactly. mm-hmm. just become the new. Oh, we're yep. playing in Germany. Mm-hmm. We're playing in London. Mm-hmm. You're not taking a sure. buy. It's like if that just becomes the new norm for the league, I don't think anybody would be complaining. You're moved to four o'clock on Sunday. How come all the other four o'clock games suck? Oh, okay. Sweet. Sounds good. Thank God. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's a lot of those potential opportunities in the future, and I assume there's a logistical nightmare that we're leaving out of this whole thing, but hopefully that'll take place. Let's get to a break. In five minutes, Aaron Rodgers Hell will yeah. join us. How's he feel after hawking a pigskin 58 yards last night? Yeah. Oof. Look good. Did you see that, AJ? Looks pretty good. Pretty good with those shoes. He was wearing those De Niro or Pacino <laughs> shoes from the bigger. His new norm is wearing absurd shoes. Who cares if it gets him back on the football field sooner than anybody in the history? Aaron Rodgers will join us on the other side of this break. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Take five. Five. Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm-hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for 
One main reason, it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. That, that right. and if you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed and that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy it's never easy and I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week it's never easy and your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is, is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. What to expect whenever I came out here to Utah. Shock. Shock that. Yeah, don't get the off the bus. Shock. I can't make it. Steve Smith Sr. Pounding up that I ain't even wish for No left over for y'all I'm locking the fridge door At the crib cutting hits I read through the catalog Came the conclusion No one's touching this Just finished the maiden voyage Hopping off the Mayfly Said I'm trying to kill them off Whatever the take down I seen the boats I'm at home I'm selfish with the goals I Oh, oh, <laughs> I mean, you gotta do it. I mean, why won't you? It is 34 degrees out here in the back to back Pac 12 champions. The mighty Utah student section has been here in abundance. They've been loud in today's a day where they showcase to the world that it's not just Mormons and soaking in Utah. No, no. <laughs> It's great football and an incredible fan base. They've been so kind, I appreciate the hell out of you all. <laughs> Have you ever thought something negative about a kicker before in your entire life? Yes! All right, relax, dude. <laughs> okay. Boston yeah. Connor was drinking with Dwayne Wade last night. $225,000. Let's remember this day forever, Cameron.
you know that 29 out of the last 30 home games that happens right here at the University of Utah. The Utah Utes win. Cam Rising said yesterday, we don't lose at home. And today, they ain't losing. This place is going to be soaking in celebration this evening. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 7th, 2023, this sports program, Hour 3, starts now. Football! I got a little bit relaxed there, a little lackadaisical, uh, because I couldn't wait to get into this hour because mm -hmm. I just wanted it to start. Not because A.J. Hawk is here, although he is always fantastic. Not just because the Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor with his ponies on his chest. Oh, yeah. Look, swear, there's wild ponies. Yeah, they're all, they're all three of them are wild, and you can't see it, but there's more below and above and on the side. There's, there's a bunch of wild horses. Just a bunch of horses running wild? Yeah, running wild, brother. I love whenever horses are just out there running wild. There's nothing better than wild horses. You look out there, you go, that's wild. All those wild horses running wild out there in the wild. Is that one wild horse? No, it's, it's a bunch of wild horses. Oh, it's 20 wild horses. And one in there that isn't wild. There's one non-wild horse in there. That's a calm horse. That's fine, but we like them wild. Yeah, we do like them wild, just like we like one half <laughs> of the toxic table uh, at Ty Schmidt. Ty, Pete Thamel's really going through with these Michigan fans. He is, but Pete's going to be fine. I mean... This is this comes with territory. Yeah. Exactly. Pete knows, and guess what? If anyone wants to, you know, kind of run up on Pete, uh, I would advise against that. There's two Pete's. It, well, yeah. there are for sure two Black Pete's, belt. but... It, bingo. There it is. You know, Pete Thamel might look, oh, he, he's a bookworm. He's a smart guy. He's, you know, a, a Nobel Peace Prize potential winning <laughs> agent. But Pete Thamel will snap you in half if you test him. I guarantee it. Pete's a badass, and he knows how to defend himself. So, yeah, you know, you can throw stones. You can make fun of Pete. You can say whatever you want about him. But think twice before you fuck with Pete Thamel. Pete's going to be vindicated, I think, in this entire thing. I think so, too. Pete, very much, you know, not just going to say something if there isn't a reason for it. Now, I know there's a lot of media people that do that. People yeah. say that about us. You know, I mean, that's how it goes. Yeah. Pete Thamel is known to be, like, the guy who knows... Worked for the last, like, 20 years doing this. Yeah. For good reason. These Michigan fans don't believe him, though. Doesn't matter. Pete's an agent of truth. And that's what he's seeking, and that's what he will find. I can't wait to see what the truth is. Will we ever learn it? Who knows? I know the truth is. One half of the hammer, done. done. Cowboys Tone Diggs is still in the middle of it with the whole city of Cincinnati. Yeah, you'd think I spit in their mother's faces. Um, you know, you kind of did, didn't you say? Bit. I respect yeah, the football bit. team on yep. the field. Uh -huh. I disrespect the fan base and the franchise as a whole. Correct. That's spitting right in not only their father and their mother's face, but their father's father and their mother's mother's mm -hmm. face, mm -hmm. the generations of Bengals fans. Maybe they're taking things a little too seriously, okay? Go for a walk. For when was the last time you guys won a playoff game? Uh, who? The Steelers. 2017. Yeah, Joe Burrow and the Bengals been to the Super Bowl since then. Yeah. Okay. okay. Did they win it? Does do, does winning playoff games matter or does winning the Super Bowl matter? Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, you, you could always hang that over their head forever. Yeah. You certainly could. They yeah. did win an AFC Championship. Speaking of, Colts. a man who was draft. <clears throat> we got a banner. Just yep. throwing it out there. Playoff Colts, matter. Colts got that sweet 2014 AFC finalist banner. Still hanging. Still hanging. And, and guess what <laughs> isn't hanging? There's zero <laughs> Takate reference up there. Nothing. That's weird. Oh. I want to let the person know that sent me a message yeah. when I dressed up as Takate saying that 
your fan base probably isn't even educated enough to know Lolita or Takate. Whoa. <laughs> I wanted to Whoa. say, uh, bitch, <laughs> we've been following. We have been following Takate a little closer than most sports dumbasses. Yeah. Okay? Please pay a little bit of a tribute. Speaking of a tribute, we're incredibly lucky to have you every single Monday through Wednesday. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler. Joining us now is a man who was in New York last night. Cannot wait to hear his thoughts on the game that was and where he is whenever it comes to his Achilles rehabilitation. Ladies and gentlemen, four-time NFL MVP, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Super cool. It's not Halloween. You still dress as a cool guy. I like that. Travel outfit. Oh, nice. Don't have to do the hair, put the hat on. Mm -hmm. Did we snooze a little bit? What was it like uh, during travel? No, I'm reading right now. I got I to gotta read some books. We got the, you know, the book club reveal coming up here pretty soon. Okay, we appreciate you prepping for that. Second largest book club in the world, I do believe, is what the stats say, but stats are on everybody's side. Can't wait to dive back into that. Let's talk about last night a little bit. What was it like to be back with the team? We got to see you around warm-ups. You were spinning. Hey, Aaron, this is like a 58-yard ball here. And, and I know whenever it's close up and this is you warming up, the shoes look ridiculous. You're back in the team gear. This video, though, hit the internet. You do a little three-step drop, pivot. You have to turn a lot of force on that front foot. That's like a 58-yard ball. Are we back, Eric? Woo. Are we back right now, or what are we thinking? No, we're not back. That's just my stress reliever. Man, that's just me feeling a little bit normal, feeling like... Uh... You know, I'm back a uh, member of the team almost. But uh, but no, it's just me relieving some stress and and uh, having some fun pregame. Uh, 58 yards, though, of stress is a lot. Because you have to do a lot of things there. Hey, we know as humans that think, well, it's not just easy to throw a ball 58 yards. Mm -hmm. To do that, you have to do a lot. There's a lot. Torque. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that has to happen, bro. There's a lot. And you're in those ridiculous shoes, obviously, for the good of the Achilles. We're uh, stressing, not stretching. <laughs> but there's a lot that has to happen, right? That's a good – That we took steps here. Feels like we're getting into a good spot. I'm feeling good with my rehab. You know, I've been been grinding. Um, but was able to get, uh, get into uh, Jersey on Monday morning and – see the guys for the game and, and uh, throw a couple of balls around with my buddy KP, one of our equipment staff. Um, but yeah, it felt good. It just felt felt kind of normal to be out there. And listen, when I'm 70, I think I'll still be able to throw the ball pretty good. So that's never going to be a problem. It's just uh, how quickly can I, uh, you know, get this rehab where I need it to be. And, and uh, you know, we obviously got to play some better football uh, on offense than we did uh, last night. But uh but I'm excited where I'm at. Good to see the guys. Good to see the crowd. Obviously, disappointing game. But uh, we got another one coming up Sunday in Vegas. A chance to bounce back. Go ahead, AJ. Hmm. What about after the game? I believe it was Derwin James. You said, give me a couple weeks before I'm back out there. I know you're just kind of having fun with the guys. But obviously, you know that's going to get dissected a little bit. Is a couple weeks? Does that mean two? Does that mean six, ten, three months? What does it mean? We're back. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I've known Derwin for a while. We got the same agency. Uh, really uh, have a lot of respect for him and his game. He came over, and dabbed me up during uh, during the game. And good to see him after the game. I didn't realize that was uh, going to get caught there. I mean, obviously that was said with a little tongue in cheek there. Um, it'd be nice to be able to be back in a couple weeks. That's probably. Uh, uh, not anywhere near a realistic timeline, but uh, a couple is, you know, could be uh, could be a few, could be a lot. It was uh, it's more of a uh, you know a, a phrase that didn't have a specific uh, timetable. But uh, yeah, I said it smiling, joking. You know, he was talking about how you know he's excited for me to get back on the field at some point. I joked that it'd be a few weeks, but uh, obviously it's going to be more than a couple weeks. So a couple's two, a few's three. Yep. A Rushmore is four. That's I'm right. aware of this. I'm aware right. Of this. So yeah, I'm just saying. You know, Handful, it's gonna five, be five, it's gonna five, be a few. A pantheon. It's gonna be a yeah, few six. a few fortnights. It'll be a few fortnights. A oh, few okay. fortnights. So a few okay. would be three Those are times two. Two, two weeks. Yeah. Right? Yep. Two weeks a fortnight. So six, a baker's six, dozen. Six, is there anything six, we're adding in there? Yeah. It's a 13, score. 13 days. Um, holy hell. Congrats. We're we're high in December. Mid mid December. Which would be really early. Really early, but let's talk about 
you know, the comeback process of it. Obviously, where the Jets stand in it all would be a big piece of whether or not you would come back early from an Achilles injury and play. Oh, oh no. Is he getting close to Malibu where it's, well, FaceTime only, but Wi-Fi. He's getting yeah. on Wi-Fi in the car. I was just going to freeze alongside of him so we would be a good team there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. I see you guys. Okay, good. Well, you look amazing. Uh, let's talk, though, about the Jets' standings in record for you to come back. You're not thinking about that at this exact moment? Is that something you think about while you watched the team play last night and it's very clearly going to be an L as the clock starts running down? Do you start thinking about what their record is, how the team looks to make a comeback this late into the season as a man who's defying science with the Achilles return? I have a lot of faith in our guys, and, and I feel like we're going to uh, be in the mix for sure. Um, that, you know, is a very small part of uh, of the thought process because it's really just the day-to-day -day trying to get better. Uh, trying to keep strengthening the calf, trying to, uh, you know, as we move into this, you know, more flexibility down there. But um, it's going to be a process. It's going to be... You know, it's going to be a process of small gains every single day. Um, and then hopefully there's a chance to be, uh, to have that conversation. Obviously, you know, we got to be in the mix. There's, there's no doubt about it. But, but more than that, I got to be able to, uh, to be healthy, to be able to move, to be able to protect myself, to be able to have strength uh, in all the throwing positions. Um, yeah, I can, I can do a little simulated gun drop. Left, right, left, right. I even did a little crossover last night. Oh, oh I'm karaoke. Feeling, oh. I'm feeling a lot <laughs> feel a lot more strength in the Achilles, but uh, we're a long way off from being able to be under center and get out to an outside zone and get out to a keep fake. And, um, you know, it's going to be a process, but uh, I, I like where I'm at. I mean, you know, definitely, uh, obviously ahead of schedule and, and obviously thankful for uh, not just – Doc Elitrosh, but Heather oh, yeah. uh, and Dave at the Jets, and everybody's been helping with my rehab and all the people taking care of me. It's been, you know, it's been a tough situation. It's been a grind, but um, definitely thankful to be, you know, eight weeks tomorrow since surgery and to be mobile, to be walking normal, to be able to move a little bit on the field and to, to just feel a little bit more normal every day. Just kind of. Um, puts my mind a little more ease after uh, you know a tough two month stretch. All of this in 55 days is obviously credit to your hard work and that incredible team. So I appreciate you giving them a shout out. And you talk about getting back to New Jersey and New York, how you get back into your flow when you have that headset on and you're in the game. How much are you paying attention? How much are you deciding what you would do in the moment? Are you watching the jumbotron and be like, oh, we should have won here. I would have went here. Or what do you kind of? How do you kind of feel during something like last night whenever you're in the know and then what's happening on the field is nothing like we've ever seen you do in this particular situation? Well, I think just like at home, there's a bunch of expert QBs on the sidelines. There's a bunch of sideline quarterbacks as well who would want to, you know, think they should be doing this and we should be doing that. It's a lot different when you're out there in the fire and the bullets, bullets are flying and you got to make quick decisions in the moment. Um, you know, for me on the headset, it's about, Kind of being the uh, you know voice of calm at times, uh, you know suggestions here and there, um, and then just you know little side conversations with uh, tight ends and running backs and and Zach and the coaching staff, you know in between possessions and looking at the pictures and seeing if I see anything. But um, for the most part, I'm I'm just a you know just a voice of uh, of uh, you know reason at times and and throwing some ideas in there uh, as well. But um, yeah, it sucks to not be out there for sure, uh, and it sucks when we have a you know poor performance on offense like that. Just I know we're, what we're capable of. Uh, I know how we've been practicing. Uh, I know the kind of talent that we have, and it just it's not coming together consistently, and that's why we're struggling. That's I mean, 191 yards of offense, uh, and we lose by you know three scores is is pretty wild thing to happen so defense obviously feeling really good offense is uh going through our struggles but um it just comes down to situational football i mean you look at the uh, you know we're, we've been bad in third down and bad in the red zone so if you bad on third down you're not gonna keep drives going bad in the red zone you only get field goals you're not gonna put up points so um you know it's the same shit uh execute comes in execution and the little things and and uh everybody doing their job 
we've hurt ourselves in pre snap penalties for sure. Hurt also hurt ourselves in negative yards plays, put ourselves in tough situations. But comes down to it, you know, we get execute. We'd execute on the money down on third down. We got to get in the red zone more often. When we do, we got to get touchdowns. You know, we had some chances in the game for sure um, to make that a different game. I thought the possession come out of the first half was a really nice possession. Went right down the field. Um, had some chances. Had a couple negative yards plays and sacks and forced into a long field goal. Um, if we get seven there, it's a different ball game. It's a one score game. Our defense really didn't give up any zero long touchdown drives. They scored obviously on a punt return. They scored oh. one yard out on a fumble recovery. They scored on a, uh, you know, drive. I think that started at the plus 49. Other than that, they had two field goals. So we, you know, we have a lot of respect for Herbert. Um, but our defense again made, uh, you know, really good quarterback, uh, you know, look a little more average. Um, they got some playmakers. I feel like we did a good job against Eckler in the run. I feel like we did a pretty good job against Keenan. He obviously made an incredible catch on the sidelines to keep a drive going. But for the most part, we bottled them up. We forced a couple of fumbles that didn't bounce our way. We sacked them a bunch of times. Um, but offensively, we're just not doing our part. We got to if we're going to win these games. So we got to bounce back this week. So you see that defense doing everything that you just kind of laid out there and how talented they are. I think the last time you had a top five defense or a top ten defense, you won a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. something like that. And obviously that was one of the main reasons on why you wanted to go to the Jets. Is it nights like last night where you're just so eager to get back? Like what is the – as the game's going, are you wishing that you could utilize those massive shoes you're wearing and just mm -hmm. put on a uniform and get back in there? Is there – what is the urge to get back on the field whenever you're watching a game like last night, especially with how your defense is doing? Well, it's tough, Pat, because – I'm, I'm not healthy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just not ready. Uh, so as much as you watch a game like last night and last week when our defense was so dominant, um, and they've been that way most of the season, you know, other than maybe the Dallas game, I feel like we've been really, really good uh, on defense and forcing turnovers and sacking the hell out of the quarterback and, um, you know, getting our hands on the football um, every single week. Uh, it gives you a lot of confidence on offense because you just kind of expect them to three and out just about every time. And that's in the league. That's just not realistic. You know, there's so many great players in the league on both sides of the ball, but our defense consistently shows up, consistently makes plays and, and gets after the quarterback and gets after the, you know, the, 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 the guys up front. And we're not giving up, you know, a ton of explosive plays. We're getting our hands on the football. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's it's frustrating, but I'm not healthy, so it's hard to even take my mind there at this point. Um, there's been times in the past when I had bad, bad cap injuries where I was able to play in a tiny circle, you know, in the, in the pistol and in the shotgun. It limits, obviously, what we can do, um, but I've been able to operate in those, in those situations. If this were just a real bad cap strain, I'd definitely be out there. You know, it wouldn't be a question. I did it in the 14 season for multiple weeks. Um, you know, over that stretch. But, uh, you know, we're in the 8- to 12-week window where the tendon is really healing well, and it's also uh, a little bit of a danger zone where we got to be really careful. Now, obviously, that 8- to 12 weeks is, is relative compared to a normal healing process compared to the way that we've attacked it, but we're still uh, we're still a little bit ways off of, uh, you know, i gotta, I got to hit markers and then i got to get on the practice field and they got to open up the window for me to come back from IR. So we there's a lot a lot that, that has to happen. Not saying it can't get accelerated, but there's still a lot of things I gotta do before we can even talk about getting on the field. Got it. Go ahead, AJ. So each time that you go out here and you throw pregame, I, I guess like I know you're still injured so you can't take yourself there, but do you get a little bit closer? Like last night I would imagine you're out there and your Achilles feels pretty good. You know you can't play right now, but I feel like at some point I know when you're coming off of injuries you're like at some point, you're thinking, oh, this sucks. This hurts so bad. Obviously, I, I'm a long ways out. But then the more you go, I feel like it can give you a confidence boost and you can feel pretty good when you're like, you know what? I can actually – I'm going to get back on the field. I'm going to get back on the field. And it's not going to be a crazy amount of time before I'm out here. Like, are you slowly going through that process? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I feel like I'm kind of checking myself every time I'm out there. Like, what can I actually do? How much can I put on the left foot? Um, can I do a cross like last night? You know, I did a, I did a little, a little uh, crossover, which I hadn't really done before. I just kind of done a little left, right, left, right, left. I did a little. What? Bit. That was he's about to get good. He did a little left, right, a little crossover. Right, 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 we're talking yeah. about. Hey, that sky one is the one we need. The the sky view. The fifty-eight yard. The fifty-eight yard ball. Hey, you're back. You're back, baby. Oh, yeah, you're back. Hey. 
You Listen, guys still there? They're getting throttled I'm, there. You're talking about stuff that's not supposed to happen. 60 yard ball is 55 days into a damn recovery from an Achilles. Am I still there? Mm hmm. You sound great. Yeah, sorry about this, boys. Um, hey. Listen, all good. Like I said, I'm just I'm I'm kind of testing myself. Like, what what am I able to do? How much weight am I able to put on my leg? How much uh, kind of pop off my back foot can I get? Um, but as much as I'm doing that, it's honestly it's a stress reliever for me. It's like a, the ability to feel seven. All right, it's getting throttled. Let's get throttled. People are interested in it, but oh, it's for me. It's for me and my own mentals, and I'm uh, thankful for the boys who are out there who play a little catch with me. And um, yeah, every week we're doing, we're feeling a little bit better, uh, but uh, you yeah, know we're still a ways off. All right, well I know you're out there. I believe in lovely Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Please welcome Carson Wentz to the city. <laughs> he just signed to the Los Angeles Rams. Congrats, wow. Carson. Wow. Carson. Congrats to Carson Wentz signing to the Rams. You know another opportunity out there. Yeah. Love it. Good for. Hey, Shefty, my boy Shefty with the with the with the scoop there. Yeah, a little inside scoop is there from Adam Schefter. He um he said he doesn't have your number anymore because you told him to lose it. So he did live by the what you told him if it means anything. I bet he still got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he deleted it from yeah, his phone. Yeah, he said he was told to lose it. He deleted it. I heard. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I bet he still got it. I won't respond. I, I probably won't respond, but he's, I bet he still got it. Hey, he was he doing though. some ball he washing might. yesterday. He was. He was. It was incredible. Yeah. All right, enjoy the hell out of your day. <laughs> we appreciate you, man. Hey, thanks, guys. Sorry about the shitty service, but uh, hey, Life happens. Much respect, dude. Happy Tuesday, everybody. And uh, book club's coming back soon, man. I got two or three absolute oh. fucking gems yes. in the lineup. Yeah. Let's go. We can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where he was rolling around. You think he was out the there hills. in the up hills? In the hills. Yeah. Yeah. A, speaker, a speaker in the headrest? That's the first Probably. thing I saw. as a yeah. sweet whip. Nice. What yeah. do you think it is? No clue. I like an know. escalator? What is it? Nice big SUV. But. It's four-door. Speaker right yep. there in the headset. I was like, I don't know if I've seen that. Yeah, that'll get you, right? Especially if you listen to something with a little boom boom. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. I'd be yeah. a couple. Man, we got to go to the Sphere in Vegas, man. I need to go to a show out there. Yeah. Wow. I don't know why I brought that. I just thought that because each seat has its like speakers and each. Oh. That place just looks amazing. Yep. I, wanna, I need to go. How about Dana White as soon as you say? Yeah. For those that haven't, it's <laughs> the. I'm. I'm obsessed with this place. Yeah. It is. It does seem to be incredible. The amount of money that was spent on it is absurd. Dolan too. The Knicks own Dolan did it. Yeah, yeah, he loves it. He's just putting on these events, and then the what is it? It's 4K LED everything. Yeah, everything. It's, crazy. it's like it's like you're in. You're wearing virtual reality. It's like you're in a virtual yep. reality situation. How the screen is inside an eyeball there. Yeah, like the way what they do inside of it. Like there's one mm -hmm. shot they showed where like they the camera was up on the roof and it looked as if you know it was going on forever. And then they showed it again and it was like the roof was collapsing in on the place. The way they can do everything with the screens. I wonder if it's like the Avatar ride down there at Disney World, where while you're sitting there too, you get a little mist on you. Probably got a bit of water, be. a little bit of fan, you know, feel the air of whatever's going on. I'd assume yeah, the experience is absurd. Uh, let's go into that Carson Wentz news a little bit because. Mike Garofolo is reporting that Wentz has been working with John Gruden, Whoa. known emailer, Whoa. this offseason, now joins Whoa. Gruden's disciple, Sean McVay, with the Los Angeles Rams, as Aaron Wilson first reported. I think it is a big piece of information. I like the fact that John Gruden was working with Carson and was like, tell you what, man, this guy can really still spin. Yep. He's, yeah. he's a big man. And then Sean McVay's in a situation that he's in. Obviously, they draft Stetson Bennett to be the backup quarterback. Thought there was going to be a lot of hope with Stetson Bennett being the backup quarterback. He has been away from the team for some time. Ripon comes in and plays. Oh, yeah. uh, Rippon Ripon comes in and plays Hell against yeah. the Packers. He was not great no. at all. So the Rams now are in a situation where they're trying to find something. If Carson Wentz can play football in a manner in which he's not trying to Break his legs mm -hmm. every single play. There's a chance of good football still mm -hmm. left inside of Carson Wentz and Sean McVay will be able to find it. Yeah, look what happened to Baker. I mean, Boom. Baker is now the the guy in Tampa, it feels like, and will be for a little bit. But to your point about, you know, Carson Wentz not breaking both his ankles, he's on Aaron Donald's team now. 
So Aaron Donald can't be True. breaking both his ankles. Uh, we had Miles Garrett on the show earlier. There's yeah. a lot of monsters out there, uh, <laughs> yeah. especially around this Halloween season. But Carson Wentz, when he's playing great football, AJ, this has always been the case. Philly playing great football. Wow, that's awesome. This guy's one of the best in the league. MVP. And then he'll make like six decisions a game where you're like, gah, 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 gah. what are we doing? <laughs> then he came to the Indianapolis Colts. We picked up his whole contract. We picked up his whole contract. Mm -hmm. I was pumped up about it. All right, here we go. Because you watch a couple highlights, Carson Wentz, you're like, yes, this guy's a guy. And then he plays a couple games, this guy's a guy. And then all of a sudden, he's shot putting lefty in his end zone against a division opponent in the yep. fourth quarter. Yep. And it's going pick six for the shortest pick six in the history uh -huh. of the NFL. <laughs> yep. And then he gets back on the field after doing that, shot putting a ball to the other team, shortest pick, fourth quarter against division rival. Okay, that's happening. Then next time he gets on the field, he's running around with the ball. Ah, then he goes to fall, puts the ball on ground. Mm -hmm. yep. Like this the to balance himself, and then stands up, throws it in triple coverage. That's right. And then Michael Pittman Jr. makes the catch. Yeah. It's like Carson Wentz is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that is the Carson Wentz experience that I think everybody's had. Goes the Commanders, obviously, not as many great times over there as the other places. But when he's playing great, boy, it's exhilarating. It is so much fun. But then there's moments that just pop up out of nowhere where it's like, whoa, 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 why, why are you doing it? Why are you an adult? What are you, do you know football? Do you understand what's going on here? Why are you doing that? And then you talk to his coaches and you hear them talk. It's like, we let Carson be Carson. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, can we stop? Yeah. yeah. Can we stop? Like, a bit. And I don't know how his parents have survived. I don't know how cardiac Carson Wentz's parents have survived because I rode one season with Carson Wentz, yeah. mm -hmm. and it was, whoo, whoo, whoo. His parents got to be the most chill humans of all time because watching their son play football, the way that he plays football has to be tasking. Every single one, he could either die or throw a touchdown. Mm -hmm. That's the type of play that Sean McVay's getting. Hopefully he'll be able to rein him in for only the positive, none of the negative. Couldn't agree with you more on that, but I think the big negative here is – who was supposed to be a true game time decision on Sunday? This is bad news for Matthew Stafford, right? Like this is. Well, they're gonna need a backup anyways, right? Yeah. Half. Well. After ripping. What? Yeah. No, I just assume this is bad. I just... Bad news. I don't think so. Oh, so you think Matt's playing this weekend? Stafford played with a broken freaking neck. He's not. He's true. playing to, soon enough. Tried to play against the Packers. Yeah. Well, I mean, places don't normally sign a quarterback. Listen to a but... podcast. We listen to a podcast. What's the podcast? He does We're have it with Kel? Yeah. Oh, there's oh. another one with Coop. Yeah, he doesn't have two podcasts. His wife has. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boom. Hmm. You guys. What? He's got one podcast, okay? His wife has the other podcast. He doesn't have two podcasts. You're the one saying that he has two podcasts. Why? I didn't. Let's rewind that. Never said it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, kind of the way you kind of did. You did. You did. Tony. But have they said anything on the podcast how he feels? Because you're thinking this necessarily means Carson wants to start this week for the Los Angeles Rams? Oh, starting? Um... Yeah, it's, good chance. it's a better chance of him starting than Matt, I think, at this point. You know, obviously, thumbs, that's a big issue when you're throwing him. But, uh, I mean, Carson, look, it, you look around the league, it ain't a lot of great quarterback play going on. A lot on. of backups. He's play. been out for a while. Mm -hmm. Obviously, talented guy. You guys saw him in person. We saw big son bitch. He, so, he's got an arm. He's got all the skill sets. It's just obviously between the ears. Maybe he's got a different perspective. John Gruden, a lot has been said about him, obviously. He is a good football coach, a good guy to be working with if you are a quarterback. So, And then you're going to Sean McVay. Connor mentioned it. Shit, we saw what happened with Baker Mayfield on the short week and then where Baker Mayfield is now. So um, another high draft pick. So uh, Carson Wentz, he has the tools. We just haven't seen him put it together. So, uh, but Rams have a bye this vibe weekend. For, oh, oh, that's okay. Big. Okay. okay, that's big news for both Stafford yeah. and for oh, yeah, Carson for both, Wentz. Yeah. That's good news. Well, I also think, I mean, like, match made in heaven. You think Carson Wentz, where should this guy be? In L.A., bright lights, big city. You know, that really kind of meshes with his personality perfectly. Uh, that's the other thing is deer season, mallard season. We are right smack dab in the middle of it right now. Yeah. Guess what? Not a whole lot of hunting out in L.A. I mean, he can go big game hunting, maybe kill a couple of those pumas or, you know, mountain lions that we've seen. But, I mean. He will. You he just, will. Yeah. There's you mountain lions that are eating their animals, all those little dogs. Uh, no, no mountain lions. No American Lions eating any Carson Wentz's animals. No. no Carson no. Wentz will kill them. But like Jessica Simpson's dog, I think they ate hers a while back, yeah. Damn. Jessica Simpson lost her dog to a mountain lion? I don't know when, but yeah, silence. I remember hearing different different He's celebrities, you know, they put the little dogs out in the backyard at night and like Gaga. smash them right up. Jess, Jess was uh, with uh, Lachey. Yeah, Nick, yeah, Nick Lachey. At one time, yeah. yeah. Are they still together? And Romo. What? Yeah, she dated Romo after yeah, Nick she Lachey. did. No. That's yeah. not his name. Lachey. You haven't seen the, the, the punked episode where they show up and the guy, the guy says he's his cousin, keeps keeps calling him Nick Lackey. It's 
It's damn good. Punk was good. Yeah, it Punk was. Yeah, Punk's had, great a good, run. Punk's had a good run. Yes, There's always a bunch of reincarnations of it, yep. you know. And, that was the original, though. Yeah, it did really well. I guess it was Coyotes. Coyotes oh. killed the dog. Oh, yeah, that yeah. was good, too. What year? They do that in Ohio. 2009. Yeah, but can't we just kick those things right in the fucking head? Yeah. Yeah, I've hard. seen a couple of these coyotes, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they're I little... think it's I don't see them. If you, if you put your dog out and you go inside or something, then they come snatch. Oh, got you. Yeah, because they're they're out here in oh, Indiana, yeah. these coyotes. But they all look as if you could just Oh yeah. Like, Little straggly dogs, don't they? Yeah. yeah. There's some big ones here, but yeah, I would it would I'd take a baseball bat out if they were coming after your dogs. Yeah, so. bingo. Yeah, you come yeah. after Valor. kidding me? No, you don't want to go after Chuck. I, no, they'd have no They chance physically there. couldn't go after Chuck. Chuck's though. bigger yeah. than a coyote. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Kyle awesome. picks Chuck up in Definitely. his mouth. That coyote is spitting Chuck out and turning around. You know those things that go like this? What's that called? Seesaw. 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 Yeah. Coyote picks Chuck up by the mouth. That thing's going yeah. straight. Yeah. Yeah. Break out, down, legs up. <laughs> Breaking his nose. And then yeah. Chuck's, Chuck is a kind of urban legend in the coyote community later on. And there's this thing that looks like all the others, but it's much larger than you could imagine. You mm -hmm. won't be able to judge on film. You're going to have to experience it live. Biggest, fattest corgi of all time. Ever. Chuck. That son of a bitch is only growing too. Didn't even squeal when I put it in his mouth. But what? In Whoa, his mouth? Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Whoa. When when Whoa. Coyote, you sick son of a bitch. Coyote, Whoa. What did you do Whoa. to my goddamn? What's up, Pat? No, I am the coyote talking Didn't about squeal. the urban legend. I'll Good lord! You. you guys need to take your heads out of the gutter. I'm not talking put it in about mouth uh, uh, what you what said. How you said? That's on you, not on us. Isolate that one, please. Isolate it. Jeez. We said we were going to do the middies. I mean, that's wild. I can't believe you guys. That would be I Gump. You'd say that. That I mean, would be Gump, too, by the way, who uh, would be the one isolating that. That would be mm, that would be true. Gumpy yeah. that would be doing that, you know? Good God. And He'll never do that. He won't isolate that. Thing. No, Gumpy wouldn't do that. Mm. What'd you say, Con? What was that again? I said, he, I said he didn't yeah. even squeal when he put it in his mouth. Nah, no, no, when no. you put it in yeah, his mouth. Yeah, you should. You I, said. I, oh, yeah, I was speaking as a coyote. Excuse me. Because that's uh, what we were doing. You, no, uh -huh. we were past doing that. You said then that when they were talking about the urban legend, that was the next thing I said. You were six mm -mm. seconds away. You, you, were, guys you, are, you guys are unbelievable. Well, I listen, can't if you can't this. keep up with the conversation, let us know. If you can't run like those wild ponies on your chest, let us know. I was running with like the wild ponies, and I can't believe you guys took what I was saying in the wrong fashion. This is despicable. I thought this was a real journalism show, and we were making funny jokes about. You said some wild stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. wild that the situation with the coyote was in too, because it was so wild he couldn't put Chuck in his mouth. Let's move along. Um, the middies will be happening tomorrow. Okay, okay. good to know. Midweek, yes, middle of the week, middle of the season. Boom. Tomorrow is actual midway point of season. That's right. So today would just be premature. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we don't want to do that. We're, once again, mature. And journalists. Yeah. So we can't give away mid-season awards at the middle of the season if we're not in the actual middle of the season. Right. It's the right decision, d but Great decision. I've heard around locker rooms, they've already heard about these middies, oh. and there's a lot of people pumped to get these midi awards. Oh, yeah. Just waiting. waiting. Bated excited. breath. I heard the boys are wondering. You heard Miles Garrett earlier. He he said, he said, yeah, he did. Oh, my God. God. We said in trophies? Shit. Huh? We said in trophies, the winner? Easy tone. We will send NFTs. Okay, well, There perfect. you go. We will send NFTs. Of a trophy. A yeah, gift. absolutely. So a, a gift. You stay out of that. Send them the Oh, it's going to be a picture yeah. of us going, way to go. Way to go. And then we'll put a little spin on it, mm -hmm. which would be a Zito thing. And yep. we put a little spin on it, and all of a sudden, this is 101. Congratulations. <laughs> cool. You won a midi. Mm -hmm. We got coach of the year. What? Offensive rookie of the year. What? Defensive rookie of the year. What? Offensive player of the year. What? Defensive player of the year. What? MVP. What? Yeah. We got a lot of midis. A lot of we got mid season comeback player of the year. Maybe we had a maybe we had a award. Yeah. Who it, would you who would you was somebody coming off IR? Who would it be? Oh, I don't know. There is a uh, two. Diggs usually has a bunch of There's a heavy, okay, there's be, a heavy, heavy favorite in the be, books. Gotta be DeMar. It is. Yeah, the Even heavy favorite he of the books is DeMar. Play. For the end of the year. Yes. DeMar Hamlin, yeah. comeback player of the year. That was cool to watch him handle that whole situation on uh Monday. Yeah. Sunday. Couldn't imagine. Ooh, Sunday. Nice. Sunday night. I don't yeah, love the, him getting that award though. I, the middies or the... Oh, no, you guys take this one. I, I, I leave the tie What are you on. talking about? Yeah, We're not tie. Talk bad about him. Oh, I'm look. not going to talk bad about him. I'm just saying. Oh, here we go. Here he we should go. definitely win comeback player of the year for the year. I don't know if he wins the midi comeback player of the year, though, halfway through the season. I, I mean, this would certainly be the time. It, when I put true. it in his butt, what growing two didn't even squeal when I put it in his butt. All right. 
I mean, oh that's not even gosh, what I said. Content. That's YouTube. That's YouTube caption. And, and that's fine. Yeah, they did that's it. AI. And, and that's completely fine. But I didn't say that. I know I didn't say that. Yeah, I don't think you remember what you said. I do remember what I said. Well, why is the AI so wrong then? I don't know. But you tell me, you're saying AI is wrong? So AI is dumb? You're telling me I said the same <laughs> thing. I said the same two sentences back to back on, on yeah, you gotta, one another. You got to clarify to yourself. which is I, I suppose. I mean, I'm not going to listen to it ever again. And Gumpy won't clip it. I'll clip sure. it after because, I, I mean, I'm going to. Don't, don't clip it. You shouldn't. I'm going to clip it. <laughs> I you didn't will. say that, but not a great oh, idea. Thank you, Darius. It I appreciate it. AI just was finally, AI truth. was not accurate. We got a truth on that. here. AI was not What well, you said was worse. True. Yeah, just bet. Oh, fuck. Was, are these universe balls? Yeah. Oh, okay. And the first one was an air ball, didn't even hit the backboard. Okay. Well, I was aiming for the hoop. I wasn't going for the bang. Oh, oh neither near to that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like hard. I did you a guys lot are arms. right. You guys are right. I did a lot of arms F earlier. Football gods. You guys are right. Okay. Hey, listen, I don't know if you want to do that. I mean, because I didn't know that's what was all. Oh. First of all, I hit one on this hoop yesterday. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh on the fourth uh -oh. one. On the fourth uh -oh. one. Uh -oh. Hey, oh. You were talking Please. a lot of. That's, just, uh -oh. that's justification for me. The fourth shot, okay. All right. Let's wrap, uh, let's wrap up some stuff that we haven't chatted with uh, AJ Hawk about. Uh, I wonder how Dick Good would have handled that. Would he have had to censor Conman in there if that was ESPN? I think so, yeah. I think he would have just done a double two to yep. that full 10 seconds so you can't catch the beginning, middle, or end of what he was putting out of his mouth at that particular time. Cool. Ah, oh, man, I want to say something no. terrible, but you know <laughs> what? I won't. There's no reason to do that. Happy, so to, hear, happy to hear you're not doing that. Uh, speaking of saying something terrible, John Kraft and Bob Kraft, have you seen this? Lip readers all around the internet have told us that John Kraft, the bald one, the son of the other one, said, I know we have to watch this. We're just not good enough, is what the lip readers are telling us. Now, he might have been talking about a movie or a play that they have to go to later. Yeah. Sure. We're not 100% sure, but they were certainly in a Patriots game. And right there, we're not good enough, he says at the bottom. They understand the situation. It's very real. And, you know, Internet sleuths are going to find anything to maybe paint a picture that they want to see. But, like, they're saying Bill Belichick getting kicked out of New England, AJ. And we Who's they, though? Who is they, for real? Like, is it a real – con man, no, like, is that a real thing, Boston people? I understand – they're not happy with it, but they really think they're going to fire him. He's going to go take another job. That's real deal, right? Very, very real. Like, I, I have mm. gotten into arguments with people that, wow. you know, I kind of relay to. Like, hey, what is the vibe up in New England? What is the vibe in the stadium? And there are a lot of people who are just kind of sick of the shit with Bill of Fuel, and it doesn't help with, like, McDaniel and MCDC and these other guys who are coming in who are like a new era of head coach and everyone seeing their success and that doesn't you know bode well. And the offenses, bingo, yeah, like the how much different the game is because like absolutely the the Belichick way and how good the Patriots were, it feels like at least the vibe from the fans and you know watching like they're still trying to do what they did with Brady now and you just can't do that. Like, you have to change somehow. And then, yeah, like Tyreek Hill and the Dolphins come in. The Bills have run the division for a little bit. I mean, the Jets, like, uh, granted, they're one of our two wins. But looking at what the Jets will be with Aaron, like, people just aren't – they're done with it. And the other part of it, too, is, like, Mac Jones, great, but he doesn't have what the other quarterbacks have. And that is, you know – What's that? The, the, the ability to just make plays no matter what. And granted, not all quarterbacks can do that, but – there's two of them, three of them when Aaron's healthy in the division. And you see Mahomes and Herbert and Lamar and Burrow and Trevor Lawrence now. Like Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett. There are Pickett. so many guys in the AFC. Like No one thinks that Mac Jones is going to be able to kind of take us to the promise. Would you guys line. take Kenny Pickett right now? Absolutely not. <gasps> oh, you just said Kenny Pickett. Whoa. No, I didn't. But Russell that. Wilson. You, you guys said that. We're doing this again with the Coyotes. You guys fucking said that. You did say it, but we kind of forced you into it in a mid-sentence. It was kind of uh, – I, I, was if I said something that made it seem like I was addressing that statement and saying yes, I was not. Okay, all right. Well, we agree. That's why we added it in there. But you're right. If you're on a team in the, in the AFC, the next ten years are very good. Yeah. So if your goal or dream is to win a Super Bowl, you have to look at your coach and say, "Can this coach win a Super Bowl for us?" For instance, in Indianapolis, I'm looking at Shane Steichen. I'm like, "Yeah, I think Shane Steichen can," for sure. because yep. the amount of points they've been able to score, and also all the stories I'm hearing about behind the scenes. Now, I don't know if the roster is ever going to get to a point that it'll be able to go win a Super Bowl if it'll be contenders, but I have belief that the coach will be able to do that. There's a lot of teams looking around. They're like, "I don't think this coach." 
could go in a Super Bowl. And now he's saying that people in New England are saying Bill can't do it either. That's oh, yeah. wild hey. to think about. Peyton Manning got cut, though, from yeah, the yeah. Indianapolis Colts. That's fair. It's the roster, and obviously that starts with the quarterback. And you, you're talking about the Colts. Shit, you look at the AFC South right now. Obviously, Levis is only two games in, but he looks great. I think he got named the starter officially. Yep. Over forward. Tannehill. Over Tannehill. You got C.J. Stroud watching his tape. He's Pretty got good. some of the most unbelievable tape I've seen. Rookie or just NFL quarterback. Up period. for a midi tomorrow. Up for a midi. Ooh. We got uh, Anthony Richardson. Obviously, haven't seen enough of him, but we believe in, in Shane and what's going on there. And then Trevor Lawrence and, uh, you know, Doug Peterson, what they got going on in Jacksonville. So even just yeah. this division – and you would think coming into the year with the AFC South, or even last year before the draft, like, you know, this was a, a foregone, a way afterthought. But oh, now, yeah. so yeah, it's tough for, for New England up there for sure. Bro. How about Bob and John, though? What do you make of that? Them saying it's not good enough. They're judging yeah, I mean, his general managerness. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I would believe it. Yeah, I believe it. Why, you know, I'm sure they could say it. They've, they've seen some great football for a long time, so they understand what it is. But is it possible, though, Belichick doesn't move on, doesn't get fired, and he – Someone that comes over and takes over the roster and the GM whole situation, he's just the head coach. So that was brought up, I believe, in the first hour yep. uh, after we were talking about Connor Stallions. Mm -hmm. I believe it was brought up in the first hour. And how, how, do you, how do you see that working? I don't see that working. Me no. neither. Like, in theory... Would someone from the outside come in too? Like, what if they're like, "Hey, we're gonna bring some, we're gonna get some fresh blood in here, some new, some new eyes, and somebody that has no connections with Bill or the Patriots"? Like, would that, that ever happen? Never. No. But even like, even if Bill comes out and says, "Yeah, this will be able to work," it won't. This guy's seventy. What? Seventy-two. How long's he been doing the GM and head coaching role? Since two thousand. So is that 23 years? Yeah. He's his team. Uh, this is this is who's playing. I'm negotiating the deals. I'm deciding how much this guy's paid because that means a lot. Like how much everybody gets paid means a lot to the hierarchy of this team. I'm deciding what type of team we're going to have. And then just to say, you know what? Yeah, you're not doing it anymore. You're just going to coach. In theory, sounds good because you less work. Maybe you focus in on something you've always been really good at and everything. But just how's Bill – just at his age, just be like, yeah, this other human's right. I don't know. I don't know and, how that's going to go. Before that, he was with Parcells, right, who was the, the king of the, if you're going to have me cook the meal, let me shop the groceries. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know that's how. Bill's blood. So yeah. if it's like Steve Belichick or like Matt Patricia, maybe, I guess, which they had in a suit on draft night, yeah. he's out of the facility at this standpoint, though. It's like. I don't know who that person is. Maybe they bring try to bring back Casario. No, it's uh, Casario's trying to build his own right yeah, now. For bring sure, back Ernie. It is. Even if that's and they are building something special. I don't know how it works. I don't. I just don't know how he. Even, is. If, even if that's Broach too, wouldn't he just? <laughs> son of a bitch. Wouldn't he just step down? Because one of these other openings, like Washington, would let him be the head coach and the GM. Like any of these places would gladly let Bill do both. Like if if they even did say, hey. We want you to do one or the other. Wouldn't don't you think he'd just be like, you know what, fuck it. No, I, I won't. I'm That's what I'm saying. I don't know how he just says, Yeah, you're right. Honestly. It it is strictly if it's Michael Lombardi. Like I and I'm that isn't like a joke. I'm being dead serious. And fans in New England, the last thing they remember about Michael Lombardi is him telling Bill Belichick to draft Nikhil Harry. So if they do do Lombardi, there will be a lot of pissed off people in New England. But I assume what you guys are saying, like if if they were to broach this idea, he would just resign and go do it somewhere else. Washington, no fucking way. But he would find a place <laughs> where he would want to go. Okay, so this is going to sound stupid because we're talking about Bill Belichick. What the Bengals fans said it's going to sound stupid because you're saying it. I heard him. A lot of fans say that. No, no, just Bengals fans today. I respect that. I don't believe him, by the way. Neither does Ty. No, not at, at all. Boys. Connor doesn't think that either. No. AJ? I believe in tone. d -butt? Believe in tone. Okay, good. That means a lot from everybody. You're welcome. Would franchises still want that from Bill to be GM and coach? Brand yes. new ownership in Washington? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. That's why I, you know, I figured so it was. So you make a hire in Washington. You got to hire a GM and a head coach. If you have the capability to hire the greatest of all time, you can at least sell to your fan base. Oh, yeah. That we're going to get the best. And even if it doesn't work, like four years down the road, they can say, well, how do we know? Well, We're doing work. everything we can. We're obviously doing everything we can to put a great product on the field. And that's all fans want. That's all they. I think they they want to make sure. Hey, you care about this team if you're the owner. Could you imagine this fucking guy head coaching somewhere else? At yeah. This what age? if he goes no to Michigan? What if he goes to Michigan next no. year? No. College. <laughs> okay. 
He could be. What do you think, Harbaugh's? You want to- Tom comes in, Tom calls plays for him, you know, gets back to the old stomping grounds. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man's name that was just mentioned, Paisano, a friend of the program. He's an author, a TED Talker, right. an email newsletter writer. He's also a former consultant and advisor for the New England Patriots Super Bowl champion, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Hey, boy, Lombo. Lombo. Hello, Pat. Hello, Pat. How are you? Lomba, where are you, pal? I'm in San Antonio. I just uh, had a book fair that was yes. kind of good. So I'm headed back to Philadelphia. <laughs> it's all good. Life is good. Hell you yeah. Know, I can't hey, well, we are very thankful that you could join us. And shout out to that lady right behind you. She's going to she's gonna hear a great conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah, let me do that. I'll do that. She's a little advertisement for jewelry. She looks it's a good reminder of what we got to do for Christmas. It's a good reminder what I got to do for Christmas, right? Hey, amen. We all need to do that. Uh, let's, let's real quickly, I want to catch you up on everything. There's rumors swirling that maybe Bill Belichick will end up being a head coach somewhere else. Then that leads to a conversation about, no, he's going to stay at New England. He's going to be the head coach. He's not going to be a GM. In theory, that sounds good. There's no way in hell Bill Belichick will stay at New England and a new GM will be brought in unless it's a guy like you, right? Like, how would that work and could it ever work? Well, I was there once. I mean, you know, but I think my days have passed there. I mean, look, he's, you know, for he's having a bad season. They're not a good team. For a lot of reasons. It's just not one person, right? It's just not one thing. There's a lot of things going on, injury, you know, no excuses. But I can't imagine that any general manager is going to have enough conviction of the heart to be able to walk into Bill's office and say, here's what I want to do with the program. <laughs> like, the program's been built. It's been successful with a, for a lot of different reasons. And so because of that, I think they're ultimately going to, you know, how do you take all that authority away from him? I don't understand how you do that. Yeah, me neither. They're, they're talking about it, though, as if it's a real thing. He's 23 years he's been there doing I don't know how you would – how would that would work. So then you would just assume that if they wanted to move on, he would have to go somewhere else. Would he coach somewhere else still? I think he's co – look, everybody thinks he's lost his fastball. I disagree. He works harder than any coach I've ever known. He's still on top of everything. He understands the salary cap all the way through. Hey, look, one of the things I think the Patriot people lose, they're going to have over $100 million of cap room next year. Plus, the other thing is, Pat, is they haven't spent any money. I mean, they're one of the lowest payrolls in the league because of what's happened in the past. So, yeah, I mean, he can manage the cap. He understands value. Look, everybody could take a shot because he's down right now. I think he's one of the greatest coaches of all time. And whoever, if he goes somewhere else or if he stays, they're going to be very happy. Oh, if he goes somewhere else. Okay, so Lombo thinks that that is a possibility. That's crazy for us to think about. AJ has a question for you. Yeah, Lombo, is that like is that a real thing? You feel like if for some reason he's not in New England, he's not coaching the Patriots, would he be open to other jobs out there in the NFL, you think? And would he want the GM role as well? Yeah. Well, I, I think, look, I can't speak for Bill. I can only speak for what he does and what he brings to an organization. And, you know, it, it isn't that he doesn't know what he's doing. If the Kraft family, and I can't speak for them either, they certainly have to make their own decisions. But if they feel they could find somebody to change the tenor or change that, they could do that. But I just feel the urgency in terms of when I have conversation. Bill's on top of it. I mean, he's at the top of this game. Why would he stop? It's like Pete Carroll. These guys, even though they're older, they're still doing unbelievable things with their teams. And, yeah, Pete had a bad year. So is Bill. But that's life in the, that's life in the NFL. So you think he would want to do GM uh, roles as well? I, I think Bill is all about winning, and I think if it were the right situation, I'm sure Bill would probably want to do whatever. But one thing I think people misconstrue about Bill, Bill's not a dictator. I mean, he's not down. He's not Fidel Castro. He's not running the country down there, right? You know? Like, like, Bill takes input. Bill listens. Bill's one of the best listeners. And Bill takes advice. I mean, this is what's the biggest misnomer. Like, I, you can have open conversations. You ask Nick Saban on Thursday. Nick will tell you, Bill's one of the greatest listeners of all time. So this idea that he has to have all the authority. No, what Bill wants more than anything is the ability to control the culture. That's more important to Bill than having all the authority. Got it. We appreciate the hell out of you. Safe travels, okay? Make sure you get to hey, watch some jewelry. Pat. I love you guys. Thanks. You're the best. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm playing now. Hey, he is hopping on a plane. A couple people got a show there. So he didn't close the door on him coaching somewhere else. No. Because he knows the business or because he knows Bill? That's the question now. Yeah. yeah. Kinda gotta, kinda. I, I think it's because he knows Bill. And we talked about this with Belichick and Brady when he left like 
two of the most competitive guys that have ever played. Obviously, they're both going to want to win on their own. He wants the record. Like, he is going to coach until he has the NFL all-time record. That's the bottom line, I feel like. No matter what, that's happening, and he'll get it here or he'll get it in a different place. That'd be crazy. It would be nuts. It'd be suck. It sucks we got Steichen just this year. <laughs> Why couldn't we do that? We can ball? trade. It'd be cool for Bill. It'd be like a player. You know how a lot of times a player gets to a new place and it's like a Fresh. new, yeah. hey, I'm restarting. Here we go. I'm re-energized. Like, it'd be probably pretty cool for him eventually. Think about the media, too. Yeah. The media, this is their first year with him. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Not the 20th year with him of him right. just being the way he is. I assume yeah. that'll provide. Turn into MCDC, though. What if all of a sudden he's like, <laughs> new, new team, new Bill, and he's like MCDC? Yeah, what, if, what if he's giving full lectures? Like, they ask about, what's the health on uh, this player next week? He goes, let me tell you about the sprained ankle. So there was a yeah. time in 1999 <laughs> where we didn't even know what a full sprained ankle. What if he, instead of like the, yep. we will keep it updated on the, uh, the medical report. <laughs> We're onto this. What if he did just flip the script completely? That'd be awesome. What if he just wanted suit, yeah. tie, yeah. Mm-hmm. looked yes. good, every, properly, uh-huh. yep. hair perfect? That'd be cool because when Gronk left, he flipped the script and it was sick. So if if Bill leaves and does what? that, it would be What are you awesome. talking about? What does that mean? What does that when, mean? when Gronk left, we got way more of Gronky, and I freaking love that. So if Bill were to do that and we were to get – Going to get the Gronk Doesn't version of like Bill. Sincere. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about whenever guys retire. They are no, no. When when Gronk went to Tampa, what, what do we mean? He, he, what do you mean he let Gronk. his personality out a little bit? That's what, what I mean. Saying? Yeah, we got more. No, nah, but we knew Gronk before. Yeah, we did not. We did not have Tommy and Gronky beach chair talk. We did not have that for a fact. That was sweet. Yeah, we it d- makes you wonder about the social team up there. We should have been coming up with a little bit more yeah. ideas. Think about all the characters <laughs> that have been on that roster. Exactly. Oh, no. You know what I mean? You think it's you think Bill's running social media too? No, I'm saying to get that out of Bill to get Gronky Bill. If Bill were to leave, what that if would Bill be a has a social Social media show every week. Probably he does. Next. He he does the he, he does it with the New England social team every week. What if he goes out? Really? Was that when he draws Bill's breakdown? Yeah. 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 Very good. Sick. Right? yeah, it's awesome. I love that. What if he goes the next place? He's laughing, having fun, has the new hat, and he's yep. like, "This is all Crafts rules, everybody." Throws yeah. beard, <laughs> bleaches his hair blonde. Yeah, it'd be sweet. This Craft guy's the miserable one. Yeah. Everybody's blaming me this whole time. I'm just <laughs> this is the guy that's been doing it all, firing people early. Yeah, that's him. This is me. Okay, I got a suit on. I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you. I love this. Kraft used to threaten to kill me if I said anything to the media. After. <laughs> <laughs> grow, uh, that, grow that Vince McMahon mustache. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Oh, that Vince stash. Pretty good. Yeah. Very good. Get that hair, too. Which hair? Jet black. That's natural. Yeah. That's what I mean. Get that hair, Bill. Do you see how much? Dom Capers? It matches. Oh, yeah. Dom, yeah. Perfectly. It does. Mm-hmm. He, he needs to get the flavor saver in there so we can get the full. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Ursa needs to take French notes. aristocrat. I, I would yeah. say Vince and mm-hmm. Jim are like the same person, just 30 years apart, but look the same. <laughs> what the hell? Are they 30 years apart? I think so. Oh, they're like 15 years apart. Jim Ursa was dancing with the boys yeah. yesterday, dancing. two days ago. Dancing. Yeah, I saw a lot of people saying that ain't dancing. What were they saying? They were saying, that guy isn't dancing. He's off the yurks, is what people were saying. <laughs> I don't know what Jeez. that means. What is that? I don't know what, what you that mean? means. Yurks is what people are calling perks these days, I guess. Nah, Jim ain't doing that. This is the cleanest Jim's been, baby. Mm-hmm. Jim's yeah. living his best life. Got grandkids. I'm happy to see him having a good time. There was a time where he'd come in the locker room, just kind of sit there, and then keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Now he's dancing to Meek Mill in the middle of all the boys. Shane Steichen. Yeah. Look at this. Shane Steichen. How many owners Last year, this? not... None. Right? Last year he Holding James Fingy. The bat on the table, we will rock you. That was that sick. That was awesome. Yeah, he's one of the greatest content yes. creators of all time. What about the yeah. circle, right? What about the circle he put outside the locker room? That's the circle It's a right quote. There. Well, it's a quote. Perfect yeah. example right there. Perfect quote. Put the video back up. You don't have to play it. Uh, get to the end. Hell yeah. Can't. Look at the circle. There's, there's a circle. circle yeah. There's a circle. Yeah. There's a cir- right. it's a circle. It's a circle. Look, circle. Yep. Circle, just like the quote he has right outside the locker room. Wow. I'm right. Wow. You don't he think that guy that. knows football? You think he might change the logo because the horseshoe's open? Kind of a good idea. Close it on he closes it. Puts like a title at the, at the top across yeah, yeah. it. Indy or something. Those Coats fans would get pissed off. Bill McComas and them will not be happy <laughs> yeah, about right. changing that logo. They'll forget it a week What later. was Miles Garrett talking? Did you see it? Son of a... Did you see what he said? He said yeah, these he, weren't good. He said they're mine. He didn't love it. <laughs> he he just, said yeah. they're mine. <laughs> that yeah. was awesome. <laughs> it's kind of scary listening to him talk. Like he's so matter of fact about like yeah, 
I'm going to dominate everybody. Yeah, those jerseys are mine. That's when you see those jerseys, you think of me. It's like, all right, Miles, cool, man. Kind of. Hey, yeah. <laughs> kind of do actually think of him now. He's at his goal, too. He was asked, and he said, yeah, I like going into away stadiums and just kind of mm-hmm. – that's stealing – noise from 50,000 people yeah. at the same time is yep. just awesome. It's like, this guy has the right mentality. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. I think this guy has it figured out for a long time. Please say, I, I don't need to talk. I'm a quiet storm. Guys know when I line up yeah. against them, it's their ass. <laughs> How about him doing it? He said he was doing this in mm-hmm. practice. He was just doing it in practice. One of the guys to know, like, this ain't just... You know, this ain't just whenever it doesn't matter time. It's like, bro, real game doing that. Hopping over people. He's a specimen. Did you see his office? Jeez. Sweet. Was that a big dinosaur situation on the wall? Yeah, T Rex. Not a situation, though. I mean, was it a uh, poster? Or a, what was no, that? No, it was an wa- actual yeah, dinosaur. replica. Wall yeah. art. Oh, replica. Real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like The Rock. The Rock had a real dinosaur behind him at one point. Bingo. There's only thing? like three of them or whatever. In mm-hmm. the world. And Wiles had one. Replica? Is that what I, you just said? I think that was a replica. I think no. T Rex from Jurassic Park that he had in his office. With an actual dinosaur. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think this, you had. I think this you had. This goes in. It was a real dinosaur. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's in. Yeah, it is. Yep. Oh, oh bonus ball though. Came ball, right back. Yep. Universe. Shit. I think. All right. Had, so it might be a fake dinosaur. No, no. Well, he, he had Spielberg come in and he did it with him. Spielberg's making fake dinosaurs. Um, yeah. What? Are, no. Yeah. What were the other stuff? What was the other stuff, Zito? The Rudo. Z- it was a lot of cartoon stuff, uh, like that. Uh, Dragon Ball Z was up there. Uh, you know, I'm looking Bill, at what anime? was all that stuff? Anime? There's your guy. Bill, what was all that stuff? Can we pull it up? Bill, what is all this? Come here, Bill. Bill? Bill. Is this your, is this your thing, Bill? First one, Bill Comics. Oh, don't Bill. do that, Bill. Bill. You're, not, you're nowhere do near not the microphone. Do that. I have no idea what, what you're talking about. What do you do? What happens? Okay, Bill. what's the 10%? Bill. I think there's a little bit of My Hero Academia. Where's that at? What is that? What is that? Anime. Where is it at? Just classic anime. Uh, I have no idea. There's just people in the chat that were saying it. Uh, oh, okay. stolen. Look at those little heads above him. His left shoulder, like the first row over his left shoulder. A lot of people collect like those. They're called peeps, I thought. Yeah, Ty has one, yeah. actually, a Dale right there, the Intimidator. That's the same uh, oh, thing. Oh, nice. What is that, Funko? Yeah, yeah, fun- uh, yeah. F- 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 Funko Pop. I've heard there of Funko because WWE has those. Yes, mm-hmm. bingo. Th- those are collectible, though? Those are... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. And get them autographed by the... If you yep. could, I wonder. Yeah, yeah you get those people. Those guys will go autograph you. Run into them. Is that so? Naruto's going to autograph one of these things. Who, yeah. who's you see the, him? the the actor maybe who plays it. I mean, that's. I, it looks like he's got a slash right above his head to a right. Yeah, that does. looks like slash. So you can get slash. It is a sick, sick cabinet setup. Yeah. yeah, that's a record player too. Bottom right. That's an old mm-hmm. school record player. So he's probably got a bunch of vinyl. And let's go to the when he turned the other way when he set up all the uh, comics and shit. I mean, it was. Oh, yeah, there a, it is. That's, that's a real. replica. Oh, oh it's boy. replica. Huh? Yeah. No, I don't know. I think that might be real. It's yeah. Still with the skin on and where's, everything. Where's the raptor at? Looks like he's... I think it's dying. You can't see it. Is it in a mall? Oh, the, no, there's there the raptor. Is. Boom. Yeah. It's a miniature T-Rex. It's not miniature. Not miniature. It's a mall. I, You're right. He's just very there. big. Those You're lines right. on its back, right. too. I think he has the actual <laughs> skeleton bones. Now let's go mm-hmm. to the other side here. Wow. That's a brand new hat he's wearing, I see. Oh, look at that guy top right. What's that scary creature right there? Is that a dragon? Oh, that looks like uh, a Demogorgon Death. from, uh, Stranger, from Things. Stranger Things. That might a be a gremlin. Is that a predator? Yeah, yeah that looks yep. like AVP. So is he just, what is that one on the left with the sweet hair with the red pants in the middle of a kick? I think that that is, is that Goku. That's Goku from Dragon Ball Z. You called Z. that earlier. Yeah. 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 Oh, we had a friend named Goku growing up. Yeah. I, I, I did not until this moment. His real name? Mm-hmm. It's probably a good call. That is what he looked like, actually. Yeah. No, his name was Chris. Called him Goku. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh, he's got the barn doors. That's nice cool. hat. Nice. Good play. And then all those. Oh, nice. That's a great office, oh, dude. Yeah. Oscar is a great yeah. office. And a well, remember his yard? Roof. Remember his yard at Halloween? Yeah, we didn't even get into the Halloween talk, but we did get a chance to chat about his partnership with Municipal, and then Connor got to showcase his flexibility. He has those Municipal shoes on right now from Mark nice. Wahlberg. Nice. Big deal. Hey, they're really nice shoes. Legit. Really they nice shoes. Are. I see Wahlberg wearing them. He works out at 3 a.m. every day. He wears those. Yep. Yeah, his stuff pops up all the time. He's always pubbing his shoes, always talking about them. They look very comfortable. He The shoes, the Municipal, and then, like, what, his prayer app. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Car dealership. Mm-hmm. Everywhere, yeah. Wall burgers, burgers. Whataburger. Yeah. I always see the prayer app, though. What about Whataburger's here? Yeah. Nah, nah Wahlburger. Oh, Wahlburger. Mark yeah, Wahlburger. Same oh, thing. Okay. I think drama runs it. 
Really? Um, uh, he did, I yeah, Donnie. Exactly sure, if that's correct. No, no, Donnie Wahlberg. I believe his brother, not drama. Yeah, no, his brother runs. Yeah, but it. That's what he was saying. Not you related get to drama, was, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. Drama yeah. Donnie's the Oh, aren't Donnie you guys all so smart? You asshole. I'm actually smarter than you guys. I watched the reality show back in the day. It's not Donnie. Donnie's still performing and selling out arenas. Yeah, because he's out there with Backstreet Boys and such. Is that the group? Donnie? No, he's with the new kids on the block, but they're that's doing right. they do a boy TV. band tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where they were selling out, I think he sold out Indy. I believe they yeah. did. I'm like, yeah, these motherfuckers everywhere. were selling out arenas at mm -hmm. the age of 60. Oh, yeah. yeah. Justin Timberlake got cooked on the internet for some dance moves he showcased. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, and he said, old oh, JT lost it. No, he said, old oh, JT no. lost it. No. That'd be the no first way. time. That's what they said. He said it. And then I guess there was a book, too, that said some stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, JT's in the spot right now. He's just golfing. Yeah, that yeah. book didn't help. He needs to put social well, media aside, you know. I don't know if we can trust that book. We see the videos that it's are fair. coming out from the author. So? It's it's good at dancing. A, a lot of alleged things coming out, I guess, is what we should say. We have no idea what the truth is. Didn't know the truth back then, though. I think is what we're also learning. Yes. And although that was 20 years ago. I just don't know how her memory is right now. He talks pretty We cool. understand what you're saying. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We understand. But we just like everybody to be happy. Yeah. That is an interesting awesome. scene, though. That is an interesting scene. What's going on? Yeah, like people have come full circle to the point, like the people who were wanting the conservatorship or whatever the word is, wanted that thing gone. It's come all the way back around where they're like, I think we fucked up. <laughs> That's what at least people are saying on the. You guys have no idea. Unless you're like our age, you have no clue. Britney Spears came in like yeah. an actual wrecking ball. Original yeah. Taylor. And then Christina Aguilera. She was original yep. Taylor. It was real. She was everywhere. She was huge. And then in sync, obviously, Backstreet mm -hmm. Boys. And then now to kind of watch it all unfold, it was like, I was all, it's Britney, bitch. Yeah. Let yeah. her live. For sure. Toxic. And then now when she makes her way into my algo, it's like, Brittany, what are we doing? What yeah. happened, Brittany? Going to the Catholic school. <laughs> having fun. Hit me, baby, one more time video. Let's Ooh. just say that influenced how a lot of people were dressing in Catholic schools. And I don't think oh, the institutions hilarious. were necessarily uh, too excited about that. That was Catholic school, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now that I think about it. Now Ice Spice is telling people what to do, too. And that's not much better in Catholic school. So I heard uh, I see that, that's this generation. What, who's. Uh... She had her cakes out in the concert. Yeah. She what's did. Did. Yeah. All right. She's dressed as Betty Boop. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. Didn't know that. Who's this little little wagyu? Yeah, little Mabu. Mabu? There it is. He popped into my. <laughs> That's uh, Mitt's favorite. Yeah, Mabu. That's Bruce's favorite artist. Wagyu. Uh -huh. Little wagyu. I thought That's I knew it was name. something. That's a better name. W a g u, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's little Mabu. Yeah, like Malbu. He popped into my algorithm a couple times. I'll tell you what, this guy goes hard. That's Mitt's guy. He's, well, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mitt rides for Mabu. Yeah. Dude, got <laughs> a Mabu shirt on yesterday. Did he really? I didn't, he's popping right now. He just caught up to the show. Hey, Mitt, we need to, who's my boo, dude? This guy. Yeah, he's he goes very hard. He's a menace. Yeah. He, 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 he he's sleeping with Chris Krishan Rock, I believe is the name of it. And Chris Rock? No, <laughs> not Chris Rock. Krishan Rock. I hey, my. Hey, Ma, hey, what? Who is this? Who, how long has little Ma Boo been doing it? He's going back here, I think. I just he's saw him slither. It's a rapper. Why do you go back? Like there? The it's a rapper, around? yeah, dude. And he actually, what I, the thing that popped into my algo was he said, I actually recorded this in my dorm room. And then he was like, fly your girl out to New York and sign her tits. And I'm like, what is this? Yeah. What is this? I did, I did not expect the Wagyu to sound yeah. how he sounded. No, I, was, I was gobsmacked, yeah. as Pete Thamel would say, yeah. about what was happening. Mid, how long has this Mabu been uh, mobbing? Uh, I don't really know. This is oh, not my man. guy. This is Bruce's just, guy. Just a lie. This is a, a bold This is something Bruce. that actually Nick did find on the internet and then showed to me. Uh, and I guess he's making he's making videos with some dude's ex girlfriend. I don't know. It's a bad scene. Right. Well, I, I mean, wouldn't really Bruce. Dive Bruce in. might know then. Bruce? Man, I appreciate yeah. you not being just pointing the finger. The only human that knows these types of things, which is good news for all of us. Uh, Bruce. Yes, sir. You're a big Mabu guy? Uh, How long has this been around, Mabu? Uh, he came on the scene with kind of like a freestyle cypher type thing where he's like underneath, I believe, the Brooklyn Bridge. Going pretty hard, I will he say. He goes very hard. Yep. And then he, this, 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 this what yeah. goes very hard. Yes, he yep. does. He's like a private school kid from Manhattan, I believe. And uh, this recent thing with Blueface, uh, that was a little bit of a bridge. 
bridge too far, might be getting a little above his skis. But he did decide to go to college. He was going to forego college after graduating from high school. Nice. Oh, okay. uh, but now he is Where's in, he going? enrolled in college. College will always be there. I don't know. Mobile, right? I had to yep. guess Marist. And maybe okay. NYU. All right. Well, thank you for the heads up on who Mabu is. That came into my algorithm. I was yesterday, literally yesterday, just learned of this. Mm -hmm. Get off the tracks. Mabu's Mabu's coming. coming. Yeah. <laughs> get your ass out of the fucking way. Friday will be in Athens. Speaking of get off the tracks, <laughs> what's that coming down the track? It's me, machine of the red and black. Gonna have to learn the rest of that. Hopefully for Friday, but definitely for college game day on Saturday. Big weekend as Ole Miss goes in there, Tone. Oh, yeah, that'll be. Um, I'm excited to see if Ole Miss can stop Georgia because I, you know, I think Georgia can get some stops. But that's always that's always the case against these teams like LSU, Bama last week. Can LSU get some stops? They couldn't. You know, that's kind of how it is. Penn State, Michigan, that's going to be huge, you, A.J. Yeah. Hawk. Could you imagine Penn State wins this game? Now, I, I know where all the other discussion is about everything happening around the Michigan football team, and I could assume that could galvanize the boys in the locker room, but Penn State at home at night? I'd assume, right? I'd assume it is white out. Is AQ Shipley speaking to the team before? I could. <laughs> it's a. Uh, we need that. Yep. It's actually it's a noon game because remember it's November. They're oh not, fuck! Uh, yeah, that's they're not ridiculous. Allowed to do it. Not Bob literally just games. told us. That's ridiculous because mm. of uh, the snow. Travel. Yeah. yeah. That's an old school Big Ten rule. I believe you guys made it a long time ago. This is for AQ. Tough place to get to. AQ. Hey, we're live. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Can't have a night game because it's November. You can't have a whiteout for Michigan coming to town. It's the best the team's been in a long time. Not going to use your best weapon, which is the fan base. And a, oh, 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 Whiteout's the only chance we have. Can you do a day night or a day whiteout? All right. You bald fuck. What if they? What if you win? If we win, Penn State's back. Okay. If you lose, it's another ten and two season, like it is every other year. All right. Well, don't give up hope. All right. Have a good, good day, bro. pal. Yeah, it's a shame. Ten and two, tough yeah, day. Yeah. yeah, can never make it to the Big Ten championship though. Yeah, sucks. Can never play for anything other than maybe Gary Bowl. That's right. That's a tough spot to be. Next year though, no divisions, right? Correct. Ooh, that'll be interesting. It's gonna be a big deal for teams like Penn State, Murderers Row, and for teams like Iowa. Well, it's gonna be just fine. Who's Iowa got this weekend? Anybody? Uh, yeah, expect fireworks in Iowa City at Kinnick. They got Rutgers coming into town. I believe it is the lowest over under in the history of college football. What is it? Not. I think it's twenty eight. I believe twenty seven. There's no half. way they get to twenty eight. No, 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 no. I think it was twenty seven and a half. Maybe at maybe one point, whenever I saw it first reported, uh -huh. and it's like, okay, two touchdowns, both these teams. No way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no way. Not a chance. Uh, but Shiano is ready to fire around out there. You watch this Iowa team play football ever? No. Smart. No. It's like last I night's game defense. with the Jets, just yeah. watching it. It's better than you, Con. Yeah. That's the thing, though, is Iowa wins. It's fair. Fair Jets point. Don't. So, you know, I, I mean, again, everyone can laugh. They can say whatever <laughs> the fuck they want. But we'll see you guys in Indy at the Big Ten Championship. And how do you and, feel it's going to go? Well, they get their asses kicked for sure, but it's the one time I'll get to see my Hawks in person. So uh, they just they really can't. What do you do? You have a couple me. drinks, a couple pops while you're uh, watching this? A couple. Up? If, if Iowa makes it to the Big Ten Championship, I'll drink 100 beers. What? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Okay. 28 and a half now. 29 and a half on one book. Going up. Let's oh, go. Let's over. let that get to 30. Over? AJ? Deacon Hill did say. This hey, thing might be a shootout. The offense is getting better <laughs> week after week. We're getting better week True. after week. And he True. would know. I mean, he's, you know, completing 41% of clips. So, you know. <laughs> they scored last week 10. Pretty good. Uh, they scored 10, but they... You know, had had a pick in the red zone, which you can't do when you don't ever fucking score points. And they missed a 50-yard field goal. So they should have won 20-7 to last week. Had to settle for, you know, 10-7. But, again, no one was talking about the blustery wins in Wrigley, you know. How about the turf? I saw them trying to fix that. Yeah, it was a joke. And I know a couple of the guys who were painting the lines, you know, from the Iowa side. And when I saw that, I said, oh, boy, we might be in trouble. <laughs> if they entrusted that guy to do that. 
we might be in trouble. Oh, no. And we almost were, but, you know, they got the job done. Yes, they did. Found a way. Definitely under, though. No <laughs> question <laughs> about it. 29 and a half until further notice. It's just like no, how I yeah, feel about absolutely. Georgia. Georgia's number one in the country until somebody does something that proves that they're not. And when that happens, we will certainly acknowledge mm -hmm. it. Until then, I feel like they're number one. Excited for the CFP top uh, 25 tonight. Yeah. Because yeah. there's going to be movement just because they want to be able to say, well, they didn't play as good as we wanted them. Sure. Mm -hmm. oh, no. mm -hmm. And Bob, well, this team outperformed how we thought they were going to be. Mm -hmm. We moved them from 19 to 18. That's right. It's like that type of stuff is mm -hmm. what I really enjoy mm -hmm. about a committee. You know what I mean, AJ? Really zoning in mm -hmm. and making the critical decisions that nobody else can make, AJ. It's smart. You make something that's not a, a TV program, you make it a primetime program. I get it. Great show. I watch it. Every single, I really love it. Reese yeah. is hosting it, who's our guy, by yeah. the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's beautiful to kind of watch it unfold. Everybody on camera doesn't know what they are until you see them. So you get natural reactions. Mm -hmm. Greg McElroy is a dictionary. <laughs> yeah. That guy's got all, I mean, I, I've never yes. just immediately read through it. He's phenomenal. Joey Galloway, great. Booger, fantastic on there. And then Herbie. Obviously. Bringing it home. Obviously. Herbie does a lot of, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? <laughs> what? What does that mean? And then it's just every, ev literally everything. Mm -hmm. Literally everything is in there. Oh, yeah. It's a phenomenal thing. Speaking of everything being in there, the man's brain that has been sitting up here all day, <laughs> incredible when it comes to football. Oh, oh, yeah. And we are incredibly lucky to get smarter every single week with this segment called Everything DB. Hey, How's the mic? Mic good? Uh, not yet. Mic check, mic check. One, two, three. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Five, six, yeah. yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Let's, go. let's we'll get right to it. Everything DB, week nine. Kenny Moore, most likely your AFC defensive player of the week, unless they give it to Max, who had three sacks. But I think it should go to Kenny. Two pick yeah. sixes in this game. Uh, first time in Colts history. This is a big point in the game. Second quarter, 31 seconds left. Two minute, you're around midfield. So if you're the offense, you're in great position to get some points here. You want to get at least another first down, get in field goal range. Obviously, you want a touchdown. You get a pre-snap motion. Kenny Moore does not bump over with the motion. Good indicator for the offense that it's going to be a zone coverage. It is. It looks like a quarter or some type of quarters. He'll be the quarter flat defender. That means he's going to be relating to number two. It's a running back. That is a nickelback's dream. I got to cover the running back out of the backfield. Quarterbacks get uh, gets a little uncomfortable here. Rookie Bryce Young makes a lazy late pass to the flat. Always a cardinal sin in the NFL. No. Kenny Bye -bye. Moore takes full advantage and then most importantly takes it to the crib. So when you have an offense that was struggling, this one was only put up 200 yards. This obviously helps them out. A big spark. You get points right before the half for the defense in the two-minute drill. Once again, Bryce Young. Under a little bit of pressure, you can throw this one away. Remember the situation. You can even try to scramble. He feels it, throws it away to the flat late. And inside, eyes are already back in great position if you're Kenny Moore and you make him pay. Mm. I don't want to say anything, right? But he could step up to the left for yeah. it's like it's a right. look like it. He could have done a lot of probably about four different things. Uh, that, that's the last <laughs> thing you want to do is, is put that, that throw right there in harm's way. Especially They're saying he has matchup. no chance to be good. Uh, I won't no, say, I'm I saying won't, like right now, because bad O-line, oh, yeah, yeah. yes. bad weapons, mm -hmm. bad everything. And then, and then when you compound it with bad decisions, that's going to make it bad. But, yeah, he's not in a great um, situation right now. Not, not, not surrounded by a bunch of talent or game planning. Uh, Paul Kenny Stevens, Moore, though, great. Yeah, Ken, yeah Kenny Moore. Bounce Congratulations. Back, great, you're having a great, um, great career. Was undrafted coming out, started in New England. Mm -hmm. um, to cut him, I was with We were teammates for maybe two years, but he was always a grinder, wait for his opportunities, got his opportunity, never looked back. Uh, Paulson Adebo, second and 15, second Good and name. long. Uh, what's, what we call him? What's the his bag again? The bag man. The bag man. So, mm -hmm. plays an exciting brand of football. No, he's he makes a agent. Agent Bajan, other people saying that. The Bajan, Bajan of Bajan. change. The bag man, and you say it like the Batman. The bag man. Bag man. Bagman. Right. Well, he'll be on primetime Thursday night. Yeah, Al uh, Michaels, Kirk Curb Street. <coughs> Can't needs, wait. He needs a short week to bounce back because it was three, and a three interception performance against this tough Saints defense. First Cover two, two right here. Yeah, cover two. So you're going to have the middle read, defender opening to the three man side. Kind of like a, we used to call this a dice route. So you're going to have a flat up here, a flat here, receiver in the middle, and then two curls. So usually these are a little bit deeper, so it'll look like a five on the dice. And that's a 
easy should be an easy read for the quarterback. He gets this is one thing that young quarterbacks especially got to learn. If you run it back all the way to the beginning, it looks like it's going to be a four man rush. And just like the one last week, um, that was a touchdown for Will Levis against um, the Falcons, I believe. You got a D lineman who's going to drop out into the coverage. So that's going to be an eight man drop on defense and coverage. So you only have three rushers. And when you do this against veteran quarterbacks, they step up and they find the hole or they give their receivers to kind of run around a little bit and uh, get open. Yes. Tyler does not. You got, you got time. You got time. It's a three man rush. You got plenty of people protecting. Great job from the flat as they cover two corner, reading the quarterback, breaking. Those windows close quickly. Man, that looked NFL. like an easy pick. Yeah. Uh huh. Those windows close quickly. So, two interceptions, um, three pass defenses, and I believe a forced fumble Damn. as well. So, he had a great, great outing against the bag man. Hey, that's some good D. Hey, that's some real good, 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 good D, AJ. You see how good this D is? This is an amazing D right here. I tell oh, you what. Yeah. Yeah. euphoric D. <laughs> Life changing D. <laughs> It is good, D. Is that the first time the first two quarterbacks on everything, DB, are the two quarterbacks who will be playing the primetime game on Thursday? That's good. It's a good teaser for Week 10. Thank you, DB. A a great teaser. Hey, now it is. And also the first time the defenses have been positive on the first two snaps. Yeah, about that. Yeah. You can start with bad D and with good? Yeah. Normally, yeah. yeah. I just want to finish with good D. Good point. Not this time. <laughs> for a good time. Deliver a good D time. early. Yeah. They remember. Really? Exactly. Hey, oh, yeah. Geno Stone. Set the tone. Where'd he go to school? Leading the league <laughs> in interceptions right now. I don't know where he went to school. Oh, he, he went to, to Iowa. School, Who? Right. Yep. Geno Stone. He went to Iowa. Seventh Another round thing. pick at Iowa. Another thing you guys do, win games and you put motherfuckers in the league. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hey, wait till you see next year who they got coming out of that mm. D, uh, secondary. Yeah. That's Cooper. three? Cooper DeGene, baby. He'll be on everything DB next year. In what positions he play? plays cornerback. What? Corner? Yeah. And, and What's a white guy? Cooper Jean oh, from Iowa. Him, and a returner. The first play he makes, he's fucking on this film. I, I love it. that. Yeah, That's you cool. can't wait to put him on bad D, though. Yeah, nah, he won't, nah, nah, he won't nah, be nah, on there. Nah. Also, no big deal, but he uh, he played a little offense last week, too. I mean, he sparked the boys a little bit. Oh. You might want to bet that over. You might want to bet that over. Yeah, you're right. I might change it. If we got what? Yeah. DB. Oh, yeah. Playing on offense, defense, and special teams. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be what? Top 10 pick, they're saying. Not top 10, but probably top top 15, top 20 for sure. What? Mm-hmm. Amazing. Out of athlete. Iowa? Oh, yeah. This guy's running through Dog. oranges. OABCIG is where he went to high school. Oh, really? Yeah, a bunch of little fucking hayseed small towns <laughs> pushed together for a high school. I don't know the names of any of them, but... I uh, watched him play in high school. That, that boy is a he's a player, just star. O A O A B C I G, perennial powerhouse. Wow. Oh, sick, oh, dude! Man. Let's yep. make sure we put him on everything. DB, if he makes plays, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's, that's big. That's, oh, yeah. that's huge. 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 And he beat huge. Michigan State by himself. Sure did. It was awesome. He's done that a couple times over the last couple of years. Uh, speaking of Michigan State getting beat, yeah. Oh boy. Well, uh, we beat Nebraska in football. If that's what you're talking about. No. Big win. Basketball. College basketball is no, back, right? The sport you care no. about. Yeah. Care about. It team, is, D Bud, isn't it? College basketball no. is back. There's a good team out there in James Madison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they're a good basketball they got the good team. Good ball team. I didn't basketball. Yeah. Yes. Good basketball team. It's fourth right. overall in the country, right? No, no, that was Michigan State. Oh. Oh. They were playing. Yeah, the four was on the wrong team, is what everybody's saying about James Madison and Michigan oh. State. Yeah, but those neutral site games are tough. Yeah. Yeah, you're hey, right. Hey, hey. That's the kicker. I've been watching Michigan State basketball my entire life. For a team like James Madison to go into the Breslin Center on the first game of the year and to beat them. Is oh, that was a neutral site? No, fucking it wasn't. What? His name the what? So I thought, so it's starting to go, what is it, February, March, it's April? Well, January. Oh, January, February. February is, is uh, uh, so this one is yeah, September, September, October, October is, is oh no, <laughs> December, <laughs> January, February is oh no. <laughs> I mean, it's starting to happen for you guys, dude. Tom Izzo was 72-0 and 0 at home in yeah. November until last night. Damn. Jeez. And yeah. I, I said we're cursed, but actually this is the football yeah. gods because James Madison football team is undefeated and they're not allowed to play in a bowl game. James so Madison's getting screwed. Yeah. The football team's For, getting screwed. And For, all the other sports time. are beating the hell out of other teams yeah. now. For this guy to sit back here 
and think that the football gods care about college basketball is one of the most egregious. They care about James heard. Madison. That's how powerful that they are. That was so yeah. egregious. For you to sit there oh and not respect God. the football gods and understand how powerful they are. I have a bet. That's unbelievable. I have a bet every single week based on the football gods, you motherfucker. So don't even talk about me not knowing the football well, gods. Well, the team I root for, the Detroit Lions, have been cursed by the football gods ever since I've been born. And finally, they're not because we're good now. Oh, well, in your, th- in your theory, then the Pistons are going to be good too, right? Because the fucking football gods give about. <laughs> Care about that shit. No, because right? the f- football gods had nothing to do with the Pistons, Connor. So why would the football gods do anything with the Pistons or the NBA currently? Or anything with basketball, you cunt. Uh, okay. James Madison as a whole. Jeez. Yeah. In Australia, that's di- much different yeah, than what it, it is. is. That's how yeah. I was saying it. You were saying it's in Australia. Yes. <laughs> Sound like you were getting a little worked up. Little yeah, because like anytime you bring up football gods in the same sentence as basketball, that's, that grinds my gears. Yeah, man. but James Madison potentially getting yeah. blessed by the football yes. gods yes. as a whole. They're Thank being you. blessed by the football gods in football. What the fuck are we talking about? No, here? as a whole. Yeah. No, because no, also not how it the, works. the soccer team no. undef- uh, be, uh, upset under, or sorry, upset number one UCF, mm-hmm. and then I believe uh, one of their other teams just made it to the playoffs. So yeah, the football <coughs> gods are blessing. And then last night cool. they beat Michigan yeah. State in basketball. Okay, yeah. So I think it's just uh, the football gods are doing a little tour, do a celebration yeah. festival. Yeah. Let's not respect any of those James Madison teams who made massive upsets. You're right. Let's just put it on a completely different sports gods. I like that. Okay, so you're saying we need to respect the James Madison teams more. I, I respect the football guys. I don't give a fuck about James Madison. You can, you, <laughs> can, you, can, you, can, you can say whatever you want about them, but do not put football gods in with the James Madison basketball team. Thank All right. you. All right. Hey, listen. Good Lord. Sorry that you yeah, feel disrespected. Yeah. Jesus. I just think that they're so powerful that they're going into other sports. I think you're a dipshit. So, Hey, listen, okay. that's, that's good. That's fine. That's a good part of conversation. That's okay. business, baby. Yeah. Throw it all out there. Did you, hey Pete? Did you expect them to get that worked up uh, about the football? Guy? No, uh, you know I <laughs> cer- certainly didn't think a mask guy like myself would get that you know uh, protruded about the uh, the football gods. But, yeah. but hey, that's that's the way it goes. You know, football gods are they're a mysterious being. You know, they're a mysterious uh, kind of entity. And so I can understand that you know Boston Connor uh, doesn't like when the football gods are being besmirched um, in a situation like that. Great work. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. You bet. Where are the football gods with the Michigan football team? Um, well, people are are saying that you know Connor Stallions actually okay. uh, you know killed the football gods with a sniper rifle from about five hundred <laughs> miles. So how away. do you feel about that, pal? Well, oh, I mean, look, Connor Stallions uh, right. served this country, okay? <laughs> yep. So I'm I, I'm always going to support the troops, my friend. And you can't kill something you can't see. Oh. oh, but you can't feel it. Bingo. Football gods can be felt everywhere, yes. including in a basketball game last night. That's not true. <laughs> Let's go on there. Hey. Sorry about that. Had yeah, to talk hey, about it. Talk Gino about Stone. It. Gino <laughs> Stone. <laughs> Stone. Some of the Iowa? football gods yeah, school? <laughs> have, definitely, <laughs> have definitely been blessed. This defense right here showing a pressure look, all-out pressure look. It's third and four right here. Everybody's up here. Van Noy, Hamilton, everybody's showing pressure, and they're going to drop out. So you're going to see some confusion here by a guy who's been in the league for a long time, Tyler Lockett. So this coverage, we call it like a cover two uh, palm. So it can be cover two or it can go into quarters. And that's going to dictate a lot of times what route this receiver runs. So he's thinking his quarters. He actually rolls up. He's running back to the beginning. 21 actually rolls up. He starts off deep. Then he rolls up and plays it like a cover two. Geno Stone gets back to the half instead of playing a quarter. Geno's, Geno Smith is confused by the coverage. So, Tony, you've been talking about the turnovers to Geno. It's been an issue all year. Continue to be an issue on this blowout win. So you'll see the disguise, the pre-snap disguise. You see the motion. He'll check to it. Okay, they're bringing pressure. What's the pressure check? We got heat. We got heat. We We got got heat. Hey, we're going to this, whatever that is. He don't have to play. Uh Uh-oh. Run it back. He's not on the same page. You see this whole check. Tyler Lockett is looking in. Hey, hey, hey. Whole time. So when he makes this check, that check got to go from him to him to him. This is the furthest guy away from the quarterback. And as you'll see, I don't care how long you've been in the league, if you don't know the play, you don't know the alert, the check. We don't know it. We don't know it. You'll see the confusion in his route. He's expected to go outside to give space to this outbreaker. They're both bad spacing. It's an overthrow. And Geno Smith, you always got to catch the tips and the overthrows. That's how you end up leading the league. And once again, on the money down, second quarter, third and four, big time play in a big time situation. Wow, communication. Communication, Absolutely. big time deal. Always. What are you going to do, you know? Well, he was asking for the damn play. Yeah, I mean, he was. Well, he might not have seen him, though, because he's kind of covered up by the shadows down there. So he, <laughs> he might have forgot that he's out there, actually. Yeah, who's great, in the slot? Is that- great pre-snap. Yeah, you got to get that out there. That's Bobo. 
Bobo. Bobo. Bobo got Is that Bobo? Are you serious? I believe so. I think it's 19. Yeah. Yeah. That's Bobo. It's Bobo. Back oh, I completely missed it. And great execution from this uh, defense once again. Showing something and playing it in good lives. Everybody on the same page. And then right there is, oh, what? Yeah, Where are we? Yeah, he's still confused. Still <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 no, where, what the? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Don't catch yeah. it. Gino playing good football or no? No, whenever you turn the ball over, not good football. Ball is a program regardless of anything else. And um, Tone also mentioned the red zone turnover. This wasn't a red zone turnover, but you got to take care of the football first and foremost. 10 a.m. local time. Speaking yeah. of, she yeah. has nine touchdowns, seven interceptions on the year. Yeah. Much not, different than last year. Not mm -hmm. good enough. Good offense, good weapons. Once again, situation where they're checking, and we had Lou on here, so now you're trying to get some pre-snap information. You know it's going to be a zone coverage. It's going to be cover two. So they're showing single high right now. They're going to rotate to cover two. Cam Taylor Britt, somebody that Lou Anarumo said is not getting enough credit. I believe he might have been. I'm not sure, so I won't say it. But great yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't dog? say yep. it. Oh, 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 so. Well, he's a dog. Right? I tell you that much. And he has been <laughs> nominee, all nominee. year long. <laughs> nominee. I don't know if he'll be in the midi nominee, but this is a great play. Sunday night football, last interception of football Sunday. Once again, great job getting with this receiver, just like that last clip. When that outbreaker is going and a cover two defender, this receiver up here, you have to take an outside release. And Cam Taylor Britt did a great job of, okay, the receiver, he's going to force his way to get outside. I'm just going to open my hips and keep the vision back on the quarterback. Josh Allen felt like he could squeeze this one in there over to his head. He makes a great play again on third and four. So third down, money down. You try to send Cook out there to get some information. Nobody goes with them. Not man coverage. Zone coverage. All right, let's get to the play. We get to the play once again. Josh, I mean, I see where you wanted to go with the ball. You try to fit it in that hole, in that keyhole cover two. You want to hit a hole shot. But Taylor Britt does a great job sinking and making a play on the ball. Jeez. Dog. Yeah. Josh double clutched that too. Yes, he yeah. did. Never Throwing did. two. Throwing to Gabe Davis and trying to get him in a hole shot. That his ninth. He throws, Ooh, bro, he throws a lot of picks, dude. AJ, did you see the double clutch out of Josh? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, that's the thing, though. When you have a monster arm like him and you can make every throw, you think you can make every throw. Mm -hmm. Is this what's starting to happen, maybe? Might be. Second-guessing himself a little bit. Or, I mean, it's a hell of a play in by, by the defense as well. Got a great pre-snap disguise. Eyes on the ball. Mm. If you run it back a little bit right before the snap, it's, it's, it's a great pre-snap disguise and it's great execution. Man, Once again, it's going to be an eight-man, eight people in coverage. You're going to have one, two, three rush. Uh, he's going to drop out, so you're going to have eight in coverage. You got time. He's showing single high, and then they go rotate to split safety, and it's a great job just sinking, playing that high to low. Because, look, if he goes and let's say he say, hey, this is Stephon Diggs in there. Let me break on this. Let me be greedy. That'll be a wide-open uh, hole shot with how uh, far away that safety is. That's a hell of a play. And that was a uh, second and 10 right there. That was not third and four. Uh, Trent McDuffie, get this situation correct. Once again, right before halftime, two minute drill. Second quarter, 47 seconds left. We were probably all up watching this. If you run it back to the beginning on Saturday, um, one of the things we talked about is knowing when this bubble is coming, right? No, understanding the depth. Usually mm -hmm. uh, somebody else, usually that number two receiver is there and he's a little up just like this receiver is. And if you see receivers, receivers want to cheat and get as close to the line of scrimmage as much as possible usually. So when they're that deep, that's usually a key. And Trent McDuffie has, I mean, since his rookie year, he's been playing lights out. So he's aware of what's coming. And then uh, Mike McDaniel does a little, if you pause it there, you, you never see, I've never seen this at least playing. Cedric Wilson is actually going to go outside in. They're going to design this play for him to be the lead blocker to block Trent. This receiver up here, I believe that's, uh, I'm not sure who that is. That's uh, 81. That's oh, no. tight end. Oh, um, he's trying Darum to block Smythe. down. Spice. He's trying to block down. He's trying to block in, and they want Tyreek Hill to catch it and circle this defense. But Trent McDuffie does a great job <laughs> sniffing it out, not only making the tackle, ripping it out of his hands on the tackle. Unbelievable heads up play. And then obviously we know how this one ended. I had to put this one on there. Big, huge moment in the game. Come Pick, on. <laughs> have the wherewithal to pitch it back. And then he picking them up, Heist. putting them down. He had to, be a, yeah. had to be a 400 runner or something in yeah. high school. That was awesome. Yeah, that's Moving. unbelievable. So that's a strip. That's a I scoop. Been an athlete. And then you're held up. You're looking for your guy. I'm sure they were back there behind him. Ooh, ooh, hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch the tape back and get it to the crib. But a heads up play <laughs> from him 
beating that block. Because if he gets blocked, if they get this block and Tyreek catches that and circles the defense, yeah. it's going to be tough sledding on one of these guys to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle. But that is the play design, something different, something you've never seen. And that guy just shot his trigger and made a great tackle. Gumpy, how do you feel about good design? Just didn't execute it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a tough play right before half. We were driving, got the ball back after half there. Even if you put three on the board, mm -hmm. probably a different ball game, my yeah. friends. And already in field goal position, too. So, Is this tough. the best defense Mahomes has ever had? Yeah. Yeah, statistically definitely. it is. They're saying yeah. by far. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. they've been, they've been, good. they've been the. Yeah, it's not good at all. So they've been the best coming. I mean, from week one, even in uh, the the Lions probably had the best out against, but uh, Stone Cold Jones wasn't out there. Chris Jones was right. on the field, but since he returned, and there was the pick been, six. Yeah, probably been yeah. top two, three defense in the league. Baltimore, Cleveland, and then you got Kansas City. And Spags, Spags don't get enough credit. Obviously, you're on the same. Sideline with Andy Reid, same team as Patrick Mahomes, so you're not. Kelsey. Spags is what, four time Super Bowl champ now? Two, mm -hmm. with the, two with the Giants, two with the Chiefs. He dials it up, he mixes it up, he's gonna send pressure, he's gonna get hands on guys, he's gonna, gonna have his guys ready. Uh, it's tough, man. This is tough right here. Second quarter, third and three. So you know you're gonna get man coverage offensively. McKinnon coming out of the backfield. Uh, Baker's in man to man coverage. You're gonna have a rat player, a low hole player, right? Pause. The mm -hmm. rat is going to go to Travis Kelsey. Smart. He's expecting the rat to come to him. Got to communicate that pre-snap. Coming into this game, he does not. So he turns and tries to become the rat. Because what happens when you're playing rat coverage is, uh, or hole coverage, if, if the hole defender, the rat defender, takes your guy, you now become the rat. You become the hole defender. So that's what usually happens. And you have to have some type of communication pre-snap. You run it all the way back to the beginning of the formation. You'll see the corners talking. They're, they're, they got a bunch up here, so they're sorting it out. X is like, hey, we're going to lock it. Let's lock it. Everybody's going to be on their guy. And now it comes down to him and him. And this is tough. Whenever that back comes out there, I'm sure AJ's dealt with this. You come out there and you go right. It's the worst. That's tough. So you need they get a three by one like that, D, but three by one back away. So, like, far mm -hmm. set. If you, like, say those two backers have the tight end. Sometimes you'll have the tight end up top, and then the back, the two backers have to talk about it. Yep. They can mess with you, man, because if that offset back comes out, and he dances, dances, and then darts across the ball. Yeah. Oh, well, my old buddy's already locked in on the tight end. I don't know if I have help or not. Like this three by one far like that, they can mess your your man coverage up a lot, especially with the linebackers. Yep. And that's how linebacker, that's how defense call it. So if the tight oh. end's up here, the back's away, that's gonna be a far set. If the Life tight end's sucks. up there and the back is to it, that's gonna be a near set. So this is basically gun trips far. These two, you lose that rat. Travis Kelsey coming in here, obviously he's gonna get a bunch of attention regardless of the coverage. Three guys end up on Kelsey. He's <laughs> boom. And he's been a consistent touchdown scorer. Oh yeah. Especially when he you think they game. told him, hey, our, if we, if you're the rat, you jump Kelsey no matter what? That yeah, usually that would be the communication. Especially the nickel. Uh -huh. I used to have to work with the rat and the whole defenders yeah. a lot. I would tell him pre-snap if it was like a, a Wes Walker or Edelman type guy, like, hey, y'all motherfuckers got a lot. This is the guy who they're gonna design traffic for. So take him and I'll end up becoming that. So that was probably the communication, but uh, for some reason, 5-5 uh, five, five did not get that memo. What do you mean by Wes Walker or Julian Edelman or that guy? Like a slot dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. Danny Amendola. He's talking just about white guys. Amendola. What the hell is that about? I don't know. He's saying you're racist. No, those were, when I was playing, those were the top two slot guys. That come do you mind. remember when Griff Whalen acted like Ooh. he was Wes Walker one day? Yeah, <laughs> or was, Julian Edelman, maybe. No, he was uh, Wes. When we were playing Denver, I think the first time. He Peyton. had 2,000 yards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Can we a, not do this every week? He like, got us ready. But we, we, we kicked their ass on Sunday. That's amazing to yeah, think about. got us all week. Shout out to Griff. Way to go. Shout but, out to Griff. You know, I was watching it thinking. We're going to get killed. Can Scott. we just? No. Scott. I wasn't even worried about that. I was like, why don't we fucking Scott's do this pretty good. Yeah, in our in. offense? Why don't we just have yeah. little choice routes for Griff on our offense? He was roommates, I think, with the quarterback. That might be a smart decision because <laughs> all it was was him catching yep. choice option mm -hmm. route, catching gone. Yeah. One after another. It was like, damn, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to stop that. But also on the flip side, our defense knows it's coming, can't stop it. Why don't we fucking do that? That was interesting. Yeah, it's tough to be right. And Griff, Griff was good. He did a good opportunity. He got a shot and made some plays at times. Well, Griff he's was, a center too one time. That's all yeah, That's all about about that. When? when? <laughs> one play. What? He played center one play. Mm hmm. Which play? Him, him, him and Zeke, Zeke probably yeah. got the worst center resumes 
Oh, They're not supposed to be centers. No, no, that's, no, 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 that's, no, no. that's a fact. We but, should uh, talk about Ezekiel that. Ezekiel could. Third quarter, six minutes left. Single high coverage. Bunch right up top. Tank Dell had a huge day. Obviously, C.J. Stroud had a huge day. Uh, rough day. Rough day for 2-4 out there. You're going to get a double move right here. He actually doesn't bite on it too much, but this ball placement is no defense for a perfectly placed ball, especially there oh, as a corner. God, you don't see. This dude's like, unbelievable. I mean, yeah, yeah. This, this is like, I mean, when you were showing the highlights yesterday, this was one of those reps where I'm like, this is like some pro day shit. Like, this is routes on air, pro days, all the scouts out there watching. You know, like, like you don't, know, like, he's back there. He's going through that, shit. The he's, yeah, the O-line just, has been... Yeah, a really lot of when he throws right. it to where Tank Dell is. He's actually yeah. at a 36, okay. though. Like, so it's 36 yards to the end zone. And, right? this, and this is on the back, back pylon. Corner. And yeah. It's, yeah, and it's also going this way. So it's a little bit A squared plus B squared. Yeah, right. A goes C squared. It's like a 50 yard ball, though. Yeah. Just But you know, if you look effortless. at him throw it, like you, like it's no, I would not think this ball is going this far with this, like, velocity, this touch. Like, and he had another one to Dalton Schultz that was kind of on yeah. the front pylon. Fourth it was the down. same. It was that like. So this dude, I, like, I don't know, he's special. People talked about him at the combine, like most top quarterback prospects don't throw at the combine, but they said he had one of the best. Um, yeah, remember, he couldn't figure out defense. Yeah, that's he, right. He yeah, it's pro- one pick. 17 process. touchdowns, one pick. Couldn't process. And this what does the- Geno have? 9-7? Nine, 9-7. Seven? Nine, seven. Yeah. Josh CJ has Stroud has 17 touchdowns, one interception. 14 and one, I think. 14, sorry. Whatever the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2,300 yards. One interception is to Third. They were saying he couldn't figure out defenses. The motherfucker knows what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. So it's a game winner. Another bunch. 10 seconds left. Oh, Carl. Ice cold van. Yeah, he had, a, he had a rough night. Now, <laughs> now we got split safety quarters. Just typical down here. It's something that you're going to see a lot against quarters. Double post. Dino routes. So you have Noah Brown, who had a big day as well. He's going to run a post. Tank Dell's going to run a post behind him. And once again, Dell is always going to put a little bit of sauce on his routes, and he's going to be right on time, right on the money. It's going to be a high ball back in the end zone once again. Nothing the DB can do about it. Strike. Ooh. Game winner. Hey, that's the play we saw Pat P pick off last year, didn't we? We had him on the show to talk about it. Yep. A very similar route. With the Vikings. The Bills. Yeah. yeah, so you yep. got to – I mean, on paper, in quarters coverage, cornerbacks are supposed to be outside leverage. And that's why a lot of offenses attack them with those double posts because they know the first post is going to clear that safety out. You can run it back from that back copy. Oh. So you see from the quarterback's view, the first post from Noah Brown, he's going to clear 30 out. He's going to clear that safety out. And then the second one coming from behind, he's going to be wide open. So if that corner is outside leverage like it is on paper, that's a pitch and catch. Most guys, veteran guys, I saw Slay do it last year against Justin Jefferson in Monday Night Football. Um, Pat P. Did it against someone. You slide to the inside, protect your inside. But obviously, Carlton Tun- Davis did not do that here. And it's a walk-off touchdown. Ten seconds Tun- left. Big day. Tunsil, Tunsil is so good. Oh, he's but a On both ball. these highlights, he just, yeah. he's like, ball. not even a chance. Let's keep our eye right here. Yeah, this whole, uh-huh. this whole offensive line. One there. Got a penalty? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no. Sick yeah. of it. He didn't give a fuck about that. He just gave a 470 to a rookie quarterback. 63-2 after he scores a touchdown. Holy Ooh. shit! Yeah, that's man. Pumped. This offensive line, man, they've been and they lost. They took one of your coaches, Cole Popovich. Oh got, yeah, uh, yeah. So Believe back, me, back. when we lost Pop, I was is that Greg's good? Devastated. I don't is that know, Greg, but Greg's um, good. People, people he say he used to be in he, Miami. He didn't, he didn't want to get the jab, so they got him up out of there. And <laughs> um, respect. He's been thriving for Nick. In that tank Dell route you mentioned, the English they sh- who did he get fired from? You didn't want to take the jab that route? Patriots. Wow, I probably had to with the state law. State law. State law. Rest in peace, Rest in peace, peace. Donnie. Yeah. Oh, anyways, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Happy All right, time for us to get the hell out of here. Great Tuesday. Great. Hell yeah. Today was fun. Yes, sir. Enjoyed today. Thank you for that, uh, Darius. We'll be back tomorrow with a great one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huge. Hey, tomorrow we're packed out. Oh, yeah. Massive show. A lot of stuff to talk about, too, AJ, as this football season and sports world continues. What will be the update from Connor Stallions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's becoming a thing around here. Just need to hear him. There is something every day. Though. Connor Stallions. Just something so absurd. Yeah. Hasn't anyone tracked him down? Like, we haven't seen anything from him. His lawyer spoke, I guess, but yeah. people are saying we're never going to hear from him. You think it's easy to track down <laughs> a captain from the Marines, my friend? Yeah. You have another True. thing coming, brother. Did you see his disguises? We've already seen a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. His son so of a bitch is going to be tough so to find. It's probably Camouflage is everywhere. Yeah. He's got a new face by now. Wait to the next. You ever read a Jack stop. Carr book? It's impossible to track them down. Hey, exactly. AJ, what are you giving so, away? How about uh, 10 merches when yeah. you make this first one? Yeah. Yeah. You got a new store coming, right?
tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, good idea. Tomorrow. No, no, we'll yep. wait for tomorrow. Okay. We'll wait for tomorrow. Okay. Smart. okay, yeah. Smart, smart. Oh. Yep. Oh. oh that would have been sweet. Oh. Ooh, both of those felt really good. Yeah. Both good. Looked good off the. Made a football one earlier one. that said to you. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah the fourth out of. So that's fine. They were universe balls. Yeah. Well, the fourth usually, usually by then. Still the universe. Mm. Oh, you don't trust the universe? Aaron Rodgers walking without crutches because of the universe. Yeah. I point. trust the universe on first signs. I look is clean, cuz. What's that? This one with the top yeah. of the shirt? Yeah. Yeah. It is absurd. DA up, get some of those pants. Yeah, Dave, move. thank you for the pants, pal. I mean, I don't know if they're not supposed to go all the way down, but it no, looks super, su super fashionable. Mm -hmm. You know, and I so tucked sweet. in a tank top. Sweet. Yeah, the tuck. Looks great. Yeah. Super professional. Great nice. tuck. You know, I'm not as fat as get I once a, was, so I could tuck in a shirt. I could look real ridiculous. I had a pink. Get a, one, uh, one of those. Get your, uh, your, you know, your shin guard on. <laughs> You're right. It is down there. It's for the Buffalo Bills. Oh, need it. Yeah, they need Get them it. back on they track. Need It'll get them back on track. They're fucked. It actually matches everything. It's perfect. Yeah, said yeah. Somebody said they're fine. No, I said they're fucked. Oh. Oh, you've been really negative today. No, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, you certainly have. You, you said earlier. You sucked on a coyote fun. earlier. Yeah. No, no, that was a dude. Yeah, made him squeal, I, putting stuff in his mouth. That's, <laughs> out, that's out of context. That's out of context. That's but what you did, dude. No, that's out of context. You said. you said I had great vibes today. I feel great know. about today. I love today. You did have great vibes today. The bills honestly. are fucked, though. That's, I mean, that's just is what it is. It is interesting. Much different team than what we thought. Their vibes were different, just like yours were today. But even, like, much different team than we thought, kind of. Like, their, their whole offseason was what's mm. going on in Buffalo. It wasn't like a good thing. No, nah, they were doing fashion. They should have done a little more football. There are a lot of season left. Let's understand okay. that. Pittsburgh Steelers could go win a Super Bowl. We don't know. Okay. In the playoffs right now? We have no idea what's going to take place. That's why tomorrow shall be awesome. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Goodbye.